Let's get it. What's up, y'all? It's great to be back on the air with y'all. This time on a beautiful Saturday morning. December 30th, one of the final days of 2023 as we bid goodbye to what's been a pretty mid-year, honestly. But it's been fun because the Auburn Tigers are getting better. And that makes me happy. Makes you happy. Pisses Georgia fans off to some degree, which makes me happy. Auburn's out here taking recruits from Alabama, Georgia, Florida. Makes me happy. Makes you happy. So, yeah, there's been some good stuff going on, too. We're uh, so glad to have you guys here. We got the Music City Bowl today. Auburn Tigers against the hated Terrapins, a.k.a. the Turtles, uh, from the University of Maryland in College Park, Maryland. Former Auburn beat hack Josh Vitale is a uh, Maryland graduate. I'd like to give shout-outs to all of our former Auburn writers who we uh, f- uh, f- 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 who we uh, face on the field. By the way, Riley sees my uh, my chain, which he likes, it's my Raiders chain. This is one of my featured gifts for Christmas. My, my wife got me this, and I'm so stoked to wear this. The Raiders are 7-8 and eight right now and uh, still technically in the hunt for a playoff spot, so I'm pretty fired up about that. Uh, we had some Super Chats coming through from some of our absolute legends, uh, channel legends, uh, website legends as well. Uh, Crocky Poo jumped in. Hope you had a great holiday season, JGT. Happy New Year to you and the Bunker crew. Crocky Poo, of course, an, a vital poster. Uh, at AuburnSports.com, and also uh, an amazing brain drainer, just a good dude all around, good caller when he calls in. Cleveland Brown, who's always telling us to stay hydrated, or at least telling me to stay hydrated, says, uh, stay hydrated, of course, stomp the Terrapins. We, but he means WDE. It was just a little mistake. No big deal. Thank you, Cleveland. Appreciate you, bro. Also, Casa DP, one of my horse racing homies, in addition to being an Auburn homie, sends in a uh, group chat, says, Hugh greater than Loxley, Bruce greater than Gary Williams, Obby greater than Turtles, Bourbon greater than Crab Cakes. We've got this fam. Auburn with the, uh, I would just call that a straight win over Maryland right there. And we're going to give him an applause for that one as soon as it kicks in. Yes, it does. It's very exciting. Uh, Shane jumps in as well. Shane, one of our favorite uh, brain drainers, always with us. Says, we back, Ward Amigo. We standing on business today. Thank you for saying that, brother. We stand on business. Business. If you guys are uh, Drewski fans, you guys know what I'm talking about. We stand on business. That could have been records. Uh, I've been loving Drewski the, the last few days. My my daughter got me into that, and it's really, really funny. Uh, Chris M., number 19, as you can see on your screen there, he says, let's do this, have a happy 2024, and a fantastic Auburn basketball season. We'll give him an applause for that one, too. I love the happy tidings. The guy is uh, so so pro-Auburn, and uh, we love having him here as part of the community. Ty Felton for the Maryland Terrapins. It looks like we got about seven minutes to kick off. How about that? we got a lot to get over before in those next seven minutes. Also, Hayden Harris, who's been with us a long time here on the show, says, let's do this one last time this year. Ward and Miguel, JGT. Appreciate you, Hayden. Love having you here, brother. Thank you for all the uh, Super Chats. Good things started. Let's go over to our end game. we got to talk about something. Uh, let me start off the uh, show here. A little sobering, but I, I think it's important. Uh, one of our absolute channel legends... Uh, whose name is going to be scrolling across here, uh, well, right there, Stephen P., uh, passed away uh, somewhat recently, like this fall. I guess it's been a month and a half ago now. And uh, I just wanted to, uh, I mean, obviously he's not going to, you know, hear the shout-out, but he is a good Auburn dude, was a good Auburn dude. He was incredibly supportive of what I was doing here with the brain drain and also at AuburnSports.com, although he didn't post a lot. He read a lot. And he would text me funny things that he saw uh, in the community and stuff, which there's always a bunch of stuff. So uh, just golly, he's going to be missed. And um, yeah, I'm going to leave him on the legends crawl because he's a legend, period. Um, So I'm just going to leave it at that, guys. I don't want to get cracked up about it, but cracked up is probably not the right word. I just meant like get emotional about it is what I meant to say, but yeah, I just thought I'd bring that up. He's got some other friends on the bunker, and I ran this by them just to make sure that they would, you know, I, I want to do it the right way. And I, I definitely want to give him, I definitely want to talk about it a little bit because he meant a lot to me personally, and he was an important part of what we did here. So, what we do here. So, anyway, Stephen P., I'm going to pour one for you, brother. Um, We'll get this... Uh, Maker's Mark 2023 limited release BEP. So this is the blue label uh, makers that I've been trying to 
not drink too much of because it's good for you. It's too healthy. It's this one right here. So to Stephen P, an absolute stud in every every uh, every meaning of the word, man. Ugh. Russell says he's hearing you, Jay. All right, man. Let's just. Uh, I appreciate you saying that, but yeah, he's he's missed. For sure, he's missed more than me. You know, man, I miss him. Y'all miss him, but. He's got people that miss him even more. Uh, let's see. Just got a text from Alex Kozan. He says he's going to be good to uh, talk to us at halftime. Um, something else we got to talk about. Uh, Charles Kelly, uh, 24-7. Uh, Matt Zenitz, uh, who does an outstanding job there, uh, reported first that uh, Auburn was planning to hire uh, Charles Kelly, who was most recently defensive coordinator at Colorado for a coaching position here at Auburn. This has kind of come around somewhat hastily, despite what some other reporters have told you or may have told you. Um, so we will see exactly how this fits and how it works out. I will say this. I think he's going to coach on the field. And I think that he is a very, very good recruiter <coughs> as a coordinator. I think he's a very good recruiter, even if he wasn't a coordinator. And I think that Ron Roberts has value to this organization, but I think as a recruiter, not as much value to the organization. So I think that Charles Kelly could be somebody who coaches and also recruits and is a big bonus. And maybe Ron Roberts isn't one that goes out on the road. You know, maybe he ends up helping in other ways. And Charles Kelly is a guy that can go out there and recruit on Auburn's behalf. So we'll just kind of see how that goes. As we move forward, of course, uh, Charles Kelly spent a lot of time at, well, some at Alabama, some at Florida State, uh, obviously at Colorado last year, which I think some people are going to get upset about and say, you know, Colorado's defense was ass this year. But, I mean, they are in the middle of a gnarly rebuild. Uh, Colorado was really, really bad before Prime got there. So, I don't really hold it against him, and he has a long track record of, of putting together good defenses and also recruiting well. And we know one thing about Hugh Freeze, he wants to recruit, and he is – he made it, he wants to he wants to but he's also getting the job done. Auburn has currently the number eight class uh, in the nation this year on the rivals list, and if they are if they end up adding Ryan Williams, I mean that's going to probably bump him up a couple more. So he's doing a hell of a job. They were fifteenth last year, and that was due to a incredible rally at the end. They probably were on pace to finish twenty second or twenty third until he got involved late. So. This is major improvement, and I think that Hugh has talked about you stack classes. And Brian wrote about this the other day. You you have to stack classes. You don't you don't finish it. You don't fix it all in one. It takes more than a class. It takes more than two. Three is what you got to have. And Auburn's got one and a half at this point. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. Uh, runner twenty four is in the house. What's up, bro? Uh, this has been a minute. Hope everybody had a great holiday. And now LFG, my man. Appreciate you, runner twenty four. Glad to have you. Uh, for our Tigers is Zach, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, meaning, hey, could could Charles Kelly be replacing Zach? I don't think so. You guys know that I reported, uh, God, it's probably been three weeks ago now, that there had been an uptick in chatter about Zach Etheridge leaving, um, a, a post that I ended up taking down not too long after I posted it initially. I, I, got, I got the cost. I've been sick, and I'm all uh, all jacked up on Mountain Dew right now to try to stay up, stay uh, in good shape here. But if I start to feel a cough coming, I'll definitely hit the mute button. Uh, so I, I don't this is, I don't look at Charles Kelly and Zach as being mutually exclusive. I, I think you can do both. Uh, Dion Josco, what's up, brother? Glad to have you. Scotty B in Tennessee is here. It says tighten up drainers. This is a game for Scotty B right here. If I ever saw one, yo. Let's see, Riley M says, uh, in his opinion, Zach and Caddy leave and come back. Interesting. I don't think that Hugh would allow Caddy to leave. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. He, uh, Caddy can leave if he wants to, but I think that Hugh would find a way to keep uh, Caddy here. I think he's just a vital, vital, vital person uh, when it comes to this operation and what's going on. Um, let's see. So Hayden had a super chat earlier. Cassidy DP dropped one. He said, uh, prayers to Billy Edwards Jr., <laughs> who is the uh, fill-in quarterback for Maryland with uh, Talia Tagovailoa out of this game. 
Uh, Maryland is without their quarterback, who's an <laughs> incredibly important person for them. Also, they're very good tight end, and they're also missing their uh, middle linebacker, who is already portaled to Michigan. So they're missing some players. Auburn is going to be having a essentially a completely different backfield, defensive backfield, I should say. Keontae will be out there. I think he referred to that yesterday as Keontae and the kids. Uh, we'll see what we're dealing with there. Also, Novar uh, and no Fromm. So there's going to be some other. Oh, and you're also missing Marcus Harris, who's absolutely crucial. Uh, Justin C says, hey, JG and fellow drainers, happy holidays. Audio and video quality is fire today. Thank you, sir. I have done a few. Uh, I did a little bit of work behind the scenes on uh, the stream here before I got it going. So uh, you text says ESPN feed frozen. I'm guessing you're watching that on the Internet. I'm watching it on cable like an old person, like the old person that I am. And I haven't seen anything like that. Uh, Cassidy P jumped in with another super chat. Any shot Kelly gets someone like Russo in the portal? Uh, I would be curious to see what he can pull. He is a real recruiter. He's well-known. Akwe Russo certainly knows him. Um, so we'll see how that affects things going forward. I, Yeah, I, I think adding a closer to the staff seems like a really good idea. Um, the head coach at Auburn is a closer, but I think it's good to have another one. Uh, Cassidy P jumps in with another super set uh, super chat says Razor Ramon citing incoming y'all uh, a reference to Sir Peyton Thorne who uh, looks something like Razor Ramon thirty nine degrees in Nashville it's like fifty here so big difference good stadium clearly visible from the interstate as long as you take the correct route through Nashville and don't follow the signs. At least for me, when I'm going to Kentucky, they always try to send me around that loop uh, to the west side of town, and I don't take it. I just dive straight through. Let's see. Kevin B says, Hugh seems really happy and energized. He's been in a really good mood lately, guys, and after that recruiting class that he ended up consummating uh, last week, you uh, can certainly understand why he would be stoked. Uh, also, hashtag Hugh Freeze Guy says, love you, Jay. Let's do it one more time for the year. Appreciate you being here, hashtag Hugh Freeze Guy. And Justin C says, Jay Simp got the chains. I'm t- I can tell you, JG's got the chains. We had an opportunity when we were in Vegas a couple years ago. No, hell, it was before COVID. Would have been 19 to get an Auburn one of these. And we were and we saw it, and it was kind of expensive. We were like, nah, we'll just get it the next time we see it. It'll be better. Haven't seen one since. So that's, that's my fault right there. What a choke. So we got Kanuman in the house. Man, we got some serious legends up in here. Wow. Glad to see you guys back. It's been a long time. We're going to be uh, getting together quite often here in the next three months, right? we got some basketball coming up. Uh, we do. Uh, Luke Duke says it's freezing up on YouTube. I guess he's talking about um, the ESPN feed on YouTube TV. I got you. Uh, Cleveland Brown says it's weird that Google Maps tries to get you to take that loop when you're going north. Yeah, I don't want to take the loop, right? That's silly. All right, this game is underway, guys. They're going deep for their first throw. Ball was underthrown into essentially triple coverage, and uh, Kyan Lee looked like he was the first guy there. Those underthrows are tough, man, because when uh, when you're defending, it's hard to get out of the way, and it's very easy to create contact and then get busted for a uh, DPI. Ooh, they ran the football. Got about eight yards on that one. Definitely going to have some different dudes playing today due to the, uh, you know, search, uh, specifically Marcus Harris being out. That's a tough one. He's had a whale of a year playing uh, inside for Auburn. And has been kind of the anchor for that run defense. That's been good this year, so it's going to be tough to kind of make it work without him. But got to see what happens. You got DK out there playing in the slot. Looks like Champ and Wooden with the stop there. Just a little bit. Let him get over the uh, the gap line to gain, but good pursuit laterally on that one. Don Proper Dickin uh, coming to us from Maastricht, Holland. A couple generations ago, uh, the Proper Dickin family was kind of in control 
of uh, of Holland, at least the southern part of the country. And now Don's just kind of chilling in uh, semi-retirement. But uh, Don, thank you for being on the show and supporting the show. Support the show is the bomb. Thank you, Don. You know, we love you, bro. Hell, we, we cheer for Holland. Oh, God. I thought there was somebody else back there. <coughs> wow. So somebody lost outside leverage on that, and there was absolutely nobody uh, rotating to that side. There should have been a lot more support. It's a missed tackle from Larry Nixon. 99 with a bad pursuit angle. Nine with a bad pursuit angle. And they were running go routes to that side, and so that was pulling the man defenders way on down the field, and that's that's how you end up having Kai and Lee trying to make a tackle at 25 yards of depth. That's a uh, that's a systemic failure right there. All right, so the Turtles first and goal from the two, and they just kind of trot in there. Just trot it in there. I don't like your jerk-off name. I don't like your jerk-off face. I don't like your jerk-off behavior. And I don't like you jerk-off. Do I make myself clear? Well, guys, let's see. A.U. Taxman says nine was held. I could see that. He looked frustrated in a way that Eugene doesn't usually do that. So that's probably exactly what happened on that. D. Lucky says tackle practice was... And sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. You never know. Uh, Spicy P says, yikes, number three is a starter next year. Oh, he is 100% a starter next year, I would imagine. Unless they get really, really hot in the portal. He's a good player, man, kindly. Actually, I think it's Kay and Lee, isn't it? It was always told to me that it was Kyan, but I think it's Kayan. So I'm going to get that right. Boy, Zion getting... A lot of dudes coming to him, though. Uh, Damon says, that was unfortunate. Yeah, I'd say that's, I think that's fire to say. By the way, Gus uh, had another difficult bowl outing. Rhett Lashley did not have one. He had a great one, but uh, Gus, not so good. That was a five-play, 75-yard, <laughs> excuse me, guys, a five-play, 75-yard drive in 149, anchored by a, 61, no. Yes, a 61-yard screen to Hemby, who's not even that fast, but uh, Auburn just got outflanked really badly on that. And as AU Taxman noted, a few other people did. Uh, we, we think Eugene got held on that, but we'll see what it goes. Let's see. Bill M. says, my Terp wife says it's not a turtle but a terrapin. All right, I, I was just kind of teasing, man. But, I mean, a, a terrapin is a type of turtle, right? So... You know, we're on, we're on track here. Oh, my gosh. Cassidy P says, didn't the Red Jet lose to BC? I was watching that game at the gym in the first half, and, and SMU was just crushing him, so I figured it was over. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have assumed that. That's pretty cool that SMU had the season they did, regardless of what happened in that bowl game. Uh, Spicy P get me right saying it's Kayan. Thank you, sir. And also, uh, Jonathan T says, LOL, we in trouble. <laughs> Uh, runner 24 says, no, in fact, Rhett got smashed by BC. Thank you for that, sir. I thought he was doing good. My bad. They still won like 10 games, though. I think. But, wow, thanks for correcting me on that, guys. Let's see how bad the damage was. 23-14. I don't know if they got killed, but, yeah, that's that was a loss, man. They were up 14-10 a half, and, and we're just killing them. That, that last drive they had before the half, they just swept down the field and that was the Wasabi Fenway Bowl pick. And the Wasabi is actually not food. It's like some cloud storage or something. Let's see. Uh, Galatian says that deserves the Honey Pot soundbite. Honey Pot? Which one is that, bro? I'll definitely play it. Uh, Super Chat. Here I go. I got to have a cough. Sorry about that. Cassidy P with a, another Super Chat. Uh, only cool Terrapin is GD's Terrapin Station. Uh, speaking about the Grateful Dead, of course. A song I've probably heard in my life, but I couldn't sing a single bar of it. I'm not a Grateful Dead guy. But much respect, and uh, any band that had Bruce Hornsby playing for it at any time is so it's a band that I like and respect. 
AU Taxman says they won their conference. I'm telling you, they were good this year. Uh, Chaz Music says Gene Chizik for defensive coordinator. We could give, give you a laugh on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, let's see, AU Robinson, of course. The sky is falling. He says Auburn's going to lose this game 38-3 to and then fire everyone. <laughs> Michael W.'s in the house. What's up, brother? Surely Demarcus Riddick doesn't miss that tackle that Nixon just missed in the backfield. Prayers up. You would think so. You know, he's not one that I'm expecting to be really good early on, but we'll see. I am expecting Joseph Phillips to be really good early on. I think Demarcus is going to need some adjustment time. But I think he's going to be a marauder on special teams to start off with, and he'll be a guy that will be definitely helpful. I just think he's more of a C-ball, hit-ball guy right now, and I think college football, uh, these offenses try to get you skating back and forth. They were trying a little trick play there, and I think uh, Batie wisely just kind of tucked it and said, dude, I'm just going to get as far as I can go here, not do anything crazy. Interesting to see that, though. Remember when Tuberville had the globe of death uh, that he ran many, many years ago, and he was so proud of that. I used to make fun of him for being a riverboat gambler all the time, and he'd be like, JG, did you see that? Uh, let's see, Patrick P. says, any truth that Total T. Nugenics brought Frank Thomas back from the dead? <laughs> oh, Mo, got to come back. You don't get a half of that. Of that. <laughs> yeah, wrong Frank Thomas, right? Fox News. I think it was Fox. I, I don't know. Uh, I was going through a list of people who had died this year and put Frank Thomas on there, and it was the wrong Frank Thomas. There was a baseball player who was a Hall of Famer named Frank Thomas many, many years ago, and he died at the age of 93, I believe, and that's who they meant to put on there. But, uh, yeah, fortunately, the Frank Thomas that we know and love from Columbus, Georgia, the, the former Auburn Tiger and Auburn tight end, we know him as a tight end, but uh, he also played some baseball, uh, is alive and well. So, glad to have that. Let's see, runner 24 says the Duke linebacker, whose name escapes me, Dorian Mousy, uh, says that should be an upgrade from Nixon as the third backer. Yeah, Nixon's quickish, but he's also missish. He misses too many tackles, in my opinion. Third and four, and they go just for a little uh, run up there on the right guard, and they're, they're going to be short. It's going to be fourth and one. By the way, Jarquez was the tailback on that play. I mentioned on the bunker yesterday, we are strongly believing that uh, Jarquez will be back next season. He has told people that he will be back next season. And so uh, that is something that I am absolutely expecting to occur. Stoop Up keeps the streak alive. Says some cold, hard cash from Nissan Stadium. Look at Stoop Up's at the game, and he's still super chatted. What a stud. Of course, Stoop Up has uh, super chatted us every single show we've ever done. Uh, and that's the kind of support we get uh, with these folks here at AuburnSports.com and also Brain Drain. As well, got a text from my guy Aaron Wood. Aaron, last name W period, last name redacted to protect his anonymity. Let's check it in, saying that I look sexy on the stream. Let's have an upvote if you guys agree with that. You can't even really tell that my hair's dyed at this point. I'm supposed to get it done in a couple weeks, so we'll get that done. Uh, Kevin B says, Mousy, Mossy. I've heard it both ways. I'll ask him the next time I see him. Uh, Okra says, hey, JG, my guy Okra loves uh, Max Crosby and the Raiders. Hey, JG, happy, happy new year to you and yours and family. War Eagle, go Raiders. Look what I got right here, Okra. Raiders. We're playing uh, Indianapolis tomorrow. Got to have that one, dude. That would get us to 500 with the game against the Donkeys in the final regular season game. We're still in the hunt, guys. Win that game, we got a 30% chance of the uh, playoffs. I won't bring it up again, but Okra, you know I love you, brother. All right, Terrapin's taking over at the 25. Auburn's first drive was kind of a kind of a negative, one could say. There is Bobby Jameson Travis. Quintrell is his given name, but uh, we call him Bobby. Melee says, glow of death. That's what my wife calls her finishing move. <laughs> Good shot, Melee. <laughs> It's tricky because on here you're just regular melee, but on the bunker you're dash melee dash. Got to know that. Kevin B says, go Detroit Lions about time. Yes, your first division title since 1993. Congratulations. I think everybody likes the, the Lions. Well, I don't want to say everybody. Packers fans probably don't, but 
uh, their head coach is an easy guy to cheer for. Dan. Dan. I just know him as Dan. Man, this is kind of a – I know it's early in the game, and I'm I'm definitely not somebody who gets reactionary about things, but it's kind of a shitty start to the game for Auburn. You gave up a 61-yard screen. And you had him on second and long, and you gave up a long run there for no reason. And just having trouble uh, enforcing uh, between the tackles. It's going to be a challenge without Marcus there, but uh, everybody's dealing with some of this. Well, not everybody, but most teams are dealing with this, and certainly Maryland is as well. Uh, looks like uh, DK got in there on that tackle. Good to see Bobby Jamison Travis playing. I wonder he hadn't gotten many snaps this year. I'll be curious to see how he how he does today. Hornacious in here as well. Says, Look, go Cowboys. <laughs> I, of course you're a Cowboys fan. Like whatever the most boring, banal take you could ever have, it's what it's going to be. You drive a treep and you love the Cowboys. And... Uh, Probably taking UConn women's hoops. You're taking U.S. in World War II. Another long throw from Maryland. Another underthrown ball. And Auburn, again, defends it wisely. It does not get called for a penalty, so that's good. A melee says, Bunker wouldn't let me have regular melee. Guess it was taken. Yeah. If it's ever been used anywhere in the Auburn, uh, in the arrival sphere, that could be us, that could be Georgia, that could be Bowling Green State. I don't know if it's ever been used. You can't use it again. Justin C says from Nathan King, former AuburnSports.com writer, intern, intern. Auburn has now gone three and out on its first possession in three straight games. It has also allowed the opponent to score an opening drive touchdown in three straight games. Interesting. So they're not starting great, and there's another problem. They'll throw up the middle, it's going to get a first down and more. Not looking good so far, guys. Cassie DP jumps in again with another super chat. I am nonplussed with the run fits thus far. Barf? Do I have? Do we have a barf sound? We don't. Okay, we'll work on that. Chaz Music is a Dolphins fan. Another coach who's very easy to like, Mike McDaniel. Kind of an odd character, but uh, certainly very player friendly. And I've been watching the. Uh, I'm not as far along as uh, along as I should, but I've been watching the Hard Knocks in season with the Dolphins, and uh, it's a trip, man. He's I was really into the uh, Cardinals one last year, and I, I like the Dolphins one even more. Auburn get, finally getting some pressure on that. Uh, whoa, a little scrap there, huh? Looks like Zion. Or was it Keontae? Interesting take here. They're showing the helmets that uh, Maryland's using today. They have a, they have a, a, a microphone in there so the coaches can talk or a coach can talk to their quarterback. Auburn had the option of using that today, but chose not to. Uh, Hugh Freeze explained that they did that because he was going to have to be in a lot of meetings uh, in the middle of a recruiting surge there about three weeks ago uh, just to kind of get it clear to make sure that the helmet was going to be safe with the mic in it and all that kind of stuff, and he just said, "Now nah, we're Gucci. There's a little RPO throw, slant. That's a fumble, and the Auburn Tigers could have had it but didn't get it. Oh, my goodness. That were in and out of like three sets of hands there. Somebody's got to get their paw on that. Hornacious thinks the radio helmets are beating us. <laughs> I mean, surely Auburn's not going to lose this game, right? Well, I thought Keontae would have that. I thought Keldrick was going to have that. Dang, McLeod almost got there, too. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Wizard D just says FFS. Yeah, it's one of those deals, huh? Says <laughs> Auburn says maybe we should have used the GD radios. <laughs> oh, my God. And Fenrir Black says this is a freaking clown show. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand why they're playing like this. It's terrible. But as we know, a lot of times Auburn gets stabilized uh, over a period of time. What have we got here? What is this commercial? I want to interview this girl in the yeah, the mom in the blue swimsuit there. I'd like to know what she thinks about Auburn. She's probably a big fan. She's actually an AuburnSports.com subscriber, I would hope. Well, at least her husband is. That could be our in right there. This must be Opry World. 
Opryland, excuse me. Word. Uh, Don Proper Dickin, who would certainly know about drinking because it's such an important part of life in Holland. He says they're hungover from last night. It's certainly possible. And Wizard D says, hey, at least we're winning at recruiting. I roll. <laughs> hey, man, he's got to get dudes in here, and he did. But I understand where you're coming from like that. It can be, it can be both, right? It doesn't have to be exclusively recruiting and the team gets poorly coached. Let's see, Stu Pup says, oh, I have thoughts, but I'm honestly trying to be more positive in 2024. I love it, Stu Pup. Me too. I'm going to try to be more positive too, especially when the Raiders get in the playoffs. Uh, let's see, Galatian says, thank God, signing day is in the books. I, I want, tell me more about that, Galatian. Like what, just because they closed and the, the, you don't have to hear all this, you know, Perry this and Cam this, they signed and that drama's over, is that why? Or do you mean you just got tired of hearing about it all the time? I don't know. It could, go, it could go a different way, you know. Well, there goes a bottle down, guys. The uh, Makers Limited Release BEP. We got this one in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, back in uh, May, I believe it was. It's was a good bottle. First one down. And since I had my first drink to Stephen P. and it was this bourbon, I'm going to have it again. Stephen P., the legend, the goat. Ugh. Riley says, had Talia not opted out, he'd be carving us up like a damn turkey. Hey, a D's in the house. What's up, Ed? Glad to have you here, brother. Have to give Maryland credit for a good game plan. Stretch the D deep. Slants, sit down routes, QB read. Yeah, they're they're definitely working Auburn right now. Auburn typically gets things straightened out, but not in that New Mexico State game. <sighs> Did not happen in that game. My man Justin O, the legend himself, says, still want a quarterback that isn't just to take a sack happy. Uh, his name is Gottlieb. It's an interesting first name. Yeah, Peyton's got some things to work on, I think, but it's reasonable to assume that he will, uh, I like that slant to the backside of that power run. Hornacious wants to know what I've tested positive for. Nothing, bro. I've just got the same head cold that my daughter brought in our house like a week ago. I was trying to not get it, but I, I got it, I guess. Okay, Anonymous says he means he's glad the hay is in the barn so the recruits can't hold this against us. Good point, good point, good point. All right, I see where you're going with that. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Hey, at least those guys can look at this game and go, golly, they really do have some spots where I can help them. Jalen McLeod with a disruptive rush off the edge. And Eugene took a bad angle and gave up another 12 yards. <coughs> Eugene. Russell says he's having some Woodford Reserve Double Oaked today. A uh, favorite bourbon of former Auburn Athletic Director Alan Green. I believe that was his favorite bourbon. Hornacious says he might have to bust out the old Granddad 114 in a bit. That is a terrific bourbon for the price. One that AU Taxman would stand behind 100% at the uh, whatever, $25, $27, $29 range. Galatian says, I just meant I'm thankful they're signed up, especially as bad as the game is going so far. Excellent point, Galatian. And, oh, that was going to be a tough catch, and uh, he didn't get it. So, he could have gotten it, though. Kind of digging these uh, Maryland uniforms, honestly. I like the uh, white, yellow, red. When I was young, when I was a young man, 10 years old, living in San Diego, this is back in the uh, roller skating era. I had these uh, roller skates called Sunrunners, and it had, like, a white star with, like, uh, those colors like sprashing out from behind the star 100 percent baller move to wear those and i could even go backwards I mean, you do what you got to do to pick up chicks you know and i had to learn to skate backwards and all that kind of stuff i was pretty good at that put give me those sun runners with some uh do you think i'm sexy and i could definitely get some numbers okra jumps in with a super chat jg is it too soon to hit the bourbon <laughs> bro i'm already two drinks in so the answer is no it's not too early and as many people say, including my neighbor, Denton's mom, you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. It's, a tr it's true. It's, just, it's, 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 it's a scientific fact. Let's see. Spicy P says, Jay, what's the snap count after 55 our starters are toast? It might not even go 55 today because you're missing some really important people. 
Uh, total plays, 15 to 3, guys. It's not that bad. That's really not that bad. <laughs> no, it's terrible, but... Ah, they got another touchdown. I don't like your jerk-off name. I don't like your jerk-off face. I don't like your jerk-off behavior. And I don't like you, jerk-off. Do I make myself clear? All right, that's 13 nothing on a little uh, little drag route from this backside tight end. Throw, it's underthrown a little bit, but he makes a nice adjustment and uh, gets the catch. I mean, good coverage from Eugene, but, you know. It happens. Great start to the game, though, guys. No problems here. Cats DP jumps in with another super chat. I think this is six today. He says, I'm about to up the proof from this old Forester birthday. Wow. He's drinking birthday bourbon, guys. That's how you know he's a baller. Fourteen nothing, man. Terrapins. Look at this. Kind of short on that throw, but good adjustment by that uh, backup tight end. Uh, Shane jumps in with a super chat. It says, Auburn University, where we let the backup quarterback light us up. <laughs> There's some truth to that. There's some truth to that. Make sure I hadn't missed anything. No, I don't think I have. Ed Deese's nice combination on the touchdown. Yeah, they're playing some good. They've definitely got their ideas sharp and straight on this game. They're doing a good job so far. Josh's WTF is going on. Angry face. We've seen it look better. There's no doubt about that. Oh, goodness. So we got a big super chat coming through from, uh, from the West Coast, as some would say. CDF. This is basketball school. Hey, the fighting pearls are really good this year. 9-2, playing uh, the, the mocks of Chattanooga tonight, 8 o'clock tip in the Central Time Zone. And CDF, he loves him some Auburn anyway, but he's really happy with uh, the teams that win a lot. And uh, he's been pulling for basketball a long time too, so CDF, I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate your support. I miss playing uh, Warzone with you. But I get that uh, it's changed a little bit for you. Let's see, FJ says, maybe we should have opted for the mic and the helmet. We're getting boat raced. This is a very, very bad start for the game, no doubt about it. But give him a chance to stabilize. We'll see what happens. I don't even really need to update these stats because Auburn hasn't really done anything. Uh, third down. Uh, they're three for three. That's not great for Auburn. And Auburn's 0 for 1. By the way, Peyton has one yard passing. That's pretty good. Hunter has two carries for eight yards. One of one for one. <laughs> Let's put one YD, and we'll just leave it like that. Yes, Chaz Music says, time for our fourth offensive play. <laughs> My man. Uh, Scott C says, any, has, have any of Auburn's signed recruits entered the portal yet? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Galatian says, Loxley usually has their offense humming. Yeah, they've been, they were pretty good uh, in the Big Ten this year um, from a offensive perspective. Better than you would think, but I had a friend of mine that covers the Big Ten who told me that they're the dumbest team he's ever seen. That they, Everything that you would expect them to get right, they, they screw up, like under pressure or, you know, key third and three, they'll fumble or whatever. He just expects them to screw games up all the time. Well, they're not, they're not playing dumb right now, that's for sure, but they're also not under pressure at the moment. Ravens says, just started watching this astastic game and watched us miss all the tackles. <laughs> astastic, I like it. Uh, Whale Driver jumps in with a, a super chat. I'm 34 minutes. I'm 34 minutes. Touchdowns late signing on. What did I miss? Yeah, listen, man, I hope you just tuned in seriously because the first whatever it's been, 10 minutes of this game have been very, very not watchable. Auburn's played like ass so far. I've also got a cough, and I'm trying to not cough on you guys. Not because you're going to get sick, but you still want to hear that blasting through your speakers or whatever. I'm really trying to not do that. 
Dave B just says we suck. <laughs> That's one way to put it. JB Mond says Auburn fans keep showing up for this team, and this team keeps shit in the bed. Well, you get one of these, buddy. And sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. It's kind of been the theme of this whole year for this team. Well, all right. The fourth offensive play is a shitter. Let's see, Jesse says, yeah, I'm going to go do something else. Yeah, it's a beautiful day outside. A little chilly where I'm at. I don't know where you're at. 49 degrees is what I've got. Oker says, Holden in, please. <laughs> We're already waiting for Holden, huh? Got to cough again. Dang, Hunter had himself a lane there and just kind of got tripped up uh, on the footses. So you're looking at like a third and six here. Hugh looking uh, a little forlorn. John C says the $6.5 million coach signaling to the fan base that he's ready to run it back with the same offensive nucleus next year is even more painful now. Interesting. That is exactly what he did. Well, run it back is a little. Yeah, run it back with <clears throat> between four and five stud wideouts. It's going to help a lot. Looks like a little RPO slant there and. I'm not sure that uh, deal was wide open or anything, but I think that's catchable. The Maryland defender did have his hand right there, so he may have been able to deflect that. I couldn't tell from the angle. That was not an RPO, by the way. That was just a slant. Yeah, it looks like that was well defended by number 12. I think that throws right, right, right where it needs to be. It's just good, good defensive play. So, Oscar Chapman comes back out after a three and out. Nice punt. Gets him down to the 22. <laughs> God bless, man. Coughing too much, yo. I was hoping some bourbon would get me to stop coughing. So, I'll just continue to drink. That's what we'll do. Our next bourbon today is going to be the Castle in Key Weeded. Beautiful place to go and visit if you guys are up that way. I'm going to cough again. Jeez Louise. I'm literally crying from the coughing, y'all. Uh, uh oh, they're going to try an end around here. Larry Nixon was in perfect place to make a play on that. Just didn't do it. Ugh. Sorry, guys. I'm crying from coughing. Jesus. I got to cough again. Sorry about that, guys. All right, it's 166 yards to 13. That's really not that bad. 98 pass yards to one. It could be worse. Auburn could have zero pass yards. They're going to go deep again. This dude's open. Oh, my goodness. Beat Keontae on that one. He did have safety help, but the safety was behind. Uh, oh, my God. Literally crying, you guys. I can't, I can't stop coughing. That was an absolute bomb, too. The ball went so far. I'm going to cough again. All right, I'm Gucci. I'm Gucci. This is getting really, really bad, guys. Yeah, this is going to be 21 nothing here in a second, right? Damon says this this defense is bad. It's been like kind of decent, honestly, until now. Today it's not been good at all, but it's been decent prior to this. But I guess Marcus Harris really hurts you and uh, losing your two cornerbacks. <laughs> Melee says it's the reverse Purdue Bowl. My G, my G. <laughs> reverse. I like that. 
Uh, yeah, I'm not. Um, Bex, you know I can't do that right now. <laughs> can't. Just, hey guys, we go downstairs for a while. All right. Uh, let's see what some stats are here. Let's see, Peyton's still one of three for one. He's got a yard, guys. I don't see what the big deal is. Oh, man, I never saw this coming. Did not think it would be this bad. You know what Tub would say? Tub would say, "Well, you guys should have been playing this guy all along." <laughs> I redid that in the Iron Bowl that one year when Andrew Zhao had such a great game. He lost like 31 to 7, and he was still talking smack about how Andrew Zhao should have been starting all year. Oh, God. There's another touchdown. I don't like your jerk off name. I don't like your jerk off face. I don't like your jerk off behavior. And I don't like you, jerk off. Do I make myself clear? All right. This is going great. Going absolutely wonderful. Kaduma jumps in. The D played 55 snaps pre-game. <laughs> no. That's fine. That's a nice catch, man. It's a great throw and a great catch. Defense was pretty good on that from uh, Caleb Wooden. But, uh, man, they're executing right now. They are much the better team. Much the better team, as the kids say. <laughs> man, Jason M checking in to say, what's going on with Auburn? I don't know, man. They're down some dudes on defense, but not that many. Not the way they should be down three touchdowns this early. Sheesh. But honestly, you can't really say much about, I mean, the offense has been just as bad. It's been awful all around. Love the cat. Love the cats. Think this is going to be a, a Georgia Tech Cumberland game. Two thirty. Two twenty three to zero. Hmm. Let's see. Solo Tigre says, "There's no use living your life coughing like this if you aren't ripping fat dabs. Fat dabs. I, I'm drinking some fat dabs, or am I? I don't know." Cameron Edge is playing the wrong position. I'll stand by that all day long. Should be playing defensive end. Cleveland Brown jumps in, says maybe uh, halftime. Sh uh, maybe I'm sorry, maybe Hugh Freeze <laughs> should have taken a break from recruiting. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Scott C says Auburn is looking ahead too. Dot 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 question mark. Yeah, not much, not much ahead on this one, right? Uh, not much ahead on the docket. <laughs> See if Petit can do something here to get them started. Sean Jackson with some blocking. Kind of technically blocked or slowed down Petit on that run. Not his fault, though. Petit probably could have done something else. Griffin Speaks also blocking. Uh, Skip D says, we need a transfer quarterback to replace Thorne. I'm not sure that that would help, man, at this point, Skip. Um, this is just my opinion. You can disagree with me. But I think Auburn has maybe five or six positions that need attention more than quarterback. It's also a penalty on Auburn on the return there to add uh, insult to injury. I got five or six positions that they need to address more than quarterback, in my opinion. I think he's okay. I think that uh, Peyton's fine. And I think the cost to upgrade at quarterback, to tangibly upgrade at quarterback – is worth three or four, even five impact players at other positions. So I, I agree. Wow, no, that was. They ran that same play, that little quick slant, uh, this time to Caleb. And uh, that's an incompletion, too. Honestly, I thought that was defended very well. I don't think he was open. So Caleb Burton, by the way. Oh, Diego, you're going to count that as a drop? I don't know if that was a drop, dude. Do, will we count that as a drop? Oh, boy. Better throw that ball, bro. What was... Now, that's a drop, dude. I, now, that's a drop right there. I'm, I'm, I'm counting that one as a drop. Why did Cam not catch the ball? Cam... 
Cam Brown should catch this ball. Watching the replay right now to see what happened here. All right, not a great throw, but that's catchable, bro. Guys, we're going with a drop on that throw to Cam Brown, right? Thumbs up, yes. Ed Deese is not a drop. <laughs> Josh is getting a little frustrated, I think. TJ says that's a drop. Oh, my God. D. Lucky says we're going to need a quarterback, boys. I don't know if you mean that is we need a better one or this one's going to die because he's going to get killed. <laughs> he is having to elude pressure left and right right now from a Maryland defensive line that, you know, is just kind of so-so. I saw this guy's name in the uh, roster, Hippolyte. It's kind of a cool name. It's cooler than my last name, which is Tate. Tate. It's boring. All right, Scott says drop. A.E. Robinson says drop. Uh, Love the Cats is 100% drop there, so I feel good. We're going to go with the one drop. Yeah, I think people could argue that the Luke Deal one was a drop. I didn't think it was. I thought it was well defended. And then the uh, the second one to Caleb Burton, I didn't think it was a drop either. <coughs> All right, so Auburn goes for the fake on the punt, and he's got enough. Look at the athleticism on the punter there. And I know athleticism at punter because I've got an all-pro punter on my professional NFL team. All right. So they tried a trick play on their first kickoff, and they didn't do it because Batiste just didn't, wasn't feeling it. And then they just tried a trick play on a punt. So good. Getting a little little Tuberville riverboat gambler, huh? Batiste gets the handoff there for about four yards on first down. Uh, A.U. Taxman says, none of this is on Thorne. Offensive line is bad, and wide receiver is not open. I would 100% agree on what we're seeing today so far. That is my view. This is not on Peyton to this point, I don't think. Hey, decent block from Rivaldo there, and that's going to get Caleb Burton the first down. I thought he was kind of leisurely in motion there. Didn't like it, but then he got on his block and held it. So, not hold it, but the uh, it's a stiff block. And made that uh, first down uh, avail itself. So, good stuff. Killer Burton, of course. The young man who transferred in from Ohio State this year. Didn't play a lot in the first half of the season. Been playing more since then. And uh, with the defection of VAR... I guess he's getting more in the rotation uh, this week or this game. This is not a Peyton Thorne problem right here. That's a that's a nice defended play right there, man. I mean, it was kind of, you know, out of system. Just throwing for an open receiver, underthrew him. But uh, Maryland uh, defensive back made the adjustment on that play. <sighs> Let's see, Sempra says, I'm, I'm seeing zero energy care or fight. Oh, nice play by there by number 20. Uh, let's go over here for a minute. All right, second and 10. Let's see if they target Rivaldo. I think Michael W. was uh, suggesting that might be something Auburn ought to consider. There's Damari with, I believe, his first carry of the day. Gets uh, three yards, so it's going to be third and seven. Cleveland says you got to fight for that ball, Cam. Yeah, I, I, he didn't. He wasn't playing back to the ball as much as you maybe you would expect on that one. Uh oh. Looks like Peyton's got hit on his non-throwing hand. <laughs> <coughs> That can be a problem. Just ask Josh Herbert. He's out for the season because of that. I don't understand. I Auburn's just having some odd problems here. I've not seen this many consecutive uh, throws like so well defended, and the run game is just kind of underwhelming so far, which isn't necessarily surprising because it's always felt like their run game is kind of pulsates. It's really good sometimes, and it's bad sometimes, and it kind of will change in the course of a game. And for reasons that I don't really understand, Eddie uh, points out that uh, he didn't think that Cam Brown was attacking the ball 
And I would agree with that. <laughs> E-Hall says, Camden, playing like you shut down Tootsies last night. <laughs> I'm particularly fond of Tootsies because that was what my grandma's name was. Everybody called my grandma Tootsie. So I have happy memories of people saying Tootsie all the time. My granddad would go, Tootsie. Why are you always putting me down, Tootsie? Let's see. Jbit uh, says, or Jibit, uh, does this hurt recruiting? Nah, not really. I think that the, uh, just the regular paradigm that they've been pushing all year, which is we need help. Uh, this doesn't change that. So I think they just stay on course. <sighs> Let's see, my man, Neil J., uh, last name redacted to protect his anonymity, uh, coming in from Scotland, says, looks rusty AF. Neil, glad to have you, bro. Uh, my guy, hung out, met that guy and his amazing wife, Amanda, in the pool in Mexico last year. Stop with any Harson and uh, Alan Green jokes, and uh, that dude can party. Actually, both of them can party. And then uh, he was there with a bunch of his friends from uh, Scotland, and I was like, hey, do I seem like the stereotypical Yankee to you? And they were like, uh-huh. I was like, glad to be a service, guys. Like drunk, loud, and obnoxious. That's me. Eddie says, PT, only Miss Q not throwing the hot read on the blitz. Not the offensive line's fault on that play. Appreciate you uh, keeping the receipts, Eddie. That's what I love about you, man. Let's see, D like he says, Ed D, the slant to deal was the wrong read and behind him. Let's see, Sempre says, I'm telling you, Peyton has been made out to look like a fool this whole season. None of this is his fault. Uh, this wide receiver room is to blame for all of our failures this season. They have single-handedly, oh, there's going to be a second part of this, lost us five games this year. Well, I got good news. They got some much better receivers coming in. So I think that's going to make you happy. TJ Kidd says only Voodoo Wings can cure this right now. That's a great solution. GW says, can we just kneel down to keep the, talk, the clock ticking? <laughs> Try to, uh, let's see, Robert S. says, meanwhile, Ole Miss is tearing Penn State a new one right now. Oh, boy. Well, I'm glad for my Ole Miss friends. Uh, Neil Jason stereotype and we love it. Yeah, I was like, Am I the stereotypical Yankee? And they're like, Absolutely. I was like, Okay. Actually I got that three or four years ago in Cap Canada too, with this chick from Plymouth, uh, England was like, You're such a fat Yankee. I was like, Well, I am fat, but I'm not a Yankee. I live in Alabama. I'm from various places, but none of them north. Uh, Snobburn says, Jay, I'm, con I'm convinced the receivers are playing like shit on purpose to stick it to Hugh for replacing them. Hmm. I mean, no way that's real. Third and six. Oh, guys, this is perfect. Third and six. He runs a four-yard route, gets an extra yard. Now they're a yard short. Might as well go for it. Fuck it. You're at the 45. Snobburn's going to go for it on fourth and one in their own territory. Uh, Sempre is fired up about the new receivers, as he should be. As he should be. They can do the brotherly shove. They are going to do the brotherly shove, and he's going to get that, I believe. That's the first time I've seen Auburn use the brotherly shove this year, like in that particular method, using that particular methodology. It's pretty cool. Hey, might as well, man. GW says JGT is a huge Cardinals fan. Cardinals fan? What? Ugh. No, I'm not a Cardinals fan. My granddad, uh, Wexler, was. He loved Red Schoendienst. Uh, I have no idea why that dude. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer, but he's just kind of an obscure one. But he absolutely loved him. But no, I'm not a Cardinals fan at all. I'm a Padres fan, I guess. Although they have a cheater on their team, which... Kind of bums me out. I used to like the Astros, but terrible. Uh, Neil J says, getting insulted by someone from Plymouth is as low as it gets. Plymouth Argyle fan. To be fair, she was a lot thinner than I was, so if she wants to call me a fat Yankee, that's fine. She's got that positioning. But uh, 
Yeah, it was kind of mean. She said she did it in a mean spirited way. GW says JGT Louisville Cardinals. Oh, I see where you're going. Okay. Well, you know I don't like them. <laughs> don't you dare call me a Louisville fan or a Duke fan. That would be insulting. Peyton thinking about going deep. Just didn't see it. Checks down to Kayla Burton. What do you got? About five on that? Four? Got a third and somewhat manageable on this one. Louisville Cardinals, man. What the hell? Bro, what? Cameron Coleman. I mean, that is his name, I guess. But everybody calls him Cam. It's fine. All right, I like this set better. It's kind of that compressed set. I feel like they've been better with that. More pressure on uh, Peyton there on the third down and four. And he's got a free rusher coming in from the Mike linebacker position and chases him down, creates all kinds of trouble. And it's it's not good, guys. I mean, they are kind of in no man's land, so maybe they go for this. A fourth and four. They're about at the, what, plus 45-ish? <clears throat> 48. <laughs> Sempray says he gives Caleb Burton a minus 50 acceleration rating. I love it. The danger zone. This is your redheads, your strippers, anyone named Tiffany. This is where your car gets keyed, you get a bunny in the pot, uh, your tires get slashed, and you wind up in jail. Guys, I think we're at the uh, we're in the danger zone right now, guys. I don't like where this is going at all. Three guys open. Forty nine minutes to midnight said, "Yeah, I, I think there were three guys open." And he got a little anxious from the pressure, which he does sometimes, and then it didn't really work out. Skip D says that's on Thorne. I would agree with you. I, I would like to see the all 22 on that, but yeah, that's what it looked like to me. My goodness gracious. To be fair, Sempre, I thought that throw was in, in a way in an area where I don't think Damari can make a play on that. It was behind him, and he also had a blocker that was like kind of coming into the line of sight on that throw. <sighs> Legit says he's physically ill watching this. Oh, my goodness. Not a mouse's redhead strippers girls named Tiffany, <laughs> bunny in the pot. Galatian likes that line too. <laughs> so D Lucky's got an interesting point here. D Lucky, uh, who's one of our most learned people on the bunker and here on the show, and who is him and his wife are are one of our uh, guest suites in our house is named after them because we want them here as often as possible. Says Thorne ain't it. And I don't necessarily think anyone here is arguing that Thorne is it. I just think like, okay, so if you're going to go out and spend a million and a quarter, 1.3 million, 1.4 million on somebody, whoever it might be, what are you going to do about left tackle? What are you going to do about cornerback, safety, Wide out, tight end. They've got tight ends, but you know, like it'd be nice to have like a a game changing tight end instead of dudes that block. You know, Alpha Tiger, my man, what's up, brother? He says, you know, things are not going your way when the announcer says maybe they should send the punt team out there and see if they can pick up another first down. <laughs> oh my god, that is hard times. Wait, you only got a half laugh on that. <laughs> you can afford that. By the way, my uh, another Christmas gift my wife got me. No, we're not doing a cork update right now. Was this uh, new Stream Deck it's a Plus with the knobs, which I I love knobs, guys. Just 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 mine. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to using this. Now I can use this in conjunction with the Stream Deck I already had. I just haven't set it up yet. Looking forward to doing that though. Robert S. wants to bring to his little brother and stop the bleeding. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see. 
AU88 was asking if Super Chats are working. Casa DP immediately answers, says, what this OL needs is an enema. Yikes. Oh, and he also said, uh, Knuman said, yes, they are at AU88. Thank you, Knuman and Casa DP for the Super Chats. Oh, <laughs> E. Hall says, we are buns right now. That's the first time I've heard that one, bro. Hey, there's a play right there. Jalen McLeod says, I'm going to stuff this one. Uh, e-, e Hall said we are buns right now. We're playing like turtles. We are buns. That's the first time. Cheeks I've heard. Buns I've not heard. Mike N says we've got to get another quarterback that can get past the first read. We have folks open. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Sorry to keep coughing like that. Anonymous says 1 a.m. beaches. That is somebody who's been on the chat a bunch. I mean, I know you are. I know you have been, but. Oh, my goodness. Uh, little tailback screen right there right into the flat and uh, nobody's there and they get about 20 yards on it first down good golly Miss Molly let's see Crocky Poo wants to know has anyone seen J- Koi more I, I don't think we've seen Koi I don't know if we've seen Jay at all wait did administrative assistant make a comment here Let's see. Solo Tigre says, JGT, I'm going to need you to keep this drain going all the way through the basketball game for the sake of mental health of this family. <laughs> we may have some grievances to uh, air after this one. That's for sure. <laughs> e Hall saying we're buns. I love it, buns. I'm going to use that one. D Lucky says, if everything has to be perfect for Thorne to be successful, then why do we need him? Because uh, what the, what's the alternative? I mean, Holden? I don't know. Riley M says you need some Mucinex. Bro, I'll take it if you want to send it over. I don't know what's going on. Oh, man, I thought that was... There you go. That's a well-defended ball and a flag down. Sad. Colin Sam says, do we enjoy Broadway too much? <laughs> Hornacia says, we're auburning this bowl game. CJ MH says, Hugh Freeze is a clown. Wow, things are getting, this is a happy, happy chat here, huh? And also T-Roy says, a happy new year, Commodore and Drain family. Oh, I see, yeah, Kanuman says, was giving AA props for her incredible Christmas gift. That was a good one. She gave me that. She also got me this. Oh, you can't, I got my Raiders. I just like the, the chains. This is all titanium and uh, very, like, heavy-grade uh, steel. You know, this is really expensive stuff here. A.U. Hey, Taxman says, if Holden was any good, he'd be playing. Sorry, people. Hmm. Yeah, I think he has some limitations. This just looks like a failure to launch for me. I mean, I'm talking about just Auburn in general. The offensive possessions have been atrocious. The defensive possessions have been pretty bad. Not, I don't think they've been as bad as the offense, but they've been bad. And when you let in 21 points in a quarter, you've got you to take a serious look in the mirror, you know? And you're losing to Mike Loxley, who's not necessarily known for being the most shrewd calculating coach. Mm. Rudy Ford with a big stop there. Just kidding. <coughs> He's made a bunch of plays when he was an Auburn Tiger, though. Kuhneman says AA is a badass. You married well, my friend. I did indeed. She is a badass. I'm scared of her sometimes. I certainly don't want to get crossways over. My daughter's out. Sometimes my daughter's like, why are you always back her up? I'm like, I'm scared of your mom. I don't want to end up dead. Let's see if Auburn jams. Auburn did not jam. But Auburn's going to jam him with a little sack ski. Austin Keys gets home. A little blitz action up the middle there. 
on a third down that you pretty much thought Maryland was going to be able to convert, but no, no, no. Not when you get sacked. Let's see, Cleveland says, J.J., you have said before that tequila is generally a bad day drink. It's a bad drink, period. But, yeah, day drinking tequila is bad. He says, well, tequila, tequila, me, baby, with the worm. (laughs) Cleveland, all I can say to you is I understand where you're coming from, and please stay hydrated because I want you to make good decisions, okay? This is the kind of game that could lead you and others to make bad decisions, and we don't want that, okay? We don't want that. Josh C. makes a, he asks a good question. J.J. is McGriff, a.k.a. Crime, staying in an off-the-field role. It certainly appears that way with the news, the revelation that Charles Kelly is going to be coming to Auburn next season. Charles Kelly, of course, uh, well-known for his time in Alabama and Florida State, but currently the defensive coordinator of Colorado is coming to Auburn. And he will be part of the defensive staff. I believe he's going to be on the field. And so, to me, that means crime's probably going to stay in his czar of accountability role. But they, they've they been playing some interesting shell games with who can go on the road and who cannot. And I could see a situation maybe where Charles Kelly kind of takes Ron Roberts's position on the recruiting trail. But uh, we shall see how this all breaks down in time. This is truly one of the great uh, conundrums of our time, which is like Peyton Thorne, and not necessarily Peyton himself, but it's like, is Peyton not good enough, or is this situation foobar for almost anyone except Cam Newton? I mean, I'm certain Cam Newton can make sense out of this mess. But uh, I'm just going to get this and wipe my nose with it. I don't care. Sorry, guys. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Let's see. Knuman says this is a good decision zone. That's what I like to hear. You say it and then you live it. You know what I mean? You got to you got to emote it. Michael W says I can't. I just can't understand how the coaches can't put more confidence in these kids. What are they saying leading up to the game? There's a chance you're going to beat. You're going to get beat, guys. Don't know. Daniel D says, is Charles Kelly a good coach? He's certainly an experienced coach. Yes, he's a very good recruiter also. So whether we want to kvetch over how good he is as a, as a coach, if you consider him apples to apples as a recruiter versus Ron Roberts, there's no comparison. Period. <laughs> there's a story there I'd like to hear a little bit more about. GW says tequila makes my clothes fall off. Wow. Who the last person you told on? Grandma. Uh, let's see. We got a super chat coming through from Feel Like a Stranger, the legend himself. Word up. Much love, Swoogan. I'm going to cough, dude. I've been coughing all day. Like pulled a muscle from coughing. Much love, Swiggins, Drainers, and Tates, especially Mama Tate. I'm sure everyone is reacting sanely to this well-planned and executed game. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going well, man. Just like you would expect. About like that uh, New Mexico State game. That was a winner. They did show Reed Hughes winning the hot chicken eating contest, so Auburn's already got that W packed away. Cassidy D.P. says, I could go for a high life and fried bologna sandwich from Roberts right about now. Boy, that, that would definitely, that might help me too. I think uh, bologna sandwiches will make you stop cough. That's what I heard. God, I pulled a muscle doing that. Galatian says, bring out the old snot rag. Bravo, JG. Thanks, brother. Just got to do what you got to do. We're going to fight through this. We've got to have the show. The show was good. All right, so Auburn takes over. Dare I say, Auburn's next failing offensive possession starts at the 20. I think that was... 
think that was a bad read. I need to see what I need to see what that backside defensive end was doing, but it's kind of a, it's a weird read. Number thirteen was just kind of floating in space. I don't think he was necessarily attacking the 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 play like like Peyton thought he was, and I think he should have handed that ball off. Hey, there's a first down. Now, that was a little bit of a uh, RPO situation there. Jay Robertson, one of our friends, uh, one of our Ole Miss friends we like and respect, says, sup, guys, happy new year. Jay Robertson lives up in the, uh, as I recall, northwest Arkansas, but he's an Ole Miss guy, and he comes in, he comes in peace. Glad to have you, brother, and a happy new year to you, my G. Jeff Boyard Denton, my man. This is Ballers Hydrate. They do indeed. I got a whole thing, though, I promise. And I haven't been drinking very much either, but. What game does this look like, man? Where the offense just absolutely sucks. Like, was it the Cal game that was like this? We were sitting here watching and going like, what the hell, man? I mean, this offense is in what the hell mode right now. I don't even know what's going on. <clears throat> that was horrible. That first down throw, if you want to call it that. I, I thought that was kind of a weird cutback by Jarquez. I thought he had the first down. And then he cut it back, and then he didn't get the first down. But, you know, third and two. It's good. Josh says, how many points we scored today? I, I think 13. <coughs> Which means Auburn's going to lose this game, but whatever. Uh, AU Mike says, most of them. <laughs> Wizard D says, New Mexico State. Yeah, the New Mexico State game was a mess, wasn't it? Uh, Knuman giving uh, Jay Robertson some uh, credit there for the Ole Miss. Uh, Ole Miss playing great against Penn State. Boy, a really good second effort there for Jarquez on that third and short, and he gets the first down plus about seven or eight more. So that's pretty good. Breaks off that first tackle. Breaks another tackle. Nice run. Anonymous says, the announcer said Rivaldo just set a single-season record for most reception by a tight end in Auburn history. God, man, rest in peace, Jack Schweigert. Uh oh, Payne's going deep. He's got a one. No. Caleb really didn't have a chance to compete for that ball. Honestly, I don't know what the story was on that. Blake D in the house. What up, brother? <clears throat> I've been coughing today a bunch, so I'm sorry. Uh, Ward Amigo and Happy New Year, Auburn family. Very ugly game so far, but I love you all. Blake D, obviously, uh, very very uh, positive every time he comes on the show, and we love that. Good to see you, Blake. Thanks for coming on. My G. Let's see. A.U. Taxman says he thinks Cal was, I guess, the Cal game. I just knocked out. Oh, God. Another throwaway. Uh, trying to not cough. See if I missed anything back here. I don't think I did. CDF had a super chat coming through. His second of the day says, "Is Flanny going to go and dry?" <laughs> CDF's worried that Ole Miss, who's had a great early part of the basketball season, is going to do some damage. And I think they're for real, honestly. I think uh, Al Flanagan, who's playing over there, and uh, Matthew Morell are both really good players. Uh, you know, cornerstone players, and for them and. Hey, there's Rivaldo again. Another first down throw. Looks like that little seam route's open. Um, yeah, I do think... Uh, I don't know if he's going to go in dry, but they're going to be a problem for Auburn this year, I think. I mean, they're only playing them once, but in the standings, I think they're going to be competition. Um, I think Auburn is going to be in that top tier challenging for the uh, the league title this year. I do. But there's a lot of teams, I think, that can that can get right in there and be a menace all the way into March.
Josh C. wants to know what's wrong with the OL today. Yeah, 10 played well. Oh, good God. It's just like the cow game, man. There's just nothing. It's just like nothing's working right now. Ugh. Goodness gracious. Cleveland Brown says, cough away, JG. Might be a good luck for AU. Uh, I feel like a stranger says we always play Ole Miss twice. You're right. They didn't re they didn't uh, reshuffle the uh, schedule on that side, did they? You're right. I get in this football mode and I forget. Man, that is an amazing catch from Rivaldo Fairweather right there for three yards. That is an amazing catch. Looks like Maryland's got somebody down and his teammate was like clamoring for help immediately. That's not good. Oh, no, he's trying to get up, is he? I hate it when I see kids get, get hurt. Oh. Boy, what a collision there. Luke Deal, I, to me, that's a completely uh, legal hit. It was just kind of a firm block, you know. But, wow, that was a lick. <laughs> Daniel D says, uh, put in Hank. Hey, who is that in your avatar? Is that um, is that the lead singer from Megadeth? Um, Day Mustaine, is that who that is? That's what I, it's. It's like so small on my screen, I can't tell. That's what she said. Let's see, D. Lucky says it's a six yard six yard gain to Rivaldo if it's thrown in front instead of like so far behind him he has to use the fingertips to pull it back to him. Yeah. Uh, Cassidy pieces four down territory for the offense. Need to get two plays to get seven yards. Yeah, Peyton's not been good today. He really hasn't been. And Dan Daniel D says yes. That is Dave Mustaine. Wow, I can't believe I pulled that one out. I can barely see him. Favorite Megadeth song? I think most people would say Hanger, but I would say uh what is that song? Now if there's a new way. I'll be the first in line. That's from Rust in Peace. I forget what the name of that song is. Uh I forget what it's called. Uh, P sales, that would be it. That's how long ago I was listening to them. Uh, GW says JDT equals a sophisticated dime bag, Daryl. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I did like dime though. Rest in peace. Still drinking on this uh, Castle and Key weeded, solid bourbon. Absolutely beautiful place to visit if you ever get a chance to see uh, Castle and Key in person. It's near uh, just a slightly south of Versailles, Kentucky. On uh, US 80 there, just a couple miles, and uh, it's beautiful down there. It's like in a little, I don't know what you call that, a little valley, I guess. It's lovely. Robert S. says, System of Destruction. We'll take that one. Oh, Anonymous says, my favorite Megadeth song is the last song they ever play. <laughs> you got him, dude. Dave Mustaine is never going to come back from that one, brother. Also, man, I don't know if you guys are into this. You're probably not, but uh, I'm, I'm a big drummer. I wish I was a better drummer. Uh, Solo Tigre is a much better drummer than I'll ever be. <laughs> Just wanted to say, but uh, Drumio on the internet has this cool thing where like, they'll bring notable drummers in, and these people will have to listen to a song one time and then figure out how to play the song. Like they're like, hey, man, you get to listen to it once, and then you got to play it, right? And they brought in the drummer from Megadeth, who's a dude from Belgium, I think. And uh, he did to do um, Edging by Blink-182. Literally one time through the song, and he was able to just hit it. Like, damn near 90, 99%. He had a couple fills that were a little bit different. Look at this. Boom! That's a legal hit, though, man. It was not dirty at all. Just a good lick. He's going to go in the tent. He just put a guy in the tent. Uh, Riley M says, love that show. I sure do. I couldn't believe how uh, couldn't believe how accurate he got after listening to it for one time through. It was crazy. And that guy, I don't I don't know his name. He seems so nice, man. I really like to party that guy. Hey, your tax man says highly recommend the private tour at Castle and Key. 
he's telling you that because he's been on it. That's nah, past interference now. Come on, guys. There we go. Whew. They may be able to get some points out of this drive, guys. Uh, Rob B says, so I'm sorry, guys. Even if we get the pieces we need, Peyton isn't ever going to be the guy. He's had some good games, though. But, yeah, whatever. Uh, Neil J says, just when you think the night can't get any worse, the current Mrs. Jones has just demanded that the TV get changed to the masked singer. A new low. Hey, sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Oh, man. <laughs> D-Lucky says, take the win, Neil Jones. I love it. Every single yard on the ground has just been earned, you know? Like, nothing, nothing easy. Nothing free. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, AU Taxman says the Megadeth drummer had also never heard of the song Mr. Brightside. Well, I mean, it's kind of a different genre, right? I mean, who listens to the Killers? They were actually my number one band last year, according to Spotify, but whatever. Who's 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 counting? Let's see what they got here. I don't like the options here. Man, that was very close to an interception. And Rivaldo kind of like snatched it right off the top of his head. That was a big time play from Rivaldo right there to save them from trouble. William says, quit making excuses for PT. I'm not. Look at Damari in there running. Bring it. Bring it. Scott C. said they need to pay Fairweather more. Yeah, well. Mm -hmm. They probably are. But who am I to tell you that? Let's see. Runner 24 thinks the killers are solid. Yeah, I listen to them a lot. I don't know why I like them. They're just they're cheesy, but they're 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 good. They sound good to me. Solo Tigre says Drumio makes fantastic content. I love it, man. Actually, I was just watching one yesterday. The drummer from a Journey playing separate ways. Look at this. Get your ass in there. That's what I'm talking about. The more you fuck around, the more you're gonna find out. Touchdown, they're on the board. we go finally get a touchdown actually just get some points and i said did i say luke deal i was thinking luke deal it was actually brandon frazier just a little play action pass that was on target for once and they turned that one into some points alex mcpherson going for the pat here and that's cash money right there Most compact Auburn kicker since? Scott Etheridge, maybe? I say Scott Etheridge. Seems like Auburn's kickers through the years have been fairly big dudes, or at least tall, you know? I think back to Anders. Daniels, real tall. Wes Byram was tall. Scott Etheridge is kind of a thin dude, though. Ornatius is 223 to 7. <laughs> Golly. Let's see. Jonathan T says, turn this into some momentum. Going to be tough to do with the uh, very little time left on the clock for the second quarter. JG still has up here his first quarter. Dumbass. I got it. No problem. I feel like I missed some... Uh, some super chats that have come through. Let's see. Cassidy P jumped in. TD by Encino Man. There he is. I know he loves this stuff. <laughs> uh, Canuman jumps in. Uh, we're back. Ward Amigo smashed the like to celebrate. We only have 26 likes on this video, which is a shame. We should have more. Al Del Greco on On Mouse says, Ah, but Scott was after him. <clears throat> So he'd be more recent. But yeah, Al was a thin dude at the time. Not that he's not Al, but he, you know, he's pretty, he was pretty small back then. See, Snobbert says there was an amazing Tuberville-Auburn tribute video. 
set to all these things that I have done by the killers. Interesting. I'm not seeing that one. <laughs> Robert S says, JG, we should have gone for two. We need points. <laughs> Chris A says, I just got here. What did I miss? You didn't miss shit, dude. You missed one scoring drive that just ended. Uh, it was a 14-play, 80-yard drive according to the stats. Now, somebody said 15 plays in here. I don't know. It's possible you're right and they're wrong. But uh, 14 plays, 80 yards, and 456. And that's the first time all day, Chris, that Auburn's offense has done really anything of note. I need to get some of these stats updated. I've been bitching about how bad it's been and I haven't even updated the stats. Peyton is now 9 of 19 for 62. And he got the tud. He got a tuddy, as the kids say. Uh, Jarquez, seven carries for 33. Um, let's see. Damari, three carries for eight. I don't think Peyton's been running the ball very much. Um, he has four carries for seven. That's mostly just running for his life. And then third down. Let's see what time. Hey, stop doing that, bro. God. That's so annoying. I still can't see third down yet. Come over here, bro. Third down is two of seven for Auburn, three of four for them. That's weird. That is so strange. They were three of three to start with, and it was like in the first five minutes they had the three for three, and since then they've only had one. <coughs> God, I keep coughing. It makes my... God, don't make that stop. Anonymous says we're only down five field goals. It's not over. Was it over when the Germans, Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Hell no, it wasn't. <laughs> That's my guy right there. Animal House never gets old. It's timeless. Timeless. Melee says five yard fair weather dumps all day long. Gong, 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 gong. Ravin says defense had a good breather. Hope they can make a quick stop. That would be sweet. Have a little pick six action, huh? That'd be even better. That'd be even sweeter. Ooh, Auburn doing some some trickiness on that kickoff coverage. Let's see if it yields anything. I thought Austin Keys was in good position to make a, a, a nice tackle there, and he just didn't quite get it, I guess. Here's the clutch delivery of the game. That was more like a clutch catch than a clutch delivery. I got dude thought he had a pick, too. <laughs> Daniel D says, Georgia or Florida State? Man, that is tough, right? Yeah, I wish they could both lose. <laughs> Allegiant thinks those are going to get picked. And sixth at some point. He's had a few throws that have been worrisome from that perspective. And he'll probably have a few more. Oh, boy, that's just fortuitous for uh, Maryland. Got the tip ball, and it tips right up to the receiver behind the defender. How about that? Oh, that's a tough one. You feel like you've made a... You defended the ball well. And then it just gets away from you. So close. So they got a first and 10 now on the Auburn side. Throw a little RPO there. Missed tackle from DK. No big deal. <coughs> oh, man. Good play by the defender there. Colton Hood. I knew some of these numbers I wouldn't recognize because they haven't been playing very much this year. Colton Hood is number 24 today. All right, second and eight, and they got about four. So they're looking at a third and third and three, third and four. Auburn's got the full complement of timeouts here, but they're letting the clock run anyway. So I guess that tells you what they're planning to do.
I'm a little surprised by this. Are you guys surprised by this? I feel like they should not be wasting all this time. They did not get that first down. So there's 30 seconds wasted right there. Well, the clock just stopped. Yeah, Maryland's going to set up for a uh, field goal, I guess. It's going to be a long one. Their kicker has been pretty good, but he's not good from distance. So I, I, this is going to be 50-50 at best for him from this distance. I'm going to check my Skype to see uh, if, it, if it's working today. If you hear an English chick start talking, then you know it's working. Testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Got it. All right, it's working. Some days it works and some days it doesn't, and I have no idea which one. I didn't have a chance to, to uh, test it. Liberty against Oregon, big-time game right there. You think Bo Nix is going to have a big day? <coughs> Cassidy pieces somewhere Kevin Plank is smiling at this atrocity. I was very glad to have met him a second time when he was at Auburn uh, in August. Uh, making another pitch to Auburn to try to stay with Under Armour. He is a University of Maryland graduate, and I believe Maryland was the first team to catch on with Under Armour. But Auburn was one of the first and has been with them ever since. So, yes, two of the original Under Armour schools here for sure. Josh Cease's damn Kevin Sumlin is on the Maryland staff. He sure is. He sure is. He's co-offensive coordinator, but I don't think he calls plays. They're going to go for it on fourth and one, and they're going to get it on a just a quarterback power there because they know that their kicker can't get in from there. He may be able to get in from the 30, though. <coughs> oh, snap. Keontae almost picked that ball right there. He got two hands on that bad boy. Neil J says, let's keep this a no English zone, please. Of course, Neil J is Welsh. He's a Welshman living in Scotland. So he's not a big fan of uh, England. And there will be people out there that will say, wait, isn't Wales England? No, it's not. Definitely not. Welsh people are tougher, grittier. They respect the work. They're, they they stand on business. Now, that's a drop right there. I don't have to count it, though, because it's for the other team. Snobburn says, Neil, do you own a Highland cow? Dude, Neil lives in uh, Glasgow, Scotland, bro. <laughs> He's all, you're all right. It's been a lot better for Auburn in the last 10 minutes, but those first 20 minutes were horrible. Good golly, they were bad. Some of the worst. I thought I saw a hold there on Keldrick. Not against oh wait, somebody defending Keldrick or blocking Keldrick. Let's see. Bill says Wales and England, as well as Scotland, are part of Great Britain. I mean, yeah, but they're not the same country. And, uh, you know, it'd be like saying the Georgia and Alabama are the same thing. Like, no, we're not. I see a face mask. I see a really bad face mask, like a really bad one, like a five-seconder. And you're going to be shocked to learn that he didn't quite catch it. He didn't see it. I saw Elijah McAllister's head turned around like Linda Blair in The Exorcist, but I'm sure he was probably just doing that for fun. God, that ball started curving at the end. I was like, it's going to miss. But he hit that bad boy. <sighs> we don't do anything for opponent field goals. Screw them. 24 they got. So, disastrous half, really, but could have been worse. <coughs> Auburn got itself straightened out a little bit in the second quarter. Sobert says, we visited Scotland over the summer and loved seeing the coups. I don't know what that means. 
Oh, the coos. Gotcha. The coos go. Moo. Neil, not a fan of cows. Bill M says 24-7 was the comeback score. If only Cam Newton were on this team. What if I told you that Cam Newton could play again? And Nick Fairley. And Tyrone Green. That'd be nice. Marks McNeil. Love to have Marks McNeil back. Like, Marks McNeil as a junior. That'd be good. Not a mouse says, do this one right here. I can't believe they missed that that uh, face mask. That was not a you know, grab and let go. It was just like literally like... <laughs> Bro, what does he got to do? Like, screw his head off? And what? <sighs> Whatever. All right, eight seconds, guys. No problem. No problem. Lane says this is pathetic. <coughs> this is not a good performance. I agree with you on that, Lane. Screw that up. Job J. Way to be. Auburn has not been standing on business in this game. That's for damn sure. Let's see. Spicy pieces. My girlfriend says the Welsh didn't hold off the best Air Force in the world. Neil, I don't know what to tell you on that one, brother. I bet the Welsh played a role in it, though. Wow. Chat is really hopping today. This is one of the most animated chats we've had. Kanuma jumps in and says, what was that sound again? Yum, 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 yum. I think that was the sound. It was when you're just grabbing on a face mask and you won't let it go. All right, so Jarquez gets a innocuous run up the middle for a modest gain, and we just go to halftime at 24 to seven. And that was a uh, that was a half to forget for the Auburn Tigers. The only encouraging thing is, first of all, I don't think anybody got hurt. Second of all, they had a good drive to close the half. And third of all, Auburn has the, uh, they're going to take the ball to start the second half. So that's good. Spider Chaw says, I just want a winning season. Please, God. <laughs> all right. I already talked to Coach Hunter. <laughs> and he's good for a halftime call. And if you guys remember, we didn't get him uh, for the Iron Bowl. He was doing some other stuff, so. We're going to be very, very stoked to have Hunter back on our proverbial airwaves. Yes, sir. Hey, man, what up? Ah, ugh. (laughs) Yeah. No, no, zero fun, sir. No, it was terrible. Like, what's going on out there? Uh, Well, uh, that that, that freeze quote a couple weeks ago about – not having very intense bowl practices and not using all of their bowl, their allocated bowl days. You know, as much as I hate to say it, I think that may be, that may be showing a little bit. Ooh. And, uh, you know, this team doesn't look – the young guys that are playing don't look ready to play. Uh, Kev Wooden in the secondary has been – he's seeing the right things, but he's a half a step behind on everything. Like you, you can tell that, that he hasn't gotten enough – live reps uh you know the opt-outs are, are exploiting some of auburn's accentuating excuse me some of auburn's are spots that were already weak you know maryland's doing a good job attacking the edge defensively they don't have anybody outside of mcleod that can really hold contain that's been problematic uh running a lot of conflict plays in terms of rpos and gap scheme play actions bring the linebackers down and create that that separation between the second and third level of the defense and the young safeties just aren't ready, you know, or dialed in enough to come downhill fast and attack it. Uh, offensively, Maryland knows Auburn does not have a vertical threat. And so they're playing eight and nine in the box, and Auburn's trying to run some 11 and 12 and even 13 personnel, but Maryland's putting a plus one, you know, outside that expanded surface every time and taking away the outside zone and the swing passes and, and anything that Auburn's trying to do horizontally. So there's uh, not a lot of good that's happened so far on, on the Tigers' side of the ball. Yes, I would agree with that, brother. Uh, I don't know how to fix this defensive problem, though. I mean, the opt-outs are gone, and they ain't coming back. Man, 
Yeah, like I, I don't know that you can. I think uh, I think you're going to have to be about 50-50 in terms of, you know, every other play we're going to sell out, let these guys play man coverage and try to get, you know, try to cause problems in the backfield. Be Go to that Ron Roberts chaos philosophy full tilt right here. You know, hopefully then you can force some turnovers, get them behind the sticks a little bit, make these backup quarterbacks for Maryland uncomfortable. Uh, Lockley's done a good job with Maryland. Like he's got – they haven't run a lot of different stuff. You've seen them run the same plays over and over again several times, but he's kind of, I guess you'd say confidence plays, things that those particular quarterbacks can do and do well, and and, and they're doing that effectively. You've seen the little underneath eight screen a few times, the uh, counter RPO, you know, a uh, little quarterback power inside off the, off the zone action. So, you know, they, they've got a good game plan in place, and their defensive line is – whooping Auburn's offensive line ass yeah. at the point of attack. That's happening. Yeah, 53 is two yards deep in the backfield every time. And uh, I mean, he's getting blown off the ball pretty bad. So I don't really know what to do to fix that. I think Auburn may have to do some things, uh, maybe more motion, straight set, flip the strength, vary the cadence, you know, to slow the get off down from uh, Maryland's defensive line. They're going to have to nut up and try to hit some shots down the middle of the field on first down. You know, they're not – otherwise, Maryland's going to stack the box and say, all right, you're going to have to be content getting three yards in the run game on first down. That's what they've done and it hasn't been there. We've been talking a bunch in the chat. Is is Peyton Thorne – is he good enough to get Auburn where it needs to go next year, even if he has the better wideouts and the better offensive line? <laughs> You've seen glimpses of it, you know, but I, I, have you seen it consistently? I, I don't know. You know, I do think I, – I definitely think they've got to bring in somebody to compete. You know, I, I I don't think you should dismiss him or try to replace him, but you damn sure got to have somebody to compete with him. You know, I don't think you can put all your eggs in that basket. Uh, I would love to have seen them. You know, there were several names that I heard of, of young guys, of some dual threat guys that have already signed elsewhere. But, you know, I had heard that Auburn was going to be interested in and in on early that they didn't really seem to pursue, so. Yeah, I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. It's really hard to judge because you watch, man. These these receivers get no that they velcro to the DBs. You know they don't get separation. Several times when he does hit them in the hands, they don't catch it. They don't get off the ground and go attack the ball in the air. You know, had Cam Brown when when Thorn scrambled and, and threw the ball over the middle of the field when when Cannon Brown was in one on one, had he come back to to the ball a little bit and gone up, he's got a chance to make a huge play. And he stood out there like an eight-year-old center fielder in T-ball and tried to let it come down and land in his chest. And they're just, you know, there's there's not a lot from that group. So, you know, idealistically, you'd love to say, yeah, put some better receivers around him and he can roll. You know, I mean, he did it. He did it at Michigan State when he had some when he had a good receiving core. So yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think years, maybe is the only answer you can give. You think he's two uh, years better now, but I don't know. I think the speed of the SEC. Threw him off a lot, as well as the kind of discombobulation, I guess, of the offensive scheme early for Auburn. And uh, I think we they may have inadvertently stifled his development themselves. Damn. I hate to hear that, brother. I mean, it's just, you know, looking at it, you know, we saw the, the quarterback rotation early. You know, there was, there was obviously some – I mean, you've talked about it ad nauseum, the disconnect between Freeze and Montgomery in terms of play calling – so uh, none of that helps a QB. That's correct. Tell me about Charles Kelly. He's going to be coming on to Auburn in some role. Tell me your thoughts about him as a defensive guy. I think he's a really good teacher in the secondary. Really, really good teacher in the secondary. Uh, great recruiter. You know, he can sit down. At, he can sit down in your office and, and sell you whatever the hell he wants to sell you. Uh, if that's the role that he's in, if he's coming in as a position coach and, and, a, and a recruiting guy, I think it's a huge addition. You know, I think it's a really huge addition. I don't think he's ever fared extremely well as the play caller, you know. So uh, I, I hope that's not the case. But uh, he brings a he brings real high end recruiting chops and very good teacher in the secondary. Yeah, might as well just get more players. I mean, hell, that it seems like that's the worst thing that could happen, right? Yeah, I mean, you, there's no such thing as having too much talent on the team, you know. Yeah. Well, let's see if they can do something here in the second half. I'm skeptical, Hunter. I'll be honest with you, but so, man, I got if they if they don't these these first five minutes are going to define the the second half of the game. 
they, if they don't score on this first drive and turn out and get a stop and give yourself a chance, you know, you put a pin in this one. And you hate that because this, this is the kind of stuff you built all that momentum coming off signing day, you know, in the way that they recruited, and you hate to see it die, not necessarily die, but, you know, get cold right here with a poor bowl showing. Yeah. All right, Hunter, appreciate you being with us, brother. Yeah, brother, appreciate it, Jeff. See you, man. Bye. There he goes, Hunter, the legend himself, Hunter 48 on the bunker, and a, a longtime high school football coach, defensive coordinator, now a head coach uh, in the Alabama high school ranks. So, good guy to always talk to, to talk ball about. We're going to get Kozan on here in just a second. I need, to take, I need to step out for just a sec, but I'll be right back, and we'll talk to Kozan, all right? I mean, I would take it. Hey, my my kitty's here, y'all. Hey, Hirsch, come here, bro. Hirsch, come here. There he is. Herschel the legend. Say what's up, bro. He don't like to be held very much, so he won't be here long. Say what's up, yo. Oh. Big H. We call him Big H, too. Yeah, uh, somebody said they heard the drumsticks. Uh, Cordy was playing with them. Playing with the drumsticks. Working on my doubles and triples. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for uh, being patient there for a second. Uh, Big Gap, my man, says, what's up? What's good? Sipping some Crown Royal salted caramel. All right. Probably not something I'd be drinking, but uh, enjoy it, brother. Glad to hear you drinking some uh, some Canadian whiskey. But whiskey's good. Uh, let's get... Uh, Sir Alex Cozan on the horn, former uh, Auburn lineman and uh, just all around smart dude and entertaining guy. Hello. Hey, what's up, Alex? Hey, Jay. Word. Well, I think it's uh, it's not often you see a game lost in the first quarter, but going down 21 zip in the first quarter, that's uh, it makes it tough. It makes it tough for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they battled back in that second quarter, did some things, but it, it seems like it's a little too much to overcome. We might have uh, brought a knife to a gunfight with that helmet communication. I, I don't know if it, I don't know how much of a difference that really makes, but uh, for the, second and third string quarterback i got to think it helps make them more comfortable it's got to just be able to hear that conversation you know yeah yeah i mean it's uh 
definitely made it easier on them. I think, you know, defense as a whole was pretty mediocre in that first quarter, especially with those missed tackles. It was, uh, it, it wasn't pretty. Um, but, you know, I, I think they, they battled back there, had some negative plays, and that helped get them a little bit more comfortable as the game settled in. It was just, you know, you can't start a game like that. It's, it's tough. Uh, and then on offense, you know, when your punter has the biggest offensive play in the first quarter, it's, it's not going to be a great day. I think the, uh, the wide, you know, the Jabari's, Jabari's Johnson, him being out, I think is, is just huge for this offense. He's the only guy that could create separation. And without that, in, when you're playing from behind, you don't have any receivers that are creating anything uh, for Thorne. It, it just changes the whole game plan. I mean, Fairweather's making some plays out there, but I, I don't know if Auburn's completed a, a pass through the air over, over 10 yards. It's, uh, you know, they're dinking and dunking and trying to get back into it, but it's, uh, it's tough. Anything sticking out to you up front, Alex? It just doesn't seem like the, the offensive line's been playing as well as they have been. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're, uh, I don't think they're winning the game for Auburn right now, but they've had a couple of nice runs. I, I, I don't think they're, they're losing it either. I, to me, the biggest problem is, you know, there is no – I don't think a Maryland defensive back is even remotely concerned with uh, the play of the, the wide receivers for Auburn right now. It's, uh, you know, you, you, every, every throw down field, the, the DBs pretty much all over them, uh, all over the Auburn receivers, and then the Auburn receivers aren't going up and getting that football. So it's uh, – I, I think when the defense doesn't really have to uh, – account for that it, it, it just makes it harder in the box to, to run the ball I haven't seen the offensive line give up uh, you know crazy pressure to the, to the quarterback there are a couple of pressures but it wasn't anything that Thorne couldn't handle so you know it, again not winning the game but I, I don't think they're losing the game either all right so would you like to see maybe more deep shots I mean do you feel like uh, Peyton is in the right headspace and these wide receivers are good enough to deal with deep shots at this point yeah, I don't. I don't know if anyone's. Uh, I, I don't know if anyone's getting open or winning uh, versus their. Uh, you know, the DB they're up against to uh, to make those throws. Uh, the answer, I think, it's more of. Yeah, you, know, you got to keep running the football and keep trying to get the ball to uh, fair weather and the tight ends. That's really the only success they've had in the passing game. And if that opens up some other things uh, for the other wide receivers, then great. But I, I, I'm not counting on that. I mean, I think. Yeah, you know, realistically, I think this is a too big of a hole to overcome uh but but who knows you know if you come out get a touchdown here and then get a stop yeah you know, then it's a then it's a 10 point game uh you know not not getting those turnovers on defense you know that fumble and i think the second or third touchdown drive that maryland had uh you know that that would have uh that would have been seven right there and then keontae scott not picking that ball off uh in the drive right before the the half where they got the field goal you know it's, it's Little plays like that that don't seem like uh, that big of a deal in the moment, but it's yeah, you know, those are points. And when an offense that's not built to play from behind, it it, it just uh, it makes it too much to overcome. So we'll see. I think they need a touchdown right here coming out of the half. You've played a bunch of like postseason games uh, as an Auburn Tiger. Is it tougher to get up for those games in a bowl? I mean, it, it, is it tough? Is it a challenge? I don't. I mean, for me, anytime I'm strapping on the helmet and the shoulder pads and getting out there, I'm I'm going to kick somebody's ass. I, I don't know what the kids these days do, but uh, you know, when, when I was playing, that that was my mentality. I think for anybody uh, on that team, that that's probably theirs too. But I think right now they're starting a lot of young players, uh, a lot of players that don't have those reps and don't have the, that experience. And when they come out there and let up a big play or they get in the hole, uh, that makes them play a little bit more timid, and that's where some of these things get away from you. Yeah, I think the offense not having Johnson is gigantic. Um, it's just, you know, I, to me, I, I'm kind of su surprised he was even uh, – I know the kid makes his own choice, but I'm kind of surprised he was even allowed to leave because I know they've got a, a great recruiting class coming in, but he's really the only experienced guy that, that you'd want to have back. So I'm surprised they didn't kick him a little bit more NIL money to stick around for one more year. Uh, mm -hmm. To me – you know, that's somebody you, you want and need going into next year. Uh, and then on defense, you know, when you've, when you've got a I, – I don't think the defensive line is playing great by any means. The, bi the biggest thing I saw from the defensive line and linebackers were just, you know, not, not, uh, not keeping contained, letting guys get, out, uh, get outside of them, and then and not making those tackles. And the DBs, they are young right now. 
they left a couple of plays, but I, I didn't think they were atrociously bad. Uh, you know, you had that long pass, and then you had uh, to I think Prather, uh, the, the big wide receiver, and then yeah. you had a those, those throws in the red zone where they uh, looked a little discombobulated, and that's uh, that's where Maryland kind of got those touchdowns. So it's uh, it's just a I think it's it's something you're going to see in these bowl games with uh, with players sitting out and uh, you know the transfer portal and you know on a team that's already thin and we knew that coming in you know the second string's not that great and you know, they haven't recruited at, at that high of a level so when you've got key players sitting out it just makes everything a, a, a tougher uh, a bigger hill to, to overcome yeah for sure all right Alex you've been an amazing guest all season long I appreciate you taking time to talk with us and teach us some football man yeah, no doubt, Jay. Uh, you have a good one, and uh, let's see if they can uh, kick some ass in the second half. All right, brother. See you, man. See ya. Bye. There he is, Alex Kozan, uh, who played guard at Auburn for a long time, started uh, four or five years. And uh, just a, a, a bright individual. Glad to have him on the uh, show to talk uh, some ball with us. And he's been doing it all year long, so good stuff. By the way, I loved when he said, anytime I strap on the helmet, I'm going out there to kick someone's ass. I like that attitude, man. <laughs> hell yeah uh that's the right i like like that's that, that's a winning attitude to me au texans is back to drumming jay you've seen whiplash right great performances in that one. Oh yeah oh yeah the guy from oz schillinger from oz i don't, I don't know what his real name is and uh yeah that was a kind of a bummer movie though kind of sad not not a lot of happy people in that one i pulled a muscle in my uh my midsection from coughing it hurts so bad. Ah, God, the little things that happen when you get old. Kadumin says Alex Kozan is awesome. So glad to hear his takes at half. You know what's cool about Alex, man? He's good. He knows football, and he's just a nice person. So I, I, we love having him on the show. Hopefully, we'll be able to keep him going next year and see what's going on. You know, it never even occurred to me to have uh, Joshua Holsey on here. I probably should have. We'll probably do that next year. Josh is working for the NFL Players Association now up in. Uh, in the greater D.C. area. Uh, so I'm interested to see how that goes. He just started like maybe a month ago. Uh, so in a couple of months, I'll just kind of see what he's up to and what he's thinking about that job. But, uh, you know, he played in the NFL for a little while. Uh, was a great player at Auburn. And uh, Sean Jackson getting ready to return this bad boy. All right, so we'll move on to the third quarter here. Alex thinks that this is just too much for them to overcome. And I think – Based on the way this offense has been playing this game, I don't think there's any question that he's right on the money there. But I still think Auburn can skew a little more positively in this game and get themselves out of this hole. As he mentioned, you know, you get a touchdown on this opening drive and you cut it to 10, and that's pretty manageable at that point. I think the problem is just that, you know, do you trust them to, first of all, have a, have a touchdown drive to open the second half and then maintain any kind of semblance of rhythm? And then defensively, I mean, I thought they played better in the second quarter, but they're going to have to play even better to, to win this game. Yeah. A lot 20, my guy. This is Ward Ann from Nissan Stadium. Sack sickles everywhere. Love it. Uh, AU Texan says, can we get Halsey's mom on the Zoom chat? Wow. I, I know. That's somebody who knows, who remembers recruiting. I mean, she's a... Wonderful human being, too, but uh, Josh Holsey's mom is very, very pretty lady. Yes. Her name is Marilyn, and she uh, could have could have been a model, I think. I don't know. I don't think she did, though. I didn't have the, I didn't ask that question, though. Let's see. Yeah, GW says, JJT needs to have faith on mud wrestling with the AA. How about, can I just, can I just wrestle her? I think AA would probably be okay with it. She loves faith. All right. We got a little counter action there that didn't work for much at all for a two open the second half. Legit says there's still a chance that we got to play better all around. That's right. Got to play better in a whole bunch of different ways. E Hall says if we don't score first drive, I'm flipping over to the natty and rooting for the Knowles against the hated Georgia Bulldogs. Yikes. Uh. All right, two by two. I think uh, Gus would call this doubles. I don't know what Hugh calls it. <laughs> God, 
Uh, too much edge pressure, man. Ah, ah, it's like a 15-yard loss on third down. Hey, man, I know that it's a, you know once you know you're in trouble that you just you don't have a way to convert the third down, but just throw the fucking ball away. Like, there's no reason to take another 15 yards and then give them another 15 yards on their next possession. Like, it's just... Now they're going to punt the ball, and they're going to probably take over 15 yards from where the first down marker would have been, you know? So, as you just... That was a hell of a kick, though. Oscar just... uh covered up some trouble there he made up for that extra 15 that Peyton just threw away so they're going to start on like the 42 right there Russell says this is horrible it is it's bad it's bad I mean it's like the Cal game and it's it's New Mexico State honestly I mean it's it's bad it's really bad (sighs) Riley M just says FFS I hear you brother I do Hey, you taxman says, which bunker ride is going to keep Alyssa Lang warm tonight? I hope we have some people that step up and get that job done. We should. Boy, there's a drop, and I don't have to credit that to Auburn. Yikes. FJ Tab says, we come out and run two plays up the middle. Oh, you know, there was a super chat that came in when we were doing the the calls. Let me go get back and get that bad boy. Uh, it was Cassidy P is who it was. He said, need men in black flash thing for that first half. Here, just look here. Neuralizer, I believe they called it. <coughs> RPO slant throw, a little too high. And now Maryland is looking at a third and ten. Oh, come here, bro. Lane says, uh, seems like every time this team takes a step forward, they take a step back. Gibbet says, uh, do we need a new OC? I think you're going to have a new OC regardless, um, whether it's in name or in principle, but I, it's going to be Hugh. Hugh is going to be your offensive coordinator next year. Now, will they have a new person in that role? Oh, Oh, my good. Caleb Wooden. And another drop, dude. Yikes. Two drops on this drive, so they're dealing with their own problems. Oh, my God. Caleb Wooden with a banshee blitz and just completely whiffed. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Ed D says not a drop. Hmm, okay. I'm not I'm, I'm glad I'm not counting theirs. So I might disagree with you on that one. I don't like disagreeing with you, Ed. Oh my god. He, he I thought he was gonna fumble that. Keontae kind of caught the ball here and it was wobbling, and I thought, here we go. And then All right, guys. Another chance to get things right here. Shane, a little bit of sarcasm here. Love the aggressive play calls coming out down 17. Yeah, you really like that uh, counter up the middle for half a yard and then a uh, like an ISO run for another two yards. It was, it was good. Very aggressive. Really, really a lot of situational awareness on that one. <laughs> Cats DP jumps in. Can't, can't afford to not get home if our only pressure comes from the blitz. Talking about Caleb Wooden on that one, yeah. He was he had a wide open lane there for the kill shot and he killed himself. He just kind of swung his arms and missed completely and slid out of the play. Got to finish that. A spicy piece is eighty percent of this roster is G five material. Well, you had a G five coach assembling most of this roster, so there you go. Raven said that he bobbled that punt return. He did briefly, kind of caught it up by his face mask and bobbled it briefly, but he was fine. Diego C says uh, Hugh asked to take over the offense. That's why he was hired to begin with, which is actually true. Yeah. 
I mean, you think when you hire Hugh, you're going to get recruiting and you're going to get the offense working. And uh, you got the recruiting part. part uh, that part is straight. But uh, the scoring part, uh, 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 not as much. Certain games, yes. But uh, in general, no. Hey, you Mike says, can we punt on first down? <laughs> hey, you remember the time that Spurrier punted on third down and Jordan Hare? He was so disgusted with the way things were executed on first and second down. He said, fuck it, we're going to punt on third down. It was amazing. Asked him about it afterward, and he's like, man, just weren't playing. So I don't see the point in even trying. We'll just punt it away and see what our defense can get us. I'm like, oh, my God. I love that. Jacob, it ain't happening, bro. He says, at this point, put in Holden Gurner. It's just not happening. I mean, they're gonna if they're completely out of the game, like for real, then maybe just to see what happens. But if they're trying to win the football game, which they are still in that mode right now, no. They're going to roll with uh, Payton. Anthony R. says Wooden has to sack the quarterback. And blitz. Bro, I would take it down a step. I would just say Wooden has to touch the quarterback on that one. D. Lucky said the J. Fair dress. He did. He's actually playing a little bit tonight. Um, he's played on offense. They haven't targeted him, but he's been playing. What are 24 and Snowfall fake punt would work on first down? <laughs> Oh, man. <coughs> I hate this for the uh, the Nashville-Auburn club. They were so stoked to have this bowl game there, and they've done an amazing job of hospitality uh, all really all week, and they're so fired up, and then this dud stinks. But every drive is a new drive, guys. Man, Neil J even says Thorne is not the guy, but we can't stick in all our eggs in one basket with a new quarterback next year. That's good. That's good thinking, man. That's how I feel about it. I, I just, you have to have somebody who's a demonstrable improvement. There's a deep throw. Wow, Caleb wasn't even – I don't even think he had his eyes on the ball. I don't think that was catchable, though. Frank Wycheck. There's a name I hadn't thought of in a while. Josh C says uh, defense going to need to score for a comeback. Just like the Raiders do, huh? Yeah, in our last game, we had uh, defensive touchdowns on back to back plays. It was amazing. Peyton's going to get picked up and body slammed one of these days, and he's going to hate that. GW says, can we stop calling Peyton Peyton? He's not anywhere near a Peyton. I <laughs> got him. <laughs> what in the world is going on here? What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? 33-yard line, third and five. Let's run a three-yard route, like a three-yard hitch, and then fight for one extra yard and be a yard short. That's what I'm thinking. What a run. Jarquez, the, the last yard and a half of that run was all him. They're going to spot it right on the line. It's going to be a first down, though. How about that? Chris Sale going from the Red Sox to the Bravos. He's probably de he's definitely past his prime. And with that weird throwing motion, I got to believe his elbow is going to blow one of these moments. But, hey, man, you might as well. Oh, fuck. Here we go, guys. Who was it that said that shit? We had someone. Hey, call your shot in the chat. Somebody said that's going to happen. They said the way he's been throwing out wide, he's been not reading shit correctly, and his throws have been ducky. And sure enough, there it is right there. I don't like your jerk-off name. I don't like your jerk-off face. I don't like your jerk-off behavior. And I don't like you, jerk-off. Do I make myself clear? Who, somebody called that. I just don't remember who it was. That's bad. 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 It's the longest pass play of the day for Peyton.
That was bad, man. Boy, that was a bad one. That was like some Daniel Cobb shit right there. Hey, you taxman, so that was way too easy. Man, it was so easy. You're right about that. 31-7 to Maryland. Good golly. I mean, I just I would have almost guaranteed an Auburn win today. Like, seriously. But not when you're playing like this. You got no chance. <sighs> Rich Anvil says dot, dot, dot. I like that. Uh, no, that was not a drop. Good job, Patrick P. <laughs> not a drop. Galatian says, for all you PT apologists, here's your sign. Guys, I don't know if there's any apologists. I think there's people who hate him, and there's people who don't hate him, but nobody actually likes him. I mean, you know what I mean. Diego says, Thorne is not the guy, Jay, if anybody had any doubts. He's going to have to get better to be the guy, that's for sure. Yo, Malcolm says, I don't understand why we didn't get a quarterback. I think that the short answer on that, Malcolm, uh, you're going to have to just take this for what I'm telling you. And they only have so much money, right? And he made a decision that he had other positions that needed attention more than a quarterback. But I think your point is well taken. And I think that Hugh also is a guy who will consider things even after he's made a decision. So we know he's kind of been ride or die with Peyton in the last whatever, you know, month saying that this that's his whole paradigm for sub supplementing or augmenting the roster is we're going to hold a quarterback and fill everything else. He still has an opportunity to go out there and get dudes. So he may do that. This is a horrendous, horrendous performance, but it's, it's bad all around. War Eagle zero, zero, zero eight says get Jimmy R on the horn. Cam Ward looking like a better investment. Thanks for the show. JGT. Appreciate you brother. One of our uh, legends, <coughs> excuse me, channel legends. Uh, just, I mean, I know you're kind of being facetious about Jimmy Rain, but Jimmy Rain is uh, a very helpful and giving individual. So, yeah, he does a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're talking about need more, I don't think Jimmy Rain's the place you go because he's given a ton. Just one man's opinion. I know you're kind of being facetious and just kind of saying, I mean, I know that, but some people are. Some people take that stuff really seriously. Cassie DP, who's always uh, keeping a track of how many field goals it's going to take to win the game. <laughs> says nine field goals will win this thing. My G. Uh, Josh C says, let's see Holden now. PT is not it right now. You know what? I thought that was a, not a great idea before, but I, I'm more open to it now. Yeah, I'm more open to it now. Let's see, Josh says, how is QB not the most important player on the team? I think you're misreading what I'm saying. I do think it's the most important player on the team. I think if you look at where Peyton is, like, like, like take all your position groups and then say, how does Auburn's group compare to the average uh, Power 5 group? In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, it's also Hughes, it just so happens, there are other positions where he thinks Auburn is – lower compared to the other teams than they are at quarterback. Now, this is a particularly bad performance from Peyton, and, but he's not necessarily awesome all the time either. To me, he's probably bottom, I don't know, 30% of all college football or power five. He's not the worst, but he's not even average. I think he's below that. But I think there's other positions on the team where you know Auburn is really bad. Oh, for fuck's sake. He just fumbled a kickoff return. He fumbled a kickoff return, guys. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. This is how we're getting worked right now. This is, this is what we're having to watch right here, guys. Goodness gracious. No, that's a fumble, 100%. 
Scott says, F this S, I'm done. I appreciate the uh, <laughs> the self uh, checking on those words, buddy. Uh, Snobber says, JG, how many freshmen will start next year? I, I don't know about freshmen, but newcomers, a lot. Yeah, a lot. It's just going to underscore just how important it is to get some of these uh, positions filled, particularly on offense. Uh, left tackle's got to get filled. I think you're good at center. I think you're good at left guard, assuming Dylan Wade comes inside. Probably okay, right guard. I mean, I like Jeremiah Wright. Um, right tackle is too tall. You know, at this point, he's just maybe okay. But you give him another year. Um, you're going to have a bunch of new guys on defense. I mean, like, secondary is going to be new faces. Wideout's going to be completely new. <coughs> a lot. Robert S. liked that one. He says, F this S is right. Man. Hornacious says, Auburn in this shoot like a mofo. <laughs> oh, Lee Jid is making a big statement here. I'm putting away all my Auburn gear for the entire off season. Hmm. I understand it, though. Kruman says, just another example of our sloppy-ass play and clearly not needing to work on fundamentals. So very glad we passed on the extra spring practice as we clearly did not need it. Uh-oh, Flea Flicker. He sees somebody, too. Wow, Kay and Lee uh, snuck in there at the last second and made a nice play. I love Keontae Scott out there patting him on the head. That's what a leader does. Uh, Icopo7 says, does this crazy concern you? Uh, or is this the result of complete focus on high school signing day? I, I look at it probably different than y'all do to some degree. Um, this season was, it is what it is. They were just trying to see who they could ride with and who they couldn't ride with. And the results were very mixed. Boy, Elijah McAllister got hit pretty hard on that play. Um. And for me, it was just kind of a season of seeing who you can ride with and just consolidating just some general ideas about where to improve and that kind of thing. So if they lose this game by 40 or they win this game by 40, to me, I don't, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't change how I feel about the trajectory of the program. But from y'all's perspective, as Auburn supporters and Auburn graduates, many of you, like this would really irritate me because – I don't know. Auburn just doesn't have a lot of success in bowls. It doesn't seem like, and you know, you get rid of Gus cause he's terrible in bowls and you're like, okay, it can't be that bad. And then you get this on, on Hughes first, uh, bowl with Auburn. Down he goes. Don't celebrate. Just walk away. Zeke Walker with a sack. Uh, Lane, Lane says, who's Jamison Travis. So that's Bobby Jamison Travis. He is a defensive uh, lineman. Uh, originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota, believe it or not, but he came in here from one year in JUCO. And we, we meaning me and Brian, uh, watched him in a couple of the summer practices. Well, whatever, in like two days. We call him two days, you know, August practices. And liked him. I uh, thought he had some get off and um, was playing really hard. Now, he wasn't, he's not as good as Marcus Harris, straight up. I mean, we, I'm not saying that, but I thought he was intriguing enough to get some snaps this year, and he didn't get many. And uh, now he's getting plenty. You know, I think he's been at least solid today. And that punt goes to the three-yard line. So we're just going to keep it going. CJMH, who's been pretty negative all day long, says, how are we going to keep saying it doesn't matter? We've been saying the same garbage for a decade. Well, I don't know what to tell you, brother. Um, the long The long story is that Gus did not recruit very well and got fired. And then the next dude was not recruiting well and also not winning at all, and he got fired. And so now you're having to pick up the pieces with all of your rivals, your biggest rivals, at their peak. Alabama's playing great football still. Georgia has now become a problem every single year. And so you're having to, as Bob Seger would say, you're having to uh, be young and strong and run against the wind. We were young and strong. Spicy P, uh, yeah, we're seeing eye to eye on this. He says the whole year was a wash. Do y'all have any idea what Harson left us? The answer is not a damn thing. So, 
I mean, pretty much anything good with this team was something that Hugh and his staff brought over. I mean, Keontae, notwithstanding. You think about, like, Rivaldo Fairweather. Marcus Harris was not. He was a holdover, and he was he was tremendous this season. I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, Kenneth H. says, is it possible to recruit and game plan? Just saying. Yeah, some people can do that. Some people can do that. Lane says, JG, do you think this shit show has a negative effect on recruiting for the 25 class and Ryan Williams? I, not at all on Ryan. Um, Ryan Ryan has been at Auburn enough. I mean, he knows what time it is here. He knows what's up. He knows where this team's at, and he knows what they need. So I don't think it affects Ryan Williams at all. Now, 25 class, there's a certain percentage of recruits that care about how a team's playing. And there's a certain number of recruits who don't care about how a team's playing. I mean, some kids want to go to the hot school, and they pick Georgia or Florida State. And and Auburn was really hoping to kind of portray itself as like an up-and-coming team, and I think getting crushed by Maryland in a bowl game might go against that a little bit. But I don't necessarily think – I mean, maybe there's a handful of kids that are going to be like, man, I'm going to stay away from Auburn. They can't get their shit straight. But in general, no. I don't think the kids look at it that way. They look at it as – do I like these people, you know, the coaches and the people around the program? Do I like this place, you know, Auburn, the location, their facilities? Now you got to consider the money. Am I, you know, am I getting 150000 a year? Am I getting two fifty a year? There's a lot more that goes into it these days as compared to like 1975 or whatever. And that's probably a good thing for Auburn at this point. Because Auburn's NIL has been, they've been very smart with the way that they have used NIL, in my opinion. Let's see, Diego says, there's no question Hugh got a shitty roster. He tried to make improvements through the portal that didn't do much, to be honest, with rare exceptions. The disappointment is poor coached games. That is, that's a fair, fair criticism. Yeah, the portal uh, really hasn't been great for Hugh, has it? Like, you know, the big portal guys. Let's see, Rivaldo's been good. Payton has not been good. Uh, Gunnar Britton has been good. Aust- uh, Austin Wade has been good. Or Dylan Wade. Uh, the center. Well, Connor's playing center now, but you know what I'm talking about. The center before he got hurt. He was playing pretty well. But then, you know, like, Jair-, Jair Shorter was a zero. Uh, Shane Hooks is essentially a zero. Been kind of hit or miss. But they've definitely missed on some at the end of the portal. Let's see, A. Texman says if we would have had NIL in the olden days, we wouldn't have had to take the recruits to Red Lobster. Wow. One dollar to what was that guy's name? Willie Williams or something like that? That dude that like freaked out at Red Lobster. Linebacker. He ended up washing out completely. Third and three. No problem here, guys. He's got to go, man. He's got to get out of this game. Payton just ain't got it, man. It's not. It's. It might just be a combination of factors. I'm not trying to blame it all on him, but it's just time to look at somebody else to play quarterback at this point. Like seriously, come on, man. It was third and three, and he ran out of bounds two yards short. He's going to get bailed out with a face mask call, but whatever. The point still stands. Oh, yeah, run of 24. Talk about linebackers. Austin Keys was a portal guy. He's been solid when he wasn't hurt. Uh, Nixon was, yeah, meh. That's about, that's being nice. Justin Rogers has not been as good as I thought he would be. He's been solid as a backup. So Rivaldo would be the crown jewel of the portal, right? I mean, he's had some linemen that have played every snap, so and they've been solid, so you could consider that. But um, to me, Rivaldo's pretty good. Uh, War Eagle zero 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 eight says, "Would you put Holden in JGT?" I absolutely would. I'm done. I'm not, not forever, but I'm done in this game. 
But I think Hugh is just kind of being like, hey, this is my guy, and we're going to let him work him, work his way out of it. But he's down 31-7 in the third quarter. I mean, what what what's the expectation here? Here we go, second and seven, and he runs three yards short of the first down. It's fine. Third and two. <coughs> yeah, Hayden says he wanted Hooks to be good, but that was a huge whiff. I don't understand what happened there. I mean, he's a pretty good player at – Jackson State. Now, I know that's a, a lower level, but a lot of those guys played great at Colorado or at least played good. And Shane Hooks was their leading receiver, and he's going to be short of the first down on this third down run right here. Got to go, man. I don't care. You're riding, you're riding or dying here right now. Fourth and one, just go. Put a, a split end in motion. Oh, they're going to do brotherly shove. I was going to say put a split in motion, hand it off, and let him go around the edge. He got it, but they're not getting a ton of yardage on that brotherly shove. Uh, someone asking about Cobb earlier. Yeah, Cobb's awesome. Um, I think they just their attitude is they don't have – I haven't updated these numbers. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here talking and not paying attention. Payton's now 10 of 22 for 66. Wow, he's had four yards this, this half. Uh, Jarquez is now at 11 carries for 44. Another penalty on them. Uh, Damari is at 7 carries for 20. And 0 for Cobb. Thorne is now 7 carries for 0. Great. I know it's not his fault. It's more complicated than that. Third down, uh, Auburn's 3 of 10. They're 3 of 8. Oh, my gosh. Great, another sack. <laughs> this is amazing. In the worst kind of way. Hayden says, I want to see a Hank so bad. Just want to know what the kid has. And uh, Lane says, uh, we need four touchdowns. Why no tempo? That's a question we've been asking all year long. It seems like there's opportunities to go tempo, and they don't. And I, I don't know what they're scared of. Well, they early on it was worried about the defense and blah, 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 which they probably are concerned about also. But all the defense in the world isn't going to help you out of this hole. I mean – Poppy Clan says, OL sucks today, Jay. So Alex was saying that he thought they were not helping but weren't hurting in the first half. But I And I respect his opinion on this very much. But uh, from my perspective, with my eyes, yeah, I'm with you, bro. I don't think they've been very good today. Kind of a weird schedule for Auburn next year. All at home, all on the road, back all at home. Except for Alabama. Oh my goodness. Neil J says he's going to ditch this game to watch San Elmo's fire. By the way, by the way, Mary Winningham, hidden gem in that one. Everybody focuses on Demi Moore, but I can make an argument. Uh, Michael W says, what's happened to Rivaldo? Dude, he's, uh, Peyton's completed one pass for four yards as half. I mean, there's, I don't know what you're expecting. He could have Jerry Rice in there, and it's not going to matter at this point. Oh, God. Galatian says, we're 13 games in, and the offense still isn't improving. Time for a change. Oh, there's going to be a change. I mean, you can guarantee you that. Rich says, what channel is Santa Almost Fire on? <laughs> Dude, you can stream that, surely. Poppy Clan says, Demi Moore Smoke. See, in that movie, I say no, but in other movies, yes. But in general, yes, she's cute. No doubt. Uh, what was that movie where she was super hot in there? Remember she was like the stripper? 
There was no way that ball was going to get caught. I don't care who it was, who it was thrown to. There's your throw to uh, Fairweather, though, Michael. Man, this is bad. This is just like the New Mexico State game. Just not in it at all. Just an absolute zero. Just like there's no pulse or anything. It's just going through the motions and nobody's trying to make a play. It's just kind of like you're almost like expecting it to be there and it hasn't been there the whole time and you just still keep expecting it to be there. I don't know. <laughs> War Eagle 0008 says, triple coverage, good read. <laughs> Shane says he's so sick of seeing that blank look on Hugh's face. <clears throat> yeah, I think he's just, I think he's actually like shook, man. I mean, honestly, I don't think he saw this coming. I would definitely change quarterbacks with the next possession. I mean, you've got to. There's no reason to leave him out there. I mean, what are you trying to do? Learn more about him? And I respect that they're leaving him in there to kind of figure his way because you're going to have to do some of that in a real game where you're not playing like ass all the time. There's still periods of the game where things don't go well and you've got to put your feet down and get it straightened out. But, guys, I think we're past that now. <laughs> I feel like a stranger says... So we've got this game sewed up. <laughs> uh, let's talk some hoops. How you feeling about SEC play? I like this team a lot. I like this team a lot. I feel like there's some haters on the bunker, though, that keep bitching, but I like it a lot. And if the quarterback – I'm sorry, if the point guard play continues to be good the way it's been with Trey and Aiden just being terrific, particularly with their ball handling, uh, this team's going to be a problem. This team's going to be in the chase for the uh, the conference title. For sure. Um, I haven't paid super close attention to everybody else in the SEC. I, I, I did say earlier, and I believe this firmly, that uh, Ole Miss is for real. Well, Alabama's a good ball club with a, a terrific offense. Tennessee's good. Auburn's good. Kentucky's good. Um, not sure on AM. I do think Ole Miss is pretty good. They're 12 0. I haven't exactly played a murderer's row. But they're pretty good. I don't believe in Florida. I don't believe in South Carolina. I don't believe Mississippi State. I think Arkansas is better than they've been. I believe in Ole Miss. Georgia's still kind of rebuilding, although they're better than I thought they'd be. Missouri should be better than this, and I think they're going to be a problem later on. LSU uh, and then Vandy's dog shit. So, yeah, that top group, man, I think Auburn's going to be there. Auburn's just a very balanced ball club right now, and their free throw shooting has gotten a hell of a lot better. They're going to go for another one. Brad receiver fell down. Caleb Wooden with a pick. Let's see how far back he can return this bad boy. Not very far. We got a super chat coming through from my G, Neil. All right, that's our first super chat ever uh, from a foreign currency. See y'all next season for some more punishment. Boom. Do we have a sound for that? I think we should have a sound for that, man. Yeah, we'll give him one of these. You could drop a tarantula into his shorts and he'll still be cool. There he is. Appreciate you, Neil. Uh, let's see. Shane says, JG, are you draining for the Arkansas game? Let me see. I had to kind of make a game-by-game -game decision on that stuff based on the time that they start. Uh, the Arkansas game is Saturday at 2. Yes, we will drain after that one. For sure, and that's a great game to start with. That's a great SEC opener. And then you got A and M on Tuesday. That's going to be a ah, I screwed up. Now, see, that's an eight o'clock tip. I'm not going to drain after that because in the Eastern Time Zone, that means it's like midnight when we start the show, and I'm not doing that. It's just counterproductive. The next game is LSU on the on the second Wednesday. That's a six o'clock tip. No, five o'clock Central. We'll play by ear. I'd probably be tempted to to drain that one. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh. 
<laughs> uh, Mr. Person Guy says, War Damn Eagle from London, UK. What's up, bro? Glad to have you. Our, our friend Neil's in, in uh, Scotland. He's Welsh, but he lives in Scotland. Hey, don't be be nice to your friends. Come on, guys. That dude needs to, that Maryland dude needs to get off the Auburn sideline if he wants to be like that. If he wants to be rough like that. Jerk. Boy, the last four yards of that reception by Jarquez. All oh, Jarquez. Good golly. Madison says, thank God there's only 15 minutes and 37 seconds left in the dumpster fire. <laughs> Poppy Clance is my man Ray Hudson. That's right. He recognized uh, who the uh, commentator was in that tarantula soundbite. Talking about Messi, of course. Ray Hudson, the great, the great uh, La Liga presenter. Uh, Maley says, draining through the basketball game. No, I usually don't. Basketball is so different than football. Football moves at such a slow pace. Basketball is just end-to-end, -end, particularly with the way Auburn plays, and it's hard for me to drain it. We did that uh, a couple, three years ago when Auburn was playing that uh, open or was playing early in the season against Gonzaga. We tried to do uh, a drain for it. It just doesn't work. Because I'm, I'm, I'm behind, you're behind. It's, it, you get 30 seconds off in a basketball game, and you're in deep shit. Hayden wants to know why PT Payton is still out there. I don't know. I don't have a good answer for you. I think it should be Holden, and let's just see what this kid can do, you know? I mean, it's just, yeah, let's just do that. Uh, Super Chat from Cassidy P again. He says, I smell a comeback. Strap it up, fellas. <laughs> uh, what do we got? Surely we got a sound for that. No, we don't? Well, we should. Here, we'll give one of these. And I beg a boy, are well, you? Just, it don't make no difference. Just bring her on down. You're tough as hell on this phone. Love Roy D. Mercer. This is Roy Mercer. Y'all had a story in your newspaper that said my sister, Sharon Jean, got in a fist fight at the bowling alley after she got drunk. She never had a drink in her life. So I'm going to have to come down there and whoop your ass over this. Sharon Jean, comma spelling. <laughs> hey, we got to have fun with it, guys. We're going to make it through. Poppy Clan going with Peyton, P E I G H T O N. Peyton looks lost like early season Peyton. He does. He doesn't look good at all. Ross says, Why does Hugh look like he doesn't care? I know. We've been talking about this all year. You know, I don't I didn't necessarily watch him coach a lot prior to Auburn, so I can't I'm not an expert on him, but he just seems plaintive way too often, you know. He just kinda like And in some of those games, like the LSU game in particular, he just looks forlorn. Like, he just looks like he needs a hug. And Look, man, I'm, I'm not a fan of Jim Harbaugh necessarily, but I like that fiery coach thing. I'm a must-champ fan, obviously. I mean, I'm not saying you've all got to be crawling ass all the time. And John Wooden certainly showed that you don't have to be profane or accusatory, but at the same time, I mean, it's football. I just think that stargazing bullshit is just not – he's got to work on that. I know he cares, but he needs to project that a little bit more. It matters. Let's see, Anthony says, how do you feel about the Charles Kelly hire, JG? Uh, I, I think it's good. I, I'm curious to see how they're going to use him. Uh, he's certainly going to be able to be co-coordinator, and I think what they'll do is they'll just have Ron Roberts kind of work – on defense only and then Kelly can help with defense and he can also recruit Charles Kelly's a, a, a top tier recruiter and I think he's just all he's going to do is help Auburn continue to augment this um, this roster and make it better I mean it's they need more players now today's game I think is a lot goes a lot deeper than just players but uh, might as well War Eagle 0008 says, who will be the OC next season? I, I think it's going to be Hugh, basically. I mean, we can kvetch over the title, but it's kind of like what Kevin uh, Steele was saying at the Alabama press conference the other day. He goes, hey, who's the defensive coordinator for this team? And the, the, the answer was you. He goes, no, there's only one coordinator on this team, and he's the guy that's got seven national championships. Hugh's going to be the offensive coordinator next year. Uh. 
Lane says, why does Philip Montgomery still have a job at Auburn? Well, first of all, he's likable. Second of all, he's got a contract that's guaranteed, well, partially guaranteed. And I think to get rid of him right now, it's definitely going to cost money. I'm not sure how much, but it's more than nothing. It ain't like $100,000. It's, 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 it's a few million. And I just don't know. I mean, it's not like he's some fractious individual that doesn't get along with people and he's a poisonous element. He's not that at all. He's, he's a good dude. He gets along with you. The quarterbacks like him. He's a likable person. Is he doing a great job with this play calling? Honestly, guys, I don't know who's in charge. Uh, Hugh never provides any clarity on that. Still have Peyton out there. Madison, I know you're losing your mind. Um, I've just got just got my hands up at this point. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what's going on. I don't. I don't know what what what, what, what do we got to learn here. He's gonna throw deep. Uh, Caleb had him. Caleb was open on that one. Now just missed the throw. <laughs> Poppy Clans is headed over to Hallmark Channel to watch Christmas Town. One dollar to Doc. Galatians says the problem isn't the OC, it's the quarterback. I would argue it's kind of a it's a collaboration. I think the quarterbacks, you know, you walk to, watch that throw uh, to Caleb that's missed. That ain't all the coaches. He had protection, he had an open receiver, and he didn't get it done. But I think you got to play to his strengths more, <laughs> whatever they may be, and I don't think they've done a good job with that. Man, oh man, oh man. War Eagle 0008 says, I hope Jarquez goes. Wow. I don't think he's going, bro. He's planning to stay. He's definitely planning to stay. Finish him. Sub Zero wins flawless victory fatality. So it looks like Peyton got picked again, but there's a flag on the play. And he just got bailed out. Uh, I hope wants to know impression of the 24 schedule in here. Uh, not great. The good news is you've got a uh, you got a good start, a very palatable start. You've got a tough middle. <clears throat> We're going to be on the road for three straight games over the span of a month, and then you've got A and M right before the Alabama game. So, but. When you add Texas and Oklahoma to the league, everybody's got some problems with the schedule. So, could have been better, could have been worse. <coughs> and I don't mean like like the guy from uh, Chernobyl. All right, so they made the change with a Gurner getting in there. And uh, we'll just kind of see what he can do here. The knock on Gurner is that he doesn't handle face-to-face -face pressure very well, but that he can throw a football. Now, that throw probably wasn't going to be catchable unless it was like Devontae Adams out there, but it was put in a reasonable position.
So Payton got hit on a late hit, which yielded a first down, and they just took him out and put Holden in. I mean, that's, I guess they just looked at it as a, a good opportunity to just go ahead and give it a rip and see what happens. Michael Riley Ducker out there playing uh, tight end 84. He's open. That's a shitty throw. That's cat. That that should have been catchable. It should have been. It wasn't gonna be a first down though. It was not gonna be a first down. It was like a little arrow route or a uh, a jerk route. He was gonna be four yards short. Fourth and ten. They're gonna go for it. Why not? I mean, you're putting Holden in an almost impossible situation here. Oh, uh, that's something that uh, that Coach uh, Hunter was talking about at halftime. He said, "Play some games with the the uh, the count, with the cadence," and they got him right there. Lane says, "Holden sucks too." <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Put in Hank. <laughs> Give us Hank. For our Tigers says, where's Hank? He's on the sideline, Big G. He's talking to Peyton right now. <coughs> Fourth and five. Holden's messing with them with that cadence now. I like that. It's some Jarrett Stidham type stuff. Michael Riley Ducker with a first down catch and and Garner looked right and then switched to his left. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah, Hank standing right by uh Peyton, number fifteen. I don't see why he would play though. Oh wait, they got a player hurt. Jeez. They're about to snap the ball with number twenty laying on the ground. He looks like he's just chilling, you know. I thought that kid was dead, and he just got up and walked off. Oh, he's just tired. Oh, man, that's some shady shit right there. <laughs> Cassidy pieces. Garner to Riley Ducker. Get used to it, folks. <laughs> that's funny. Damari with a nice little cut. Gets about, I don't know, four maybe out of that. <sighs> Not seeing much out of holding yet. Well, they're just handing the ball off now. Tomorrow got stuffed on that one. Might have a modest loss. Which super chat, uh, Spicy P? My bad. I got you, brother. I'm sorry. I was thinking about something else, talking about something else. My bad. He said, Merry Christmas to you and the two amazing women who support you. But brass tacks, let's take this. Th let's take this. Th through the Chattanooga game. Take a break if you must, but we are overdue. Let us ball. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Spicy P, one of the... Oh, damn. One of the legends. Tomorrow just got hit right in the back of the head on that one. I bet that hurt. <coughs> Sorry about that, bro. I, I was just babbling. <laughs> Thank you for your support today and, and, and every day, Spicy P. Fourth and seven for Holden. Again, three runs here, so he's going to not be in a rhythm probably. But might as well just try it and then blame him if he can't make a great throw. <laughs> Man, quads up there. How about that? Don't see that from Auburn very often. Penalty 
on the Auburn Tigers. Just made that one even worse. <laughs> I feel like a stranger says, play Sam Jackson, mother frocker. Going back to the uh, the Chappelle show sketch, right? With the uh, the beer. Where uh, Sam Jackson was, uh, Sam L. Jackson was uh, promoting the uh, the beer. That's what it was, right? It's a long time ago, bro. You must be old. Nah, it's, I'm older than you, probably. Well, fourth and long, and Holden got picked. He threw a ball that there was no chance it was going to get caught by an Auburn player. Absolutely no chance. I think he threw it into – I don't even know if it was four coverage. It was five-man coverage. Tipped up and picked. And while the argument that it was just as good as a punt is true, it still looks terrible. Damon says, wasn't a pick six. That's still better than Thorne. <laughs> Oh my God! I gotta change this to fourth quarter. Yeah, I, I'm shoot. We're just like in this funk here. I can't believe this game is this bad. Good golly, Miss Molly. Thorn finishes his day 13 of 27 for 84. Is that good? All right. We got him. Uh, Jarquez still 13 carries for 44. Oh, God. He's had two zeros to finish her off. Yikes. And then uh, Damari is nine carries for 23. This is just straight up suck, man. I don't really know what else to say about this game. Good golly. There's nothing good going on. Four of 15 and four of nine are the numbers on third down. We are now fully updated on the stats. <coughs> Bo is great, says, are we going to brain drain for gymnastics season? <laughs> My G. Ryan D says, how in the hell are we one play away from beating a playoff team? Because they played great that day. They don't play great every day. And that ain't good. You got to be more consistent than that. But this team's all over the place. And to be fair, they haven't really beat, like the wins that Auburn's had this year were against bad teams, right? I mean, had they beaten Maryland today, this might have been the best team they've beaten all year. Probably would have been. Like, no cap. He says 4 of 15 on third down. That's what I've got here on the official stats. 4 of 15 on third down. For sure. Hell, Auburn's 3 of 5 on fourth. I can't believe they've gone for it on fourth that many times. Uh, total yards... I mean, it's closer than I thought it would be. It's 286 to 164. And time of possession, Auburn actually ahead by four minutes. But uh, Maryland really hadn't had to do anything. I mean, they, they got up big at halftime, and it was like, eh, whatever. I dare you all to do something, and Auburn's been like, nah, we're good. Justin C says so Montgomery is out. Any other staff changes you're hearing? So I won't. I don't necessarily know that Montgomery is going to be out. And I mentioned this earlier, but uh, it's going to cost money to make him leave. Like if you're going to fire him, you're going to owe him some money, not a ton, but it's like a few million. And it's just like yo. Uh, AU Taxman says Jay, you say no cap, just barely better than Stoltz. What? No cap, man. But for real, uh, it would cost money to, to send him packing, and I'm not sure that – because Hugh's going to be the offensive coordinator. So, I mean, if you trust him to be your quarterback's coach, then what's the big deal? 
And you still got Ken Austin there to work with the quarterbacks as well. So I don't know. I'm still kind of surprised by the Charles Kelly hire. Now, I'm not surprised insofar as there's been people in the Auburn sphere that have been trying to get Charles Kelly to Auburn for a long time, probably 10 years now. And so so they finally got their way and got – Charles. I can't believe this game still has 10 minutes ago. They still have – they got their way and they got Charles Kelly on staff. And he's good. I think he's a plus. He's a good coach and he's a good recruiter. But, you know, where's he going? What's he going to do? Rob B says, would you say this is the most embarrassing bowl loss in Auburn history? Guys, you you might know more than me about the old old days. I mean, this is just getting flattened by some random ass team, in my opinion. Now, I'm not saying that Auburn's like world beaters, far from it. I'm just saying, you know, you, you, you don't expect to get crushed by Maryland in football. Like, period. Somebody asked, what can Monty do to help this team? Seriously, uh, who was it that asked that question, which is fair? Uh, Riley M. Again, a lot of money. Not a lot. A lot for you and me. But Auburn will have to put up whatever it's going to cost to get rid of him. It's it's millions, a few millions. And I'm not sure that these days, oh, for fuck's sake, there's another fumble. I think he's down, though. Guys, seriously, it's just been a mess. Every part of this game has sucked. Oh, never mind. It was a turnover. I thought he was down already. I would say that, like, from an optical perspective, from an optics perspective, he's going to have to do something at offensive coordinator. But, and I, I think he might be in favor of doing that. But John Cohen's going to have to sign off on giving a guy, you know, two or three million dollars to go away. I don't know. In this era, you don't want to be doing that. But I just want to underscore the fact that I realize that the performance has not been there, and I know you can look at it and go, golly, the quarterbacks have not improved, this passing game sucks, the offense sucks, et cetera, et cetera. But Monty's not like some dangerous, asshole unpopular person. Like, he's a cool dude, and, and everybody gets along with him fine. So he's not some poison you got to get rid of. But I can also see where you look at it and go, bro, bro, he's the offensive coordinator. This offense sucks pretty much every time out. Like, at what point, you know? I get it. James says a Hank drive? I don't think so, man. I don't think they're that bad. AU Taxman says he feels kind of bad for Monty because he's got nothing to work with. Hmm. Well, I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to take a really quick break.
All right, all right, all right. Sorry about that, guys. Had to take a little break. I'm back. Four Hour Tiger says, "Can you bring us some pretzels, JGT?" <laughs> there you go. Let's see. El Tigre Esquire says, "This season, IMO has been all about Hugh trying things to see what works." What doesn't with the squad and that he was left with. Next year is crucial to set the standard going forward. That's kind of how I see it. I did think they'd be better. I thought they'd win more games, but uh, that was without having ever seen Peyton. And I didn't anticipate Montgomery and uh, Hugh uh, being on different pages when it came to you know, kind of unity of vision on offense. And I thought Hugh would take command of that more quickly, and he didn't. And some administrative things, I guess, that just kind of changed. Or I wasn't expecting. Oh, boy, they're going deep. Is that throw? Ooh. Nice play by Sylvester Smith right there. Roger says, switch over to Georgia and FSU. I'm not going to, bro. I'm in this thing for the long haul, my G. Cassidy P says, JGT, I'm on the fence. Barrel proof E.H. Taylor or Stag Jr.? So Stag to me is just too hot. It's just too hot for me. So I would go with E.H. Taylor, which I really like. That's a good one. That's a really good one. I'm over here drinking Castle and Key Weeded, so what do I know about it? It's a very front, a very top tier looking bottle. But it's just kind of an average bourbon. Doesn't cost a lot. So I don't feel like I got cheated or anything. It's gonna be third and three. See, Legit said Legit says Mike G called this on the war report. Hmm. Interesting. I like those guys. Ike and uh, Mike G, I know the best, but B-Will. I, I never met Caesar, but uh, B-Will's a good dude, too. I like all of them. Um, let's see, I had a question here. Oh, Brandon says, Jay, do you like rye bourbon? I do not. I definitely don't drink it straight like I do this other stuff. I'll put it in an old-fashioned, though. Administrative assistant kind of talked me into doing that. So we usually use uh, Old Forester rye or Bullet rye when we're making old fashions. Gives a little a little bit more dimension, I guess, to the drink. But if it's just drinking bourbon, <coughs> heck no. Four nine minutes to midnight says Auburn hiring Charles Kelly. Y yes, that's true. Stolte wrote about that um, about an hour before the game started. Although uh, Matt Zenitz from 24-7, <coughs> he had that first. <clears throat> uh, War Eagle zero, zero, zero 008 says, what do you typically taste differently in a rye that you would in a standard pour? So I describe it as spicy. <clears throat> it's essentially you're having more, like there's going to be more. Rye has a different taste than wheat. A light wheat tastes sweet to me. A heavy wheat tastes sour to me. And when you go on rye, it's just kind of spicy, I guess. I don't really know what the taste is. There's a certain taste that rye has. And some people dig it and some people don't. I don't. It works fine in a mixed drink, but just to drink straight, I don't like it. So I just stick with straight bourbons. Like this Castle and Key weeded, it's got a high wheat percentage. My guess is it's probably, I don't know, 30% wheat something like that it's got to be 51 percent corn just to be bourbon or to be whiskey i should say uh let's see oxy fresh says jay you good cough cough dude i've been coughing all day i'm sorry i try to keep my head way away from the speed from the mic when i do it riley says b will and ike are definitely losing their shit oh boy are they really i hate that it's uh, listen man when you haven't seen things like this as much maybe you know, when you're a media person or whatever, I've, I've just been, you know, I've been doing this. I've been covering Auburn since 98. I've seen a lot of, a lot of turds taken, you know what I mean? Like through the years, 
I mean, that 98 season was a bunch of them. 99 season. No, 98 season was the game at Florida where uh, Terry Bowden just basically begged Spurrier off. <laughs> that was bad. You shouldn't have to ever ask an SEC coach to, like, go easy on you. Not at Auburn. Maybe if you're at Vanderbilt. It should never happen at Auburn. Thank you, Oxy Fresh. He said, I hope you feel better, bro. That's the goal, man. I was hoping this bourbon would help a little bit, but <laughs> straight up muscle coughing. Let's see. Roger says Georgia punk and FSU like Maryland punked us. I had a feeling that was going to happen. I've not seen an update. What's the score on that? I felt like Georgia was like miles better than FSU without uh, Jordan Travis. <clears throat> Riley says he th- he never ex- he never imagined that Maryland would be able to troll us after a game. Yeah, it's gonna happen, isn't it? Spicy P, I can't do it, brother. I just think there's no way. It's eight o'clock. We're gonna, you you want to go four more hours before we even start that game? <laughs> and I mean, I'm telling you, you can't hardly uh, brain drain during a basketball game. It's just, it goes too fast. It just feels like everybody's on a different play. All right, back at it. I'm sure something good's going to happen this time. Hey, it's a first down throw. Camden Brown caught the ball. That's a step forward. It says, no, GW, I didn't know that. He says, no senior FSU players even made the trip. Like, they all just punted, huh? War Eagle says, we're going to wait. We're not going straight through. Are you, oh, Come on, bro. Oh, my goodness. They got a ball to a receiver. He's going to be short of the goal line. Oh, no. And Caleb's, is he hurt? He's grabbing his right ankle. Hank Brown made that throw. Good golly, Miss Molly. I didn't realize that was Hank in there. I'm shocked they're playing Hank. Why not? Hell. They must have seen something from Holden they didn't like. You know, the knock on him is that he gets scared. Jeremiah Cobb in there right now trying to get that touchdown. They gave it to him. Jeremiah Cobb with the tutty. <laughs> the more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. Touchdown, Auburn! Hank Brown, the goat. There he is. Gets a long completion to Caleb Burton, and uh, Jeremiah Cobb's able to just kind of stick it in there for a short uh, touchdown run for maybe a yard and a half. James S. said, I told you, Hank Drive, you're right. I didn't, I didn't think that was going to happen. I didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, runner 24 says, Hank Brown, the future. <laughs> Jeremiah Cobb, a, a very talented young man from Montgomery, Alabama. Well, I think so, just hugely, hugely talented and, and good. Two-point conversion attempt throw for a Rivaldo, which is a, a good idea on face value. But uh, even he can't get up high enough to grab that bad boy. Wow. James says, I told you a Hank drive. You did. You did, and I thought that was crazy. I didn't understand. I I figured that Holden was going to do more than he did. Uh, Let's see. Brando says, gifting a bottle of Blade and Bow never had it myself. What am I gifting? So, I love Blade and Bow. Costs you about 45 bucks, maybe 50 <coughs> Low proof. I think it's 91 proof or 93 proof. A little peppery. A little more peppery than some. But to me, it's like a light bourbon. It's a daily drinker. And I love it. Uh, it's my favorite go-to just to be drinking on a regular day, you know. I probably had more bottles of Blade and Bow in my life than anything else. 
So I don't think it's necessarily a great gift because it's just kind of regular bourbon. It shouldn't cost you too much, but it's tasty. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Ravens says touchdown equals double field goal. <laughs> uh, Russ says, hey, Jay, show some class, bud. What did I do? That was that was what I do. What I do that was not classy. Say that I thought that Jeremiah Cobb was a tremendously talented player out of Montgomery, Alabama. I don't know. What did I, what did I do? Yeah, Brando, I, I love it to drink, man. I, I, you ought to have that, honestly, at your house. I, well, I don't necessarily think that. That's not true. Some people don't dig the taste of it, but for me, it's a little peppery, and I love it. My friend Jason M. that lives up in Kentucky, and he loves bourbon as much as I do, he don't like it, and he doesn't drink it, and he doesn't have it at his house. So, and I don't I don't blame him. I mean, it's just, it's all about what you like, you know? Uh, Russ says, Jay, my little sister goes to Auburn this year. Can you apologize to her on your show for this? <laughs> goes to Auburn this year, huh? Uh, Mobile alum, I was working towards you there, girl. I swear I was. I was just kind of babbling. She said, hey, hey, JG, thoughts on Peyton Thorne as quarterback one next year? I Honestly, I think this game might make some people really consider what's going on there. Uh, onside kick, Auburn had an opportunity to get that ball. It was on the ground, but they didn't get it. Um, You know, coming into this game, my thought, Mobile alum, was that he would be really good and it would just kind of reinforce the concept of having him be the number one guy next year and blah, blah, blah. Instead, I think what we saw today was he had probably his worst game. And I th honestly think it's going to have to prompt some introspection about what what you've really got in Peyton Thorne. I, I don't know. I mean, you can still get dudes. There's going to be guys coming the portal in the spring and whatnot. I mean, that's where they got Peyton. AU Taxman says, Bladen Bow is a gust, 6-6 six and six solid. Bourbon, good value. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. That's exactly how I feel about it. Um, I'd like it even better if it was 35. Uh, James says that was a pretty ass deep ball, too. No, I didn't think it was. It wasn't perfect, but it was the best deep ball we've seen today from an Auburn Tiger. That's for sure. And, hey, bottom line is that Kayla was able to get there and make the play. And consummate a 50 or 60 yard gain so i don't know i wouldn't say it was ass josh c says hank versus walker for qb1 in the spring hell yeah let's do it uh not sure about walker but we'll see i'm also not sure about hank au taxman says at least hugh seems happy on the sidelines well at least we tried Number 19 says, hey, chat, turns out uh, since the first quarter, I found that I have strep throat and got shot in the butt twice. How's the game going? It's going great. Um, aside from the fact that Auburn's getting throttled, uh, I don't think anybody's gotten seriously injured. I think the teams are having fun. Uh, the weather's been pretty good, although it's chilly. And uh, the bourbon's been drinking good. Bradley B says, uh, hopefully my kid will make the travel squad as UL AMO walk-on next year. Awesome. Pulling for you, brother. Well, both y'all. Well, him. You know what I mean. <laughs> Blue Eagle says, our best receivers transferred to Bowling Green and Memphis. And this is what we have left. Cam Newton would look at this, would look like this with these receivers. <laughs> Bowling Green. <laughs> you know who coaches that team? It's uh, that offensive coordinator that was here, uh, Scott Leffler. Scott Leffler's the head coach of Bowling Green. They actually were pretty good this year, believe it or not. And a big story, nobody cares, but Oral Hershiser, who is a former Bowling Green baseball player, finally came back to campus. Apparently they've been in a spat or a row, and he didn't go back, and he didn't want to go back. But uh, now he's back, and everybody's happy. Uh, Blake C. says, JGT, appreciate you and hope you get to feeling better. Thank you for staying positive. Helps me stay away from the doom and gloom mindset. War Eagle always. Hey, thanks for watching, Blake. Appreciate you uh, being here a lot of the year or all the year here on the brain drain. Yeah, I just try to not to be, I'm not really here to be positive per se. I just try to keep it real. But a lot of times keeping it real just kind of puts it in the middle. I'm just trying to be down the middle. Like, just trying to be fair. 
And like uh, Coach Chizik used to say, it's not as bad or as good as you think it is. Legit says, thought about going to the game. Honestly, glad I didn't make that four-hour trip for this. Yeah, that would be miserable because the weather's cold, too. But the alternative is maybe you could have fun on Broadway. I've had fun on Broadway. And I don't even like country music, but it's very milfy out there, which is definitely my scene. Runner 24 says, Hersh- uh, Hershiser was one good Dodger. you damn right he was. Back, what, 88, 88, 89? He was really good. Rich Anvils says, well, Hershiser is still alive. Nice. Yeah, I was watching the game. Uh, they, they were playing like Toledo maybe a month ago or, or six weeks ago. I don't know. Because it was one of those games that's like on a Tuesday or whatever. I was like, this sounds like fucking Or Hershiser, but he's a baseball analyst. Why the hell would he be on this football show? And one little Google and I found out that he had gotten in a row with uh, Bowling Green over this, that, and the other thing. It's something like he, he was, he got, he had to leave Bowling Green from some cockamamie BS, and he was upset about it and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I was a huge uh, Oral Hershiser fan back in the day, so Bulldog. War Eagle 0-0-0-8 zero, 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 says, Credit to Jay Ferg. Maryland has just 63 yards and three offensive points. Since the end of the first quarter, offense needs an overhaul. That's Yeah, you can kind of feel that, right? I mean, it's it's definitely tightened up. Uh, defensively for Auburn, but it doesn't. I mean, all the defense in the world isn't going to fix this problem. I mean, today, because <laughs> they need a lot of points. Well, that's not true. I guess technically all the defense in the world might get you two or three pick sixes and you'd be back in it, but you know what I mean. Man, I, 88 or Hershiser. The only pitcher I like more than him was uh, 86 Mike Scott. I absolutely loved him. I loved the Astros back when they were the NL. Now they're just AL cheaters, and I hate them, but. Back in those days, man, they had Nolan Ryan, Bob Nepper, Mike Scott, Glenn Davis, Casey Candell. Oh, was that Jose Cruz or Julio Cruz? Can't remember. I was a pitcher, so I just cared about pitchers, really. Charlie Kerfeld was on that team. Legit says, I suppose a milfy evening would be a nice consolation. No, a well, milfy evening is a that's that's how that's how winners live. They get milfy. They go out there on the Broadway and they hang out with milfies. Or consider my age these days, it'd be more like Gills. Look at the uh, look at Jeremiah Cobb taking a screen pass and going about fifteen. My man from Montgomery, Alabama, Montgomery Catholic High School. I think we would all agree he's He's deserving of more touches. <laughs> Runner 24 says, Mike Scott learned that split finger fastball and dominated in 86. Boy, he sure was. He was really good in 86. And he had learned that split finger when he's pitching for the Mets earlier in the 80s. Uh, Hornation says, Jay seems more as a catcher. He, uh, Jay may look more like a catcher now, but I wasn't at the time. I was not a great pitcher, though. I have short arms. As a Hal Baird said, I would never assign you to play for me, but I would love to have you on my wiffle ball team. Was <laughs> what that's what Hal Baird told me. That was one of the greatest compliments of my life. So I could throw some nasty wiffle ball pitches with my little, you know, my little T Rex arms. Glenn Davis, thank you, AU Tax Man. Glenn Davis, <laughs> the long striding first baseman. How about that? B. Haynes, I did not know this. Casey Candell, Casey 16 Candell, as uh, Berman would say. Only MLB -er whose mom had a higher professional baseball batting average than he did. You're probably the one person I would expect to know that. Jay Fair. Someone was asking earlier if Jay Fair was in the game. Guess what he is? He just had a big gainer. Now, if they get about 17 more of those, they've got a shot here, guys. Kevin Bass. I think of him as a New York Giant. But, yeah, I think he was on the Astros back then. Oh, is that a snatch right there? Wait, is that Shane Hooks? Oh, my, who had a Shane Hooks catch today? Did you have that on your bingo card? Did anyone have that? 
<laughs> Hank the Tank. D. Lucky. Hank the Tank. Okay, I'll do one more. <laughs> it tastes so good when it touches your lips. <laughs> oh, amazing. Dude, Cobb is balling. I know he's going against like third, second and third team guys, but I love this kid, man. Wow, what a great catch right there on a terrible throw. Oh, Melee, that's good stuff. Bond. Hank Bond. Love it. Lockdown says, I've seen enough. Give me Hank. Give me a Hank job. He's good, man. He's been playing great today. Better than the other two guys. TJ says, where were these passes earlier in the game? Look at this. Oh, I thought that was going to be a catch. If you'd have Shane Hooks and Coy Moore catch passes on the same drive, I mean, you could have made $500,000 in Vegas with that. Wait. Alyssa, why? What? Okay, I can't hear, but... Uh, cowboy hats are not my thing, man. If you all are into that, that's cool. Uh, Mr. Matzer, what's up, brother? I haven't seen you in a minute. Glenn Davis was also pretty good at tennis. I did not know that. Darkside says, JG, what about Hank? Hey, he's playing great, man. I can't I can't lie. I mean, now it's kind of garbage time, right? And he's got a weird throwing motion, in my opinion. It's like slow. It's kind of like a big windup. But, I mean, Randall Cunningham threw like that. Worked for him. Kind of missed on that fourth down throw right there. But, I mean, hell, everybody else has. Freeze just seems like he's just kind of watching. Like, hey, man, getting killed by Maryland. Okay. Give me Hank. Man. Got here Wesley Steiner and Levant playing linebacker. <laughs> I think this is Jalen McLeod here on the edge, though. Yeah, he won't come out of the game. I'm telling you, he's like Mad Max. He ain't coming out. Terrence Love has played the whole game, too. I'll be curious to see how he grades out. He's played a bunch of snaps, number 16. Spider Chaw says, Hank is my man. <laughs> I love it. Now we get to spend the next six months wondering about how good Hank is. Hey, man, it's something else to talk about. We can do that. AU Taxman says, how about those 87 Padres, though, with Marvell Wynn? So, I'll be honest with you, dude. I got moved out of San Diego. Oh, damn. I got moved out of San Diego uh, in the mid eighties. And I was really pissed about it. Cause I got moved from San Diego to Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was not cool. Like thumbs way down for that. And I was bitter. I was really bitter. And so I kind of like, I couldn't watch the Padres back in those days. You know, there was no internet as you know, so you couldn't watch the Padres in Tulsa. And I just, I couldn't watch them. And so it was over. All I got to watch at my house there were like Astros and, uh, the Rangers and the Rangers had Odeby McDowell. They were terrible. So I had I'd lost track of them, so I don't even know. A uh, dark side says uh, Hank job. <laughs> How about a Hank job, buddy? Appreciate you, dark side, being uh, part of the show today and and pretty much every day. Every time we do something. Uh, Galatian says he was crazy about the A's in the '80s. Ricky Henderson was my dude, man. Ricky Henderson was one of one, wasn't he? He was a leadoff dude that could steal bases like nobody's business and hit ding-dongs. He was good, man. Runner 24 says the Padres sucked in the 80s. They did not suck. They were good in the early part of the 80s. They had Ozzie Smith. and uh, Who was the second baseman that was good? Alan Wiggins. Dave Winfield. They were pretty good. See, Anthony R says Hank won a couple state rings with Trent Dilfer up in Tennessee. 
And Bo's great says Tate was permaban from San Diego. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you guys what it stand what it means in Spanish. It was pretty funny when uh God, the names are getting away from me. Manny Machado was selling the merch earlier this year that said Man Diego, like you know, as a play on his name. But back in our day, <laughs> there were certain areas of downtown San Diego they called Man Diego, and it wasn't because Manny Machado was there; it was because it was a little, there were just a lot of men hanging out together, and they would call that area Man Diego. And it was just kind of funny to me that he would start promoting that as his own brand. I mean, whatever. I mean, if he's cool with that, whatever. So that was funny. All right, so thirty-one thirteen is the final. We've known this for a long time. Kozan called this he, he said he thought this game was over at halftime I thought they had a chance to turn this thing around but they absolutely did not um, Diego says it's 35 to 3 in favor of the Bulldogs over the Florida State Seminoles uh, Joe Coe says Ozzie Smith for Gary Templeton I believe uh, St. Louis won that trade I do believe they did yes I want to watch some evidence of this situation uh of the Georgia game. This is on ESPN, I guess. Yeah, well, I've switched it over to the Georgia game. Not like we're going to sit here and talk about this Auburn game anymore, are we? Uh, Bo is great. Says Tony Gwynn is the goat of hitters. Uh, it depends on what kind of hitter. I'm talking about a guy that breaks down pitchers and gets singles and has a great batting average. There's no doubt he's the greatest, but he didn't have a lot of power. So you can definitely make an argument for a guy like Ricky Henderson to be a better hitter because he gave you a lot. Uh, and then Barry Bonds got really good. and Albert Pujols got really good. I don't know. There's a bunch. But he was the best pure singles hitter, him and Rod Carew maybe. And Tris Speaker. We're talking about old school guys. Uh, Mr. Matzer says, do we grab a quarterback in the portal now? I got to be honest, bro. I think that they have to think about that more. I, I really think that he was expecting uh, he being Hugh expecting to be ride or die with uh, Peyton, and I just don't know. This kind of game here, you just kind of be like, what? Uh, Galatian, talking about some of those late 80s A's teams. Bob Welch, Dave Stewart. Dave Stewart was a badass. Dennis Eckersley, Carney Lancer at third base. Walter Weiss playing shortstop. Dave Henderson as a DH. Good teams, really good teams. Had Jose Canseco, too. And McGuire, right? Yeah. They had a good catcher, too. I forgot who he was, though. I forgot his name. Didn't Alfredo Griffin play for them, too? AU Taxman says Ted Williams, the goat of hitters. Boy, Ted Williams. In the uh, greatest sports writing of the century, there was a, a profile of Ted Williams in there. And man, was it good. And man, is he somebody interesting. Mm. He was an angry, angry dude, but he could hit a baseball. Damn right he could. He's a San Diego boy, too. I'm from San Diego, and it's convenient for me to be from San Diego. Uh, Dave Henderson played uh, center field. Terry Steinbach. Thank you, runner 24. That's the the catcher. Carney Lansford, Bradley B uh, brings up. Yeah, he was. I thought he was going to be bigger than he was, you know. A runner 24 says Fettuccini Alfredo Griffin was gone by the time they got good in like 88 or 89. All right, Mr. Person Guy, who's from uh, London, England, I believe, says we have to get another quarterback, if anything, to have better competition. Iron strengthens iron. Hunter, if you're in here, I know you love that phrase. Uh, I'm okay if Thorne wins. Just get better and never get comfortable. Man, Joko, you're bringing me back now. So my granddad was a big-time Cardinals fan, and he was still doing good in the 80s. And so he would always tell me about these great Cardinals teams because I lived in San Diego. I'm sorry, well, San Diego and Tulsa, and I didn't want to pay attention to the Cardinals. Vince Coleman, Ozzie Smith, Jack Clark was playing for them. Bruce Souter in there to close it down. They had a dude named, uh, you may have heard of him before, Ron Gant. <coughs> Eric Davis. They had some, they had some men playing back then. <laughs> T 
Ty Simpson. Hey, Russ, I don't know if Ty Simpson helps, brother. Maybe. Spider Chaw thinks Hank's better than uh, Peyton Thorne. It really is 35 to 3. This really is a Hattori Hanzo sword. I mean, I think even my dog could have figured out this game was going to unfold like this. Georgia's a good football team. And Florida State was just kind of getting home with one headlight thanks to that quarterback, and then he got hurt, and that's a wrap, you know. Willie McGee, a good one, runner 24. Good stuff. Let's see. Russ says, dude, I'm not rooting for a dude named Hank. Wait, why Why don't you like Hank? You don't like Hank Aaron? That guy was a stud, man. Brandon Jason's says, Bobby Bonilla is the smartest baseball player ever. He He got some good financial advice. There's no doubt about that. Some really good financial advice. <laughs> Russ says, his name is freaking Hank. LMAO. <laughs> Bradley B says, so glad we were at the Gaylord Tuesday through Thursday and got home before this shatty performance. Now I can go to bed and not have spent $1,000 a night. Is that really what it costs? My goodness gracious. Russell says, this is the worst performance since the Minnesota Bowl game, which is a mess, yeah. Joko remembers that uh, KMOX AM, you could get it all throughout the, the middle part of the country. I feel like I was listening to them back in the day, like 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 somewhat recently, like in like the 90s or something, you could still do that. <laughs> Bradley B says, Harold Aaron. <laughs> Joko says, back in the 80s, you listened to the radio. Hell yeah, you did. I did for sure. I used to tape it. And I, I'd be so excited. I was listening to K107, KAYI, Muskogee, Tulsa. Uh, and when they had a song that would come on that I'd really like, I would tape it, and I'd feel like I really caught something, like I'd caught myself a 10-point buck or something. Yes. I caught, you know, Queen of the Broken Hearts by Loverboy, which they rarely played. That's how bad it was. Michael W. says, go Terps. Hey, congratulations, Big W. Uh, definitely the better team today. And... uh I can speak for pretty much everybody in this chat when I say uh, th thank you to Maryland because I think this loss is going to force uh, some folks to – folks, Walk the Moon's going to perform live at halftime, guys. You know it's a big game. Uh, they're going to force Auburn to maybe rethink some of the things that they were assuming would be true going into next season that maybe we were skeptical of. So, uh, good win. Great win. Y'all did good. I got no problem in Maryland. I don't think anybody in here does. Actually, I lived in Maryland for a short period of time. Montgomery County. I'm a graduate of Strathmore Elementary School. Uh, Brandon J says, Jay, are you an Okie from Muskogee? No, I lived in Tulsa. I went down to Muskogee, though, to Chet's Hot Dogs, where you get a cheese dog down there at Chet's. Pretty good stuff. Only been down there a few times, though. It's about an hour from Tulsa, south. Uh, Russ says, y'all literally named three or four decent Hanks across the last 70. What about Hank Blaylock? Played for the uh, the Rangers. He's pretty good. Man, Spider Chaw, that sounds like a, a, a song lyric. Takes a whole lot of liquor to like her. We could write a whole song about this. Uh, Michael says, damn, this is the team that almost beat Alabama. Maryland would smoke Alabama. <laughs> My man. Love it. Yeah, it works that way. <coughs> Sorry, man. I've been coughing all day, Michael. You probably just showed up, but I uh, have been. Let's see. Uh, War Eagle 0008 says, please ask Stoltz to ask Freeze about the quarterback situation going into 24. I feel certain that's going to be addressed. I uh, feel like we deserve to know. Choose to know. AU Taxman says, Walk the Moon's lead singer is from Vestavia. I had no idea. How about that? Uh, Josh says, JJ, anyway, Cam and Perry are not starting game one next year. Yeah, there's a way, but unlikely. This is Auburn Glenn, by the way, playing quarterback for the Florida State Seminoles and uh, getting robbed of a catch right there. Jeez Louise. Michael says, Florida State is a joke. Yeah, I think pretty much everybody would agree with that. Um, I'm thinking about, I feel like we need to do some talking, some uh, phone talking.
So I had to answer this one. God, I've got 13 qu texts on here. i got to answer this shit. Nah, I don't have to answer those. Uh, let me see what... Let me see BMATs. Let's see what BMAT's up to. So we'll work on BMAT. Uh, Stultzy. Um, J-Head is a go for today. And... Ooh, that doesn't look good. I don't like it when they stay down with their on their back like that. Um, yeah, I know. Caleb uh, went to the game with his dad, so obviously not a lot of recruiting going on at the game, so. <laughs> uh, let's see. Michael W. says, easily could have been 31-0. The penalties kept Auburn in position to score. Well, they didn't do much of that, did they? Look at the CMH, CJMH, who has been grumple Stiltskin all day long. Nothing but just mean and angry stuff. Says, Stoltz will have to crawl out from Hugh's desk long enough to answer any, to ask any questions. Good God, you guys. I hate, I hate comments like that. I hate that. It's silly. Stoltz does a good job. Russ says, Jay, you reckon you could knock out Clay Travis and bare knuckle fighting? Hell no, man. Uh, does that guy fight or something? I met him one time when it was at the national championship game in, in Phoenix. I met that dude and didn't realize who he was. He wasn't like as big as he yeah, at that time. He wasn't as big as he is now. He didn't look like the kind of guy that would necessarily whoop my ass. But if he if he knows like jujitsu and shit, he probably would. Not really a big fighter. <laughs> Spider Charles says, thank you, Jay. Needed that laugh. <laughs> I don't know which one it was, bro. Oh, oh, this is a different Brian. What's up, bro? Haven't heard back from uh, BMAT yet. So maybe this is a good time to go to Jay Head. What do you think, man? All right, let me tend to, I, te I texted with Jay Head earlier, and he said he was good to go. So I just want to make sure he's good. Uh, Cassidy DP says, JGT, what single aspect can Hugh focus on and improve this offseason? Great question. To me, it's going to have to be um, kind of working on what he wants to do on offense and being a little more assertive about what needs to happen and making it happen uh, strategically from an off from the offense. I felt like he was too way too wishy washy with that, and um, he's got to get that straightened out. I also think that he needs to probably reevaluate what he wants to do at quarterback, but he hasn't said that, and I don't know. He may feel the same way. He may be like, "Hey, I'm riding or dying with with Peyton. I don't give a shit what happened in this bowl game. I don't care." And if that's true, then it doesn't it doesn't matter. We haven't talked to Jay Head since the 25th of November. That seems like a long time. So let's get him here. Get Sir Jay Head on the home. GT. How you doing, bro? You doing good? Uh, well, good is a relative term, right? Hey. <laughs> but uh, what I was saying is I was encouraged at the end of the game, not necessarily at the beginning of it, but good excited uh had a good christmas hope everybody in the chat did as well and that you did jay and that uh, we're gonna have a happy new year hell yeah but it's not gonna have a, an auburn win to get close to it though no, no it's certainly not going to have an auburn win and the effort to start that game was in, in, unacceptable we looked unprepared defensively now they obviously made some adjustments in the second quarter and looked better from that point moving forward and if you take peyton thorne's pick six off the board um, your defense gives up 24 points, and you're going in for a, a touchdown that maybe puts you in real contention there at the very end of the game. So not necessarily as bad as it seemed to begin with, but not not a great performance by any means. Yeah, and like you said, they just came out flat, down 21 nothing quickly. And the big thing we're talking about, Jay Head, on the show is, does this change or should this change Hughes' ride-or-die attitude about Peyton Thorne? Because he was bad today, dude. He was very bad. I don't know at this point who's available in the transfer portal that you can go get, uh, Jay, to be completely honest. 
I don't know that they're in a position to pay up on a Cam Ward and sink $2 million into a quarterback in probably what is in a growth and development year for this football team. It doesn't mean that we're not going to improve next year. I fully think that we will. But I think there's an investment from an NIL standpoint, probably from a team projection standpoint, and in investing in your young talent and trying to develop it that way, which means that Holden Gurner, Walker White, Hank Brown, who you saw today and looked very good making decisions, granted it was against a pre-bid defense, um, but he probably saw the field the best of any quarterback today, showed really good arm strength, good touch, good anticipation. Uh, so I just don't know, Jay. It would all depend on who came available, what the price tag would be, can you upgrade. I, I don't know. I don't know what's available to them while also needing to fix other holes on this roster. And is it better to try to develop now um, and go all and have an all-in year next year when you develop some of this young talent? Or is it a situation where you need to fix a guy right now and you're just trying to get to eight, nine wins? Mm. So it, I, I'm not exactly sure where they are with that and who's available that they could go get that really solves that problem for you that you don't already have internally on the team. Yeah, I used to have to hope somebody pops in the portal in the spring maybe. I mean, that's when they got Peyton, so – it's possible. It, you would. You, it, I would think so. I think probably from a fiscal responsibility standpoint, you're probably, like I said, other than Cam Ward, I don't really know who's available on the transfer market that really moves the needle for you. And do you have $2 million in NIL resources? Because that's what the price tag is going to be. Yeah, you're talking about a kid that's looking at either going into the NFL draft or he's looking at getting in between a million to $2 million. And do you have that? Do you have that expendable to be able to invest this year, and not have an ROI moving forward? And how much better does he make you? I think those are all decisions that you have to make, as far as what your spending capability is. Yeah. And I honestly don't know with the other holes that they have. Now, like you said, you would probably go through spring right now. You would look at what you have from your young quarterbacks because you're going to have all four guys on your roster. Does somebody catch your eye? does Hank Brown really kind of come on in spring and you think, okay, I've got something here? Or do you reach the point where you're like, okay, uh, we do need to reinvest and we need to look and see what comes into the transfer portal come, come May, uh, and maybe we need to make a move there. And obviously with the new transfer rules, you're going to have some more players come available that you didn't anticipate by having the ability to transfer multiple times over and be immediately eligible. Yeah. Whoa. But, <laughs> let's let's kind of put this uh let's put a bow on this thing real quick all right what did you see anything today that changes your opinion moving forward about the trajectory of what this team was and to me i don't know that there was anything you would have seen today other than a psychological feeling of getting a win and feeling better about the direction of the team there was nothing that I saw today that made me think tomorrow that next year is going to be any different or that this year should have been any different. I think six and six to seven and five was where this team was always going to float. And it was just more kind of reinforcement to me that this team is what it is. Now, a lot of people have opinions and those opinions have a, you know, I mean, they, they carry some validity and people have a right to express concern. I don't fault them for having that. But opinions don't carry a lot with me. Decisions do. And seeing what decisions that Hugh Freeze makes moving forward is the most important thing. Because I think he has decisions to make about the personnel on his roster as far as how you're going to fill the remaining seven or eight holes that you have in the transfer portal or through high school recruiting. I think you have choices to make and decisions to make with regard to your coaching staff. We saw one of those today with Charles Kelly obviously being announced is going to be joining the staff in some capacity. I don't think it's been determined if he's going to be just a secondary or safeties coach or if he's going to be a co-defensive coordinator or how that's going to shake out. And then I think you have some decisions to make as far as your in-game strategy, your game prep. Those are all things that moving into year two will be under evaluation for Hugh Freeze. And the decisions he makes on those three things will tell the tape of what we can expect next year. But I wouldn't put too many expectations coming off of this game as to how next year can go. And I think we all become a little bit of a captive of the moment, uh, and it puts a sour taste in your mouth. But you have to take a process-oriented process, or a process -oriented view 
and look at it and realize that they were Tennessee fans last year that thought Joe Milton was going to win the Heisman after his Orange Bowl performance. <laughs> and at the end of the day, Joe Milton was Joe Milton, right? This yeah. team was this team. It wouldn't have mattered realistically other than a good feeling the Auburn fan base would have had that psychological win. But it doesn't change the, comp- the composition of the roster. Only thing that's going to change that is recruiting and what you do moving forward. I mean, I agree. It doesn't change how I feel about next year or this year because I thought this was going to be a consolidation year anyway. But, like, Peyton sucked again, and I'm just like, I don't know if he's a ride-or-die kind of guy. I just don't know that he is. No, I'm I, I'm with you on that. I mean, I, I, I can understand your viewpoint. I understand everybody's viewpoint. I think <laughs> probably that three-game win streak we went on from Mississippi State to Arkansas and then how he played in the Alabama game – affected a lot of people's view of Peyton for what he could be. And then you see a game like today where he's just inconsistent and not necessarily seeing the field well. Ball placement wasn't overly wasn't overly good. And it just, you know, it can become discouraging. And I think what Hugh Freeze has to do is take a step away, look at everything on his cut-ups from a good and a bad standpoint and make a determination about, who he's going to roll with next year coming out of spring. I think you have to declare it an open competition at this point. But again, I'm just not sure from a financial standpoint where you sit and can you go get anybody else at this point that moves the needle, or is it better to invest in developing a quarterback this year? And if it's not going to be Peyton, then let it be one of your young guys. Yeah. And I, I don't think it can be Walker White just because he's a freshman that's coming in, but maybe it could be. Um, could it be Hank Brown? Could it be Holden Gurner? I don't know. What I do know is is that you can't roll in next year with Peyton just being the guy. I do think you have to declare an open competition at a minimum and allow these young guys to compete and see who comes out on top. Yeah. Uh, speaking about money, uh, there's been some talk about Philip Montgomery is going to be sent packing. If that's true, they're going to owe him some amount of money, Jay Head, and it ain't like 50 bucks. It's a couple million no. as I understand it. Do you think John Cohen's going to be cool with just paying out money to have him go home? That's what I see, and and I know people mentioned it on the bunker, what I had said on a podcast elsewhere, that I didn't know if Philip Montgomery was going to be sent packing or not, they might could make it work. It was because of that no offset clause within his contract, and was John Cohen going to be able to part, allow him to be part of ways with when you're talking, like you said, fiscal responsibility and financial concerns, and is it better to put that money – that you would have to fundraise to offset that um, and or deviate TV money mm. that maybe could be spent elsewhere. And I think at the end of the day, Hugh Freeze has to make a decision about an investment of what he thinks is best. And John Cohen has to give Hugh Freeze every capability he can to make his football team better. And if that means making a change at the offensive coordinator position, which is a very pivotal spot, I think you have to do it, but to do that, Hugh Freeze has to be able to show why, and then you're also going to have repercussions from that because if you're going to invest that money in making that kind of a change, that's going to be money that you can't put in a different spot. Yeah, for and sure. And you and I both know it, it, at the end of the day, it, you know, you only have so much money, so you have to make sure that you're putting it in the proper spots, and if they come to the decision that that's the best thing to do to part ways, then that's what you have to do because what eventually will be done should be done tomorrow. That's how I've always felt. So it all depends, Jay. I just don't know where John Cohen sits on that, where Heat Free sits on that, and where Philip Montgomery sits on that, and does he have another landing spot? Because if he chooses to leave of his own volition, then obviously there is no offset, but we don't know that right now. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know, if it, we don't know any of those parts I think the only thing we do know is that Charles Kelly is joining the staff right now and filling probably Wes McGriff's position and that Wes McGriff is going to stay off the field would be my best guess. A lot of moving parts there for that. Yeah, a lot of moving parts. Charles Kelly, of course, uh, came to fame, really. Alabama uh, defensive coach, Florida State defensive coach. Was at Colorado last year? Some people in the bunker, Jay had kind of giving him hell saying, well, Colorado's defense was shitty. Dude, that team, they were overcoming some big odds just to field a team, basically. Uh, I think the guy's a hell of a coach. And talk about uh, the effect that's going to have on Auburn, just having Charles Kelly here. Well, I think Charles Kelly is a stabilizing pre- is a stabilizing presence in the back end. He's a veteran defensive coach. 
you're not bringing him in to be a play caller, first and foremost, not to the best of my understanding. I don't think he's coming in to replace Ron Roberts and more or less to augment Ron Roberts and to provide a separate set of eyes and a veteran coach that truly understands secondary play in an extremely high clip. He's done that at the University of Tennessee, Florida State, the University of Alabama, and at Georgia Tech. You're talking about a guy that truly understands what elite secondary play looks like, and he's a guy that can coach it. Now, not only can he coach it, talent acquisition is the name of the game, and Charles Kelly was once named, I think as of circa 2022, the National Recruiter of the Year, okay, Mm -hmm. responsible for nine five-stars over the course of his tenure as a football coach, and a guy that understands the footprint in the state of Alabama, south of Georgia, and in the panhandle of Florida. Um, So you're talking about another very talented recruiter that Hugh Freeze is adding to the staff, along with a veteran coach, that understands high secondary play, can, has, has coordinator experience, so he helps you from a game planning standpoint. But again, he's not coming in to replace Ron Roberts, more or less to solidify and reinforce what he's trying to accomplish from a defensive perspective and his philosophy. I wonder what they'll do as far as recruiting, because crime was still out on the road. He's great at it. Uh, they can make him a recruiter if they want to. Um, and maybe Ron Roberts just stays home and, and Charles Kelly does some stuff. I mean, you got to have him out on the road, right, Charles Kelly? I would think so, and I'm not exactly sure how they're going to make all that work, Jay. That's the fascinating point to me moving forward and whether or not they take crime off the road and just have him there continuously recruiting and assisting Hugh Freeze to free, to free Coach Freeze up to do more game planning on the offensive side of the football moving forward because – what Wes does better than anyone, I mean, I, I love him from an evaluation standpoint, but it is his presence as it pertains to relationship building with all ages and all levels, different kinds of people. He's just somebody that can resonate with the moms and the dads. He also understands the kids. He can speak to the go-betweens. You know, there's, uh, there's always an uncle. There's always a seven-on-seven coach. Wes knows how to maneuver around those things. He's a veteran guy that understands different aspects of recruitment and knows how to identify the decision makers within the recruitment. So that's his hidden value to me. And does he do that from an off the field standpoint, just making phone calls to kids, laying networking, being there when kids visit and you got that just bigger than life presence. When somebody walks into a room and Wes just controls it, man, he knows how to work it. He knows, you know what I mean? Just how to talk to people. And so I'm not sure if they're going to have him grinding on the road or if they're just going to have him there in the complex doing more or less on a probably on a different level of what Travon does, correct? Yeah. You know, Travon's not on the road, but he's, his presence is still met when you come into the complex and he's interacting with each and every prospect. That's kind of how I see Wes, but on a different level. I see him kind of having the guy who's been a coordinator, who's been in the NFL, who's been at several of the Power Five schools and can speak different languages to different kids. Um, and their parents. So, you know, beefing up the recruiting staff by having a Wes McGriff and a Charles Kelly is never a bad thing. I think it only helps you from a talent acquisition standpoint. Yeah, it's plus, plus, plus. Hey, quickly on the recruiting uh, tip, this last class, the 23 class that they just signed, uh, we had them in rivals at number eight. That's up from 15 a year ago. They probably could have been a lot worse last year had they not had some great, great work at the very, very end. Tell me about what you think about this recruiting enterprise this this first full year with Hugh. Uh, Pretty much best-case scenario from your perspective? I would think best-case scenario. On the show that I do with Jeffrey, we talked from the perspective of what I thought was doable this year. And I put a range on them of 8 to 12. Well, you just hit the top end of that range, and you still have Ryan Williams available, you know what I mean, that you're trying to flip. Mm -hmm. So you could still have another addition to this class, which will obviously push you even further up the recruiting rankings. But I always judge recruiting by the composition of your class and how you do at the premium positions. And by premium positions, I mean defensive line, pass rush, quarterback, wide receiver, and offensive line. Now, I think you hit home runs, obviously, at wide receiver and linebacker in this class. You also did fantastic from a pass rush standpoint in bringing in Joe Phillips, along with the number two recruit in the state of Mississippi, who's an absolute terror off the edge. Defensive line, you got a big, big name at the very end with a talented, talented five technique from the state of North Carolina. I'm not going to butcher his name. I know he's been out there multiple times and said, in fact, pronounce, have wanted his name pronounced correctly. I've said it wrong incorrectly on multiple podcasts. So I'm going to leave that alone for right now. 
but just a fantastic prospect on the defensive line. And then you obviously had some other homegrown talent in TJ Lindsay, who's a kid they had an early projection on, uh, along with a very talented young man from, from Montgomery and Pike Road. So in Malik Blockton. So I think you did fantastic at your premium positions, which is how each class – and then obviously Walker White, at quarterback. And then, I mean, what else do you want to say about receiver? Perry Thompson, Cam Coleman. Probably the guy that gets forgotten about the most that shouldn't is Malcolm Simmons, who's going to be a yak monster in this offense. And then Bryce Kane, who's a very talented vertical threat in the slot. The only position from a number standpoint you probably came up short was offensive line. But the two high school kids you do get are Army All-American kids that favor Edwin, who's a true tackle body in a class that was not littered with overly talented offensive line prospects. He's a developmental kid. I know that there are certain people that have reservations with regard to him. I'm kind of in wait and see, but with not having the tackle bodies available in this class, because just, they just weren't there, Jay. I mean, if you look at, across the national landscape, there just weren't a lot of guys that had his dimensions of 6'6", 295. Yeah. So, and then you mix that with Andre Carter, a very talented guard prospect that's a mauler, got good feet, good athleticism, and a guy that's going to play sooner rather than later. And you follow that up with another tackle prospect who ended up being a junior college All-American. So the quality, the quality was there. It just wasn't the quantity that you probably wanted. I think they wanted at least four in this class. They ended up with three. But you're going to have to see what you can do in the transfer portal to augment that and make sure you get your numbers to where they need to be. I think you're at 14 scholarship offensive linemen right now. They would love to hover in that 16 to 17 range. So you're probably looking at plucking two more from the portal if you can get it yeah. at a minimum one. But all the way around, Jay, I mean, that's an a, this is an A- minus to A class for me. Uh, and I haven't been able to say that in a long time. I would think last year was a B, and the year prior to that was a B minus, if not a C. Hmm. So major turn in the number of blue chip prospects on this roster. You're flipping the ratio, which is what you have to do because I think it's kind of bared itself out in blue chip ratio that if you don't have above 60% blue chips on your roster, you stand no chance of competing for a national championship. In this class, and it's star rating alone, Hugh Freeze, I think, has signed the highest star and per player star rating of any class in the last 10 years. There you go. That tells you you did some serious work. No doubt. Um, and I think he's only going, to, only going to continue to do that in the 2025 class. And if you add Ryan Williams, that would make it probably an A or an A-plus for you, right? It would make it an A-plus. If you add Ryan Williams um, – that would be the nastiest wide receiver class. I mean, that, that would be the wide receiver class that sets the bar for which every other wide receiver class would ever be measured against at Auburn. Even better than the Devin Aroshamadu, Ben Abamadu, Anthony Mix class, which you and I both know happened to be very special. Two of those guys ended up being turning pro, and, and Courtney Taylor also being in that class. Three of those guys ended up turning pro. Anthony Mix, if you had him in today's game, would have been the perfect hybrid tight end. And potentially, you know, he was a very talented guy. Potentially, if used differently, he might have found his way into the NFL. So that was a very deep and talent-rich class, but I think this class would be even better. I think Ryan Williams is a generational talent. Perry Thompson is a special kid at the X position, and you just can't teach the things he can do from a balance and body control standpoint, specifically on 50-50 balls and how he can get vertical, uh, what he can do run after the catch. And then Cam Coleman, who might have – he might have the best ball skills of any outside wide receiver we've had. And, I mean, definitely since Seth Williams, it may be even better. That's needed, my man. <laughs> Big time. No doubt. Yeah, no I doubt mean, it, 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 if you watch today, you were devoid of playmakers until Maryland kind of shifted defensive strategy and Hank Brown came in. And maybe some of that has to do with quarterback play you know, in ball placement and accuracy and the anticipatory part of playing quarterback. And maybe some of that has to do with the wide receivers not being on the same page as the quarterback on certain aspects of the passing game. And I'm going to be interested to see what this looks like moving forward and how Hugh Freeze and Marcus Davis get this corrected. Yeah. It's going to be a big upgrade, particularly at that wideout position next year, for sure. Well, Jay Head, you're an absolute legend, brother. You've been with us on pretty much every show this whole year. Help for like the last decade, so... We appreciate you always giving time. I know you do a show with Jay Lee, who I love and we both love. So 
uh, glad for you to uh, spend some time over here with us. You know, we love you still. Listen, I wouldn't be anywhere else, Jay. Um, being with you guys after a game is my absolute favorite part of an Auburn football game right now. And so I'm just thankful for you guys that you absolutely have, that you actually have me on the show and that you give me a spot on this platform, which I think comes second to none. And, yeah, I do a show with Jay Lee, and we all love him. But I love my spot here, too. And I don't want anybody to ever think that uh, that, that feel, I feel any different on that. All right, bro. Um, so for all those that are in the drain tonight, Happy New Year. To my main man, Jay, I appreciate you. I love you, brother, and I will talk to you guys again soon. All right, love you, Jay Head. See you, brother. See you, good buddy. Bye-bye. Bye. There he is. How would I rate the quality of this call? Five stars, no doubt about it. Love having Jay Head on here. Uh, had some great stuff to say. I, I had to have been a 20-minute conversation with him uh, talking about the great halls at linebacker, wide receiver we knew, Edge. Uh, didn't know how to say Amaris' name, but I just learned myself through that tweet that Amaris put out. And the way Jay had said it, fantastic at the premium positions. It was a it was a class that was put together thoughtfully by people who had a grasp on what they needed to fill and what the player the kinds of players they needed to get. Got to have edge rushers, and they could probably use one more. I still think they're short at left tackle. Uh, Brian's Brian Matthews is really big on the JUCO offensive tackle, thinking that he has he's kind of on that ascension that he might be able to be a guy like that. And also Brian's kind of big on favor Edwin, uh, eventually turning into something, you know, very useful. He has an amazing body. It looks like an, an amazing offensive lineman, but there's just so much uh, nuance that comes along with playing offensive line that takes so long. You've got to get beat in so many different ways and learn from how you get beat. And, and that, that's the way that you get better at offensive line. It's so hard to be, a neophyte, so to speak, at, on the offensive line and be good. It, it really is. It's like being a pitcher. You just have to kind of throw 10,000 pitches and understand that, you know, putting your finger on the seam or, or putting your finger next to the seam makes a difference on, on a particular throw. It, it's just things that you have to do 500 times to figure out that, that the way that it works. And the uh, same thing works at offensive line. you got to understand how to deal with a club move or a spin move or Guys go low on you. It's just you got to see so many things. It's tough. It's really, really tough. But some people have done it, and we'll see if Avery Edwin can be one of those. Alabama wanted him very badly. Florida wanted him really badly. And uh, Auburn's very proud that they were able to pull him out from under those guys. Uh, Chip Chip says that call was better than Auburn's wide receiver class. <laughs> Jay Head really is something, man, and, and and he is the guy you think he is. He's just a really high-quality individual, principled individual, and uh, a big fan of his. Me and Jay Lee kind of split custody of him <laughs> in a way. Uh, of course, Jay Head was here with uh, me and Jay Lee when we were both here. And then when Jay Lee went over to the other side, he, he does a show with Jay Lee too. But I still love that guy. We're all part of the Auburn group, so that's the way I look at it anyway. Some other people probably don't look at it that way. But Jay Lee does, and I do, and Jay Head does. Uh, yeah, so he was kind of saying, you know, does this loss change anything substantively on the on the roadmap? And I would see I would he was saying no, but for me, I would be tempted to say yes. Now, I am not able to listen to uh, Hughes post game, but I think some folks uh, Brian's been tweeting it. Brian Matthews been tweeting about this, that it's going to be an open competition. Now, you would expect the coach to say that because nobody's job is guaranteed. That may mean more now than it than it did. Now, I don't think Hank Brown's going to be the guy to win this job, but I think it's worth uh, keeping an eye out. Got to keep your eyes open. AU Taxman says, back to drumming. Neil Peart is way overrated. All the music nerds love him, but come on, only like five people who don't live in Canada listen to Rush. I'm tempted to ban you over that AU tax, man, but I wouldn't do that. What a terrible take. I know you're just goading me. Neil Peart. I love the way that people still call him Neil Peart, too. He's literally on YouTube talking about his name. It's Peart. And I'm not here to tell you he's the best drummer ever. I think he would tell you that, that uh, Bonham was better than he was. But uh, whatever. Uh, 
Let's see. Gaming Dream says, how about talk about how good the freshman looked? Talking about Hank Brown. Uh, yeah, what were his final numbers? Now, I don't want to get too blown away by this because he came in at a time when Maryland had its second and third team guys in there. But Hank Brown finished 7 of 9 for 132, had a quarterback rating of 201, and that's not for nothing. I mean, he played the game, and he was definitely, in my opinion, the best-looking quarterback Auburn had today. Um, <laughs> Runner24 says, AU Taxman is not wrong. His book about a road trip was the worst. Okay, so are we talking about Neil Peart, the drummer, or are we talking about Neil Peart, the lyricist slash writer? Because to me, those are different deals. And I mean, as a drummer, I think he's beyond reproach. As a writer, he's a little... Mm, he needs an editor. But whatever. Uh, Brandon J says, my first year going all in during brain drain. It's been fun, JG. Brandon, I appreciate you being here, brother. I just try to be entertaining and informative. That's it, man. That's it, and that's all. We, The whistles go, woo. It's so woo woo. Uh, Russell says Jay Head is a freaking stud. Love the insight. He is. Yeah, he really is, man. Not only is he just really insightful, but he's a nice human being. Very, very easy to pull for, and uh, always pulling for him. Love that man. Let's see. Cassidy Peace says, "Give me Keith Moon. Keith Moon, rest in peace. Of course, one of the great drummers, no doubt about that. For the Who." I, I just don't know enough about drumming myself to tell you who the best is. It certainly ain't me. But for me, Neil Peart, from the complicated side, uh, AU Taxman said, all I need to say is that Will Collier is a huge Neil Peart fan. Yeah, he likes Rush. So what? A lot of people do, including me, AU Taxman. Now we've got MW Deve on the line. What's up, brother? What's up, JG? Word. It's, I'm glad to hear from you. How was your holiday? It was good. How was yours? Uh, solid man. I was glad to get these uh this badass chain that I've been wearing all day. You know, it's made out of tungsten. It's really, really important. I'm really important to be able to wear it. You said solid. <laughs> what now? You said solid. Yeah, solid. There's no doubt. It's basically a six win chain. Uh, what did you see out there today, man? A lot of disappointment, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, as a fan, you see a game like that, and you're naturally disappointed. But I, uh, I mean, kind of after what we saw with New Mexico State, I didn't, and and knowing the way, what Hugh put out publicly about how he was approaching the bowl game, I didn't. I thought there was a chance this could happen. I won't say it was totally out of the realm of expectations as far as the result. Um, it's you know it, you 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 get into these games like this where there's not a championship on the line and you need guys who can motivate themselves to some extent. And we're still a hodgepodge of a team that was, you know, put together with a lot of transfers in the last year. And sometimes you, with, with a program in a situation like that, uh, as I said before, guys, guys aren't playing for the AU yet. Um, I think the iron bowl naturally, I think that shows them how much it matters. But it's going to take time um, to get a cohesive unit that has the leadership that really changes that. Yeah. And they're not quite there yet. And I'm not. Yeah. And I don't, you know, there's different. I'm still trying to figure out things about Hugh's personality and approach. And I, some of this, like, I mean, he gave an interview at the end of the third quarter and he thought he, uh, you know, there's still a quarter left of football and he's already apologizing to fans for how the team showed up. He's got a different personality than a lot of coaches. Um, I would say some of that's just he is who he is. But the situation, the circumstances, the facts, what the team is, that won't always be the same. So I don't know that him being who he is will translate into the same result any time other than now. I don't know that yet. Yeah, he hasn't. He's very open and he's very honest, I think. Maybe too honest. It, it, it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder when they're in the weeks of practice leading up to a game or in team meetings or whatever. How does that translate to the team? Does I mean, is he a guy that that is is going to light a fire under a team for every game, or do the players see, well, he doesn't really care about this game as much, or doesn't think we're going to win? Like, what are they interpreting, you know? And how are they? How is that translating to their approach to the game? Like, I don't know the answers to that right now. Yeah, um, I'm not critiquing. I'm not really critiquing him. I don't. A lot of people get really upset. Like, we should. Oh, well, you know, we're all we're proud. We want to win every game. It's about AU. To, the, to me, these playoff bowl games are borderline meaningless at this point, non-playoff bowl games. 
Um, and it's just really hard to put a team together, get motivated. And if, if, it took an all out effort to ignore recruiting to get ready for this bowl game. And we had ended up finishing 15th and recruiting instead of eighth and lost out on all these players we got last week before last. Would people be exactly. happy because we won the bowl game? Exactly. Is that what it costs? It's an exhibition. And I don't game. know. I don't know if you can do both or not, but it's his decision to make. And that's the way he chose to approach it. Yeah. And he did great in recruiting. I mean, you can't argue that Jay head was saying earlier, no, a minus or a just an a or an a minus so far. And it still may get Ryan Williams, at yeah, which point that yeah. would be an A+. plus. Absolutely. I mean, we still have holes to fill that weren't really available in this class. I, you know, people jump on the offensive line issue a lot. I think what we got in terms of offensive line is is an A in itself, just because that's what – I think people don't realize how early you got to start recruiting offensive line and that we're, we're still behind – in terms of what this class was, and apparently it wasn't a very deep class in offensive line anyway, they're already starting to hit home runs for the offensive line class next year. It's coming. Mm. But it's just – it's a year behind where everything else was. Yeah, it is. Um, we've got – you know, we got some holes to fill in the defensive line immediately, more than, more so than high school recruiting. I think that – I won't say it snuck up on us, but I think it became a more pressing issue than was realized. Uh, the quarterback thing – you know, first three or four games, everybody was so down on Thorne. I said, well, let's wait and see how he does. He's not getting a lot of help. Um, and that's that's a factor. I, I don't think he was as terrible as people thought he was then. But I think what you saw today, there are parts of it that are just him. And I don't know that it's going to matter if you put a bunch of five-star receivers in there. I think what – is him and i don't know that it's coachable um i don't think it is is he's just got a and this is not saying he's not intelligent we're all built differently in this way things process slow for him what he processing what he sees translating it to his brain and back to his hand to make a decision and back to his hands and arm it takes an extra half second or an extra second more than it should a quarterback that can compete at this level hmm. interesting and that that's what i'm seeing so right now just a little slower to react maybe yeah and that's not say oh he's slow you know mentally slow he's not i i can't play quarterback at that level i'm a smart guy but it doesn't mean i can go out there and make those decisions that quick on my feet with you know 400 pound guys running at me yeah it's just a different thing and some guys have it and some don't and i don't i don't see it as people say oh he's not getting good protection it wasn't great today but it wasn't terrible i mean yeah our protection this year on the whole has been much better than it was two years ago when bo was here I think the run um, the run blocking's been kind of iffy ish. I definitely wasn't yeah. very good today. But I, for the as far as the pass protection, I mean, mm. I'll, I'll say the the receivers aren't helping because they they can't get separation, they can't catch all that. But most of what you look at as he's not getting time to throw, et cetera, it's really more about he's not making decisions quick enough. In my book, I think he's getting most of the time sufficient time. Yeah, it would help if a receiver got wide open, if a receiver got separation, but you're not always going to get that. Well, maybe next year they will. Uh, maybe. I, maybe. I, I was skeptical the whole time that Freeze's plan really is to stick with Thorne, um, and I'm still not told him that that's, that's where it's going to end up by August. I know. I I, I think this I'll might change Hank Brown looks good. Yeah, but he's not and gullible. Not, I know he was playing against the – I know he was playing against a you know horrible defense and prevent, but he was making quick decisions. He was very decided. It was the opposite of what you see with Thorne. And, I don't know if uh, he's goable. I don't think you can roll with him next year. I I I don't care what he did again in this game. I'm not sure whether you can roll with anybody we've got right now. Though. I know there's definitely some. I, I mean, I know Thorne's about playing me. a lot of games, but yeah, I'm with you on the slowness thing. I think you articulated something I kind of felt, but I hadn't really. I hadn't really thought about it that way, and I think you're right. I, I think we've seen enough now to say it's a thing. Because if, if you go back, even the games he played very, very well, that's still there. He just had larger windows that didn't expose it as much. Yeah. But to, to underline something you said earlier, it's not that he's a dumbass. It's not about intelligence. No. It's about just how quickly you're seeing things and then doing things. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a, it's a natural skill that has to do with probably developmental brain chemistry, whatever. It has nothing to do with intelligence. It's um and I mean you know like 
you talk about players in different sports, the elite of the elite, like a Michael Jordan, somebody like that, it's all instant for them. Everything's smooth, seamless. They don't, they don't even look like they're thinking, you know. But then when you see a guy that has to pause and think between each step, between what his eyes see and what his hands are doing, it's, it's just there's a, I don't know what you call it, an athletic acumen um, that some guys have and some don't. And I just don't see it with him as a quarterback right now. Yeah. And, I mean, he's been in college for four years. I mean, he is what he is. Yeah, and I like it's. There's a lot of things I think you could coach. There's things that some of our former coaches said weren't coachable that I definitely think are. I think that's just part of brain chemistry that's probably set when you're at a very young age, and I don't think it changes. Word. Well, I'm not a psychologist or a neurologist, but you know that's. It seems to me that would be very difficult to train out of somebody. Yeah, just that tentativeness, you know. Neil Caudill had that back in the day. Yeah, and I mean, think about when he was recruited. A lot of people thought he was going to be a superstar. Um, and, you know, Neil Caudill's, a, from everything I know, a great guy, smart guy, all that. He just didn't translate to being a quarterback in the SEC level. That's right. And Barrett Trotter, another kid who's very, very bright, a good football mind, but just didn't quite – he uh, yeah. didn't have that athletic acumen like you were talking about. Yeah, I mean, he made – I, I don't know what, what the issue with him was. I mean, he came into that bowl that last bowl game, and I would have thought for sure he'd be the starter next year. And the next week, the head coach tells him he's not going to compete for the starting job. So, yeah. um, who knows? I mean, they they knew more than I did, obviously, or or you did, or any of us. They get paid to do that, but um, it's uh, but I just if I can't really imagine Freeze Freeze definitely knows enough about football. He's smart enough, and the other guys around him on that staff. I can't imagine they really watch Thorn and think. They don't see that and say, yeah, that's probably not something we can do much about. We, we probably need somebody else. I think there's, for whatever reason, whether it's the budget or whatever else, we uh, we thought, I, I, I think this is probably a long-term, the right decision about, hey, spend the money on these other positions where you can get really elite guys right now as opposed to, okay, maybe there's a guy in the portal, but at quarterback, he, he's okay. He may, We're not sure he's elite, but he's going to cost us $2 million. Yeah, that we could you know go out and get five other guys for that same amount. I know. Yeah, and there's other holes. Of course, it's, if the uh, if if the offensive coordinator buyout is is two million, would you rather spend two million to change offensive coordinators or two million to get a quarterback? Yeah, quarterback. Hell yeah, that's what I would do. Of course. I mean, how much you can probably make things work with Philip Montgomery if you've got a elite quarterback. I mean, it's it's amazing how much better offensive coordinators to seem when they've got elite quarterbacks and receivers and linemen and running backs. Yeah, you're right about that. All right, brother. I appreciate you calling in. Always a good call, MWD. You're one of our smartest folks. Of course, I know what you do for a living. Happy New so Year, Jay. That's why it's easy to praise yeah, you, you for that. And plus, you use big words. Sometimes. Yeah. All right, man. Happy New Year, brother. See you, brother. Bye. There he goes, MWD, five-star caller, no doubt about it. Um, and definitely one of our brightest uh, bunkers. I've uh, had the chance to hang out with him uh, in real life. And uh, first of all, he's very tall. And second of all, he's very, very smart. I have uh, I finished my two almost empty bottles. I'm very glad to have finished them. We finished the Maker's Mark uh, BEP from earlier this year that we got in Bowling Green. Got this. Uh, oh, Crocky's calling in. Shit. I'm taking this one. You better believe it. Now we got Crocky on the line. What's up, Crocky Poo? Hey, what's up, Jay? Where? This is Crocosile 20, uh, 22 from the bunker, by the way. What up, bro? <laughs> uh, nothing much. Just driving around. Had my dog in the passenger seat. We're driving through downtown right now. Downtown Atlanta? Uh, Trustful. Oh, Birmingham area. Okay, I got you. I thought you were from the Atlanta yeah, area. I don't visiting. know why. <laughs> no, I'm in the Birmingham area. I was visiting family. Um, watched the game over there. You know, had a little fun, and then uh, we kind of muted the game and just ate some dinner. You know, it's probably a, that's the best way to handle that game, brother. <laughs> yeah, that, that was tough to watch. So, what are you thinking right now, man? Well, I I had you know I'm a stats guy, so I had two stats I wanted to get your take on um one one on Peyton Thorne that I, I don't think gets brought up enough but um uh, it's kind of a 
tough stat to come by because I guess it's kind of subjective, but his, uh, it's called the pressure to sack ratio uh, that quarterbacks have. Whenever He has the highest pressure to sack ratio among Power 5 quarterbacks. I think it's like top 10 among all quarterbacks in FBS for like if, if they start. So I don't know if it's a mental thing. What, what do you think is going on there? Because it's like it's 35%, which is crazy. Because if you get sacked on a drive, that's usually going to be a game. I mean, it's a drive killer. So and what in the it, SEC, you're going to get pressured like three times on a drive usually. So, so the, that that ratio tells you how often they're pressured versus how many times they get sacked. So you'd want someone to have a very low number yeah. there, right? Yeah, typically it's like 15 to 20%, but Peyton's 35%. So, and Auburn's not giving up like an abnormal amount of pressures. It's actually – it's like middle of the pack SEC, but whenever he gets pressured, he tucks the ball and gets sacked. Yeah, right. On thirty five percent of the time. So it's like, how many how many times do you think in SEC play do you get pressured on a drive? It's going right. to be like two or three. Times, Absolutely. Because right? no one's going to be perfect. I think there's lines. a skill there, Crocky, that he doesn't have, which is to be mobile and then throw. Like, his choices yeah. are, I'm going to throw from the pocket or I'm going to scramble for my life. Those are the only options. I need to look at it again, but it was something crazy on his throwaways. I think he only threw it away three times in regular season play, too. So oh, my he, God. Yeah, so there's something there, too, where he's, he, like, takes too long to think or is stuck between decisions to where he won't throw it away. I, That's something MWD was talking about on the call right before you. Or he he thought that yeah. he thought he just took a little too long to process things. I th- well, I think it, I don't think it's I don't think it's a like st- systemic thing with Peyton Thorne because it wasn't a problem at Miss- Michigan State, but it might be just the system when you're giving him RPO and he has to choose between like three things. Maybe he gets stuck. Hmm. I, I don't know. That's coaching though. Because it. Yeah, it might, or just not knowing the system system well enough to be comfortable in it, or or maybe, the system's a fuck job, or it's two guys yeah. trying to throw shit against the wall. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's something there though. Uh, I think that's his biggest issue though is when when he gets sacked, that kills the drive like eighty percent of the time because we're not converting second and long without a passing game. You know? Uh, yeah, you're that, right about that's that. just something. That's something I, I, when I look at that stat, it just sticks out every time. Like every time he gets sacked, it's just a, it's an issue. Yeah, that's too many drives. Uh, You're forfeiting a drive essentially when you get sacked. I mean, 80% of the time probably. Yeah. The the other thing I wanted to get your your take on, um, so the, the good offenses in the SEC this past year, like Missouri, Georgia, Bama, um, <sighs> I think Texas A&M, they only have two or three guys that get 40 targets, not catches, but just targets in regular season play. So I I wanted to hear who you thought those two or three guys could be for Auburn. Because Auburn this year, we only had one, and it's kind of ridiculous that Rivaldo Fairweather was the only one that got 40 or more targets this season. Yeah. And I don't – I think he's a good player, but he shouldn't be like your number one – go-to guy. No. Or, Although yeah, he thinks he I, should I don't, be. I think he's good, but I, I don't know if he should be your, your guy, you know? If it's Ryan Williams, so, it's going to be Ryan Williams, my G. I mean, 100%. Yeah, if it's, if sure. it's not Ryan, it'll be Cam. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like Perry, just the the whole coming in on summer. I know he's a receiver, so it doesn't matter as much, but Guys that come in summer usually take a while to get going. Yeah, for sure. Like Shane Hooks. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, uh, guess how many targets Robert Lewis got last year? At Georgia State, what, uh, yeah. 50? I think it was like 80 to 100. Damn. And I, I don't know if he's going to get that year. So, <laughs> I, I, I want to no. – I'm kind of curious how his production works out if he's not getting that kind of volume. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't know what he's how he's going to fit in. I mean, I think he's going to play ahead of Bryce at the slot, but you yeah, know, I, 
he ain't I gonna like get eighty that targets. More than the shorter though, that's like twenty-seven yards or such. Yeah, that just it feels better with the high volume guys compared to like the explosive play guys because you know they can. Well, you you at least have a little more confidence that they're gonna be able to catch the ball better than what we have in that room right now. Yeah, uh, that ain't nobody right now. Jeez. Yeah, they need some help. Yeah, they do. Crocky. So, uh, do you think? Oh, go ahead, one please. More, one more question before yeah. I go, and I'll yeah. Do you think we get another receiver, or do you think we're we're done there? You mean in addition to Ryan Williams? Yeah. I think they would wrap it up with or, Ryan. Or if they don't get Ryan, do you think they go and get one more? Yeah, if they don't get Ryan, I think they get one more. But they've added the two, uh, the kid from Cal, who's kind of a project. Do you think they get an outside or a, a slot guy? Outside. Is it? Yeah, I, I've seen some stuff where they they like Ryan at the slot, just because that gets all your your star your star power on the field. Okay. And Barry and uh, and Cam, but so so you think they go for an outside guy if they don't get Ryan? Yes, I think they go for a Z. Um, yeah. Because you still got Jay Fair, and you're gonna have the, the kid from Georgia State's gonna be your number one slot, I would imagine, coming out of the gate. And, yeah. But if, if you want to, I think Ryan Williams is going to start somewhere. So I was thinking he would be X and Perry could be Z, but we'll just kind of see what happens. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jay. Crocky Poo, I appreciate you, bro, here. I appreciate you on the bunker. You're an absolute stud. You're a stud, too, man. Have a great weekend. See you, man. Bye. Yeah. There he is, Crocky Poo, uh, truly a bunker legend and uh, puts a lot of good stuff on the bunker. He's, he's very, I think it was a, a understatement of the year when he said I'm kind of a statistics guy. He is. Very much a statistics guy, and uh, we love him for that. Patrick D. jumped in with a massive super chat while we were uh, on the phone there. Uh, Patrick D., of course, uh, why not AU on the bunker and an absolute stud in his own right, uh, one of our channel legends for sure. I'm not the one who grinds them during bowl week. I am really not. I want them to enjoy the journey and the process. Hope they enjoyed it. I know we're going with that. Patrick D thinks that uh, the lack of you know pushing, he wasn't trying to say everybody needed to be you know to be a boot camp or anything, but uh, I felt like Hugh went out of his way to kind of make it cushy, and you know they came into this game and got knocked around and beat up pretty bad. And Patrick D wants to see Auburn win the game, so I can't hate on him for that. I'll be back to that in a second, but uh, I did want to give feel like a stranger. A shout there for his super chat. He said, you know the game is rough when the Commodore is unironically dropping hashtag Chisdom. <laughs> I did drop a uh, Gene Chiswick reference earlier, and you guys know I don't do that too often. I, feel like, I, f- I appreciate you feel like a stranger, and I ain't forgotten what you talked about a couple weeks ago, bro. Uh, Brad E., one of my uh, f- friends from the greater uh, Madison area, part of the Madison Mafia, says donation to the Hank Brown Broadway Fund. Hope Hank can have a good time over there tonight. <laughs> Hank did have a hell of a day, 7 of 9 for over 100 yards and uh, accomplished more in whatever it was, two drives, than uh, Peyton did in the first two and a half, three quarters. Thank you, Brad. Also, Patrick D. coming through as he often does. Some people were still talking about drummers in here earlier, which is what I like to see. But uh, there were some bad takes. Uh, the only answer really is uh, Bonham... Uh, Keith Moon, Neil Peart, and I would also uh, entertain Danny Carey from Tool. He's a bad man, too. Uh, Bradley B., who would know some things about this, says Perry is an X uh, receiver, and Ryan Williams can play wherever. Ryan can be an X. Ryan can be a, a flanker. Ryan can be a, you know, a slot, a Y. He can do a lot of different things. So, yeah, I mean, I think Jay had described uh, Ryan Williams as generational talent, and I, I, I think I would agree with that. He plays at a very high level in high school, and he is a very, very bad man. I don't know who this is calling in. We're going to find out. Yo, this is the brain drain. It's JG. Who am I talking to, yo? Stoop up. How you doing, buddy? Hey, what's going on, Stoop up? I, I call you on my work line. Uh, Sorry about that. I had the wrong phone plugged in to my truck. No problem. Bro. Happy New Year, my friend. Hey, same to you. How you doing? Considering we got killed in the bowl game, I had a pretty decent time. And then <laughs> joined the nice scenic ride home in the dark, cold evening, East Tennessee um, evening, Jay. How, how are far you are you How far are you away from home up there? About 100 miles. 
okay, from where t- I'm at right now. It's about a two-hour ride from my house to the stadium. That ain't too bad. Not too bad. Hanging what out was, with my son. Got to see my cousin. What was the experience like? Good day. What was the experience like? I am, Oh, I had a great – I had a, as far as the experience goes, the bowl, the music bowl was a positive experience. I – I, it, Dean Fon Stadium is dated, but it's fairly easy in, easy out. It's easy to find your seat. Concessions are good. It's, it's perfectly adequate for a nice bowl game. Somebody forgot to pay the power bill and, and turn the heat on today. But uh, other than that, you know, the experience is awesome. I enjoy the stadium. Uh, since they've done away with the old school Peach Bowl, it's probably my favorite bowl game to go to if you're not playing for anything. Damn, okay. Word. But the, uh, the action uh, on the field did not satisfy you. Uh, no, I am, I am not satisfied, nor, but I am good, I think. I am not satisfied, but I am good. Um, wow. you know, because this, this game didn't mean anything, you know, so I took solace in the fact that I got to see a couple of people that I don't get to spend a lot of time with as much since I moved, since I was not a student at Auburn anymore. So, you know, took the, took the, kind of the friends and family route today, the Auburn family, family as, yeah. uh, as a uh, doc doctor would say, yeah, and yeah. tried to enjoy it that way. But, yeah, that was uh, – the on the field part was awful, Jay. That was bad. It was really bad. Really bad. Yeah. Horrible. Um, let me ask you a question. Hell yeah. And, I, and I'm just curious. If if you – and the, if, and I, I – my, res, my resolution for 2024 is to – not get into the dark place that I was in over football this season. I was in a not a great place with this football team, and I kind of let myself get way more negative than I should have. We remember, so yeah. My, we still loved you, but we remember. My, yes, my honest and humble apologies to the uh, brain drain community. I, I was way too negative this year. And that is also not a me culpa or anything. I still have many reservations about – Breeze tenure, but I don't need to be a jerk about it. So we'll we'll change. We're going to try to change our tenor to the going forward with this because he's the coach, and ain't a whole lot I'm going to be able to do about it. Yeah. Um. My question is, Jay, if the plan, and I'm not criticizing Hughes' plan one way or the other. I I do at least respect, give him credit. He has a plan. He has stated a plan, and. By the, by the way, signing day went, he executed on his plan. But it, it, better than I thought he would, to be bluntly honest with you. I expected 12 to 15 ranking. He got to seven. So he, he exceeded my expectations there. Got to be fair in, in my – got to give him praise where, where, it's, where it's done. Jay, let me ask you this question. Why are we messing with Peyton Thorne as the quarterback next year if he's a fifth-year senior and we're going to go young anyway? Like, what does he bring to the table? Well, I, I don't think he is – go ahead, I'm sorry. He thought that if they got a unified offensive scheme together, which they didn't have this year, going into next year, and they gave him much better wideouts and maybe a couple better offensive linemen, that he would be fine. Because mm-hmm. he's terrible when he has to flush. Um, we were talking about that earlier with Crocosile. You know, his pressure oh, to yeah, sack ratio tough. is horrible. So if he's in an area where he's got protection and he's got great wideouts, they thought they could make it. They could make that work. But I've got questions, Stu. I, I don't know, man. If I I I didn't like. I left in the third quarter, and I never leave in the third quarter because, quite frankly, I froze. So like, I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> um, if if you're like, what sense does it make Peyton? Does it make for Peyton Thorne to be the quarterback next year? I, I understand maybe you just got to have somebody to run it to get through next year, but if you're not going to porthole it and try to win next year, if you're going to go the high school, re, you know, the high school recruiting rebuild, Jay, we've got at least two more years of this before there's any fruit to this. Mm. So does Thorne come back with a shorter, like a shorter, you know, shorter leash, so to speak? I mean, if Hank Brown came in and balled out today, um, and I wasn't there to see it, I mean, does he get a shot? If if Thorne was this bad all year and Gurner didn't get an opportunity today and he took half the practice reps because Thorne was sick the first half of bowl preparation and they didn't have any guts and think well enough of him to stick him in there, 
I mean, do we have a quarterback going forward? I mean, do you just hand it to Walker White or Hank Brown and just say, learn on the fly, boys, throw it to the two, the two new guys? Maybe three if we get Ryan Williams. Just chuck it up to them. I mean, what do you think? I got to believe they're going to porthole something here, even though he – said that he wasn't going to do that. I think he's got to think about that. Dude, I think there's pressure on him to win next year, brother. I, I don't think it's, you know, we're getting a holding pattern like they were this year. He's got to fucking win next year. And I think he's going to have to come to that. I think some goodwill. I agree with you. I do. Yeah. There was, I've talked to a couple people that are in Tigers. You know, they, they hold season tickets. The, the recruiting class is great and everything. Man, you got, they got to start winning or – it's going to get restless in a hurry. And I know. Then, I, agree. I don't know. I mean. I agree. I, I just, and I'm not keep going on, but I just, there's another thing that scares me, and this is one of the reasons, I, this was the number one reason why I was kind of against the whole thing with Freeze to start with. I watched, you know, our friend Gus Gustav um, uh, have a solid bowl game, against, no you know, at least first half against Georgia Tech and no doubt. Um, you know, go up 17 points and then not score for two and a half quarters. I saw our, our buddy Rhett Vett have another solid um, first oh. half against Boston College and not score in the second half. Yeah, and I saw whatever that was, what what consisted of a game plan that Auburn University tried to run out there today. If they were sick and couldn't put in some stuff, like there was a lot of things that could have been wrong this, this these two weeks. That's you know to be expected. I'm not trying to be overcritical. But, Jay, all those types of systems – they have a lot of commonality, and the commonality in these systems is that um, when you run into equal talent, the, the, the system doesn't allow play. There's not a lot of help to make players. They don't scheme people open. They don't scheme open holes, and I am really worried about that. I, I feel like better talent will lead to somewhat better results. But is there a ceiling to this thing? That's my number one biggest concern going into next year. Well, there's Am I not, way off base on that? No, you're not off base, but I don't think there was a system per se this year. I think it was a hodgepodge of different ideas from two different guys who weren't on the same page, and they never got it straightened out. I think Hugh's going to get it straightened out yeah. coming into next season, but I, I, I don't. They, there was no continuity of vision this year at all. Uh, it was two guys oh. with completely different ideas, and – that's on Hugh. Hugh's the head coach, and he's got to get that shit straight. And I thought he was really late kind of dealing with that and getting that addressed. So I, I still don't know that Peyton is in a system per se. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. That, I mean, he fair. is, but he's and not. I, I appreciate that. So, so I try to – You think Montgomery going to be safe, or is he gone? I think he's – is he going to be there next year? My best guess is that he will be here next year because it's just a lot of money to send him packing, and they like him. I think it's just that Hugh's got to put his foot down and say, okay, here's, a, here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to run this shit. And I don't know if he yeah. wants to do that. He promised he promised Philip autonomy, and then he's going to take it away from him. Maybe he'll leave it to Hugh, maybe, maybe he'll leave it to Monty to figure out what he wants to do there. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's I, can't, I can't say that that leaves me to be very excited for coming in the next year, but, um, you know, who knows? Yeah, I know, we'll, I know. We'll get there. Um. But yeah, hey, I'm, I appreciate you letting me call in, Jay. Um, I, I wish Stunned. you and your family um, the the happiest of New Year's and many great blessings in 2024. I wish all the same to the fellow bunkers and especially the brain brain drain family here. Uh, happy New Year and best wishes to everybody and War Eagle guys. All right, soup up. See you, brother. See you, buddy. Bye. Bye. There he is, Stu Pup, our superest chatter. He's, he's chatted us uh, every single show we've ever done, and uh, we love having Stu Pup on the air. And I thought his uh, I thought his statement there that he had gotten a little too negative because he had called in a few times uh, earlier in the season, and he had been – I mean, he was fired up, you know, and, and there were some times I think we would all agree that Auburn was not playing football that was commensurate with the Auburn brand, and he was frustrated, and he wasn't the only one. But he got a little more negative, maybe than he wanted to be, and uh, I appreciate him saying that uh, on the on the chat. That's what that's what I like about the brain drain. We can kind of acknowledge that we maybe screwed up. I certainly do that plenty of times, and uh, we aren't going to sit here and harass people over it. We just move on, be accountable, and move on. That's what I love about Stoop Up. It takes a man to do some stuff like that, or a woman. It's got to take a stand up individual to do that. 
So let's see. Uh, Dick 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 C is a big fan of. Uh, he's he's a big drummer guy, and he was talking about the uh, drummer from Fall Out Boy being really good. The drummer from uh, well, <laughs> the drummer Dave Grohl working with Queens of the Stone Age on their uh, seminal record, uh, the Songs for the Deaf. Yes. Dave Grohl obviously is a great drummer. Uh, he's probably better as a everything guy, kind of like Prince was. I don't think Prince was the greatest guitarist ever, but he was really good at a lot of different instruments. And keep in mind, guys, Prince wrote his own shit, arranged his own shit, played his own shit, produced his own shit. Buddy Holly could do that. Prince could do that. There ain't many people that can do that. Thanks for calling the Brain Drain, who I got on the horn. Bo is great. What's happening, Jay? Hey, what's up, bro? Have you ever called in before? Yes, I have. It's been a been a minute, but Damn. I'm uh I'm a little numb from the game, so first of all, Fi Fi K A M F. You got it, brother. You got it. Fi Fi. Yeah. We're gonna, and? Have a, we're gonna have a pledge meeting here in a minute. Wait, where? At Auburn? Yeah, no. We need to have one of the football team. We need to run some people till they puke. Oh shit. Yeah, I've been there, bro. Yeah, that ain't good. That ain't good. But I saw you in the chat about... earlier talking some shit as usual. <laughs> oh, just, the chat's hilarious. If people aren't utilizing that, they're just looking at listening and they're not utilizing the chat. It's gold at times. Yeah, it's it's amazing. <laughs> I love doing it's the some brain hilarious chat. people. And I'm glad to have you as part of our community, both here and at the bunker, dude. You're yeah. I was talking a couple days ago about how there's a lot of cool shit that happens on the bunker off the board. And uh, you're one of those people that uh, makes some pretty amazing things happen off the board. I'm not going to say what it is because it's up to you. That's your well, story. You're kind. You've helped you're a lot of people, kind. dude. You've helped a lot of people. Um, anyway, just, what's up? Blonde, a blonde hog finds an acorn every now and then. I'm just That's happy bullshit. to be here. What do you want to uh, talk about tonight? Hey, I, <laughs> setting expectations. Ooh. I'm not too sure next year is going to be that much better. To be it better be. It I, fucking better be. I, well, yeah, but what are you going to do for tonight? Fuck, I'll do like Auburn always does, through. fire him. Nah, I'm just kidding. I don't yeah, think but so. I don't know if they can. Yeah, no, I, I they don't can, know. They can, they can. Yeah, I, he made, he spoke to several people, who did, back in the summer. And, I mean, without exception, six wins will be a, would be a good year for us. Six wins. He, he repeatedly said that. And he said, it's a, it's a big hole to fill. I, I, I didn't really want to listen. I get those orange glasses on and I tend to, you know, up my expectations a little bit. But that was I, I that bowl game really showed that there's a there's a lot a lot of work left to do. Yeah, there is. And a bunch of incoming freshmen aren't gonna be you know, aren't gonna fix that. Yeah. They're gonna have to get some unity of purpose on offense, which they didn't have all year. And I mean, I don't care who uh, Cam Newton could have handled it because he's so good on third down. But like regular quarterbacks yeah. can't function like that. No, you, 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 it, it's college football has become a, a quarterback league. And, unless you have an exceptional quarterback, you're going to have to out scheme, out hustle, out work everybody you play. And I, you know, Peyton's just not that guy. I don't think. And I'm, Auburn's I'm, not that team. Auburn's not that team to do the other. You know, so. You know, MWD a- was MWD called in earlier and said he just doesn't process quite quickly enough. He processes fast, but not fast enough. Yeah, I get that. It's it's like being a half a step off sometimes. Mm. Uh, and I mean, to his credit, though, how many times is he thrown to the spot, hit somebody in the hands, you know, put put the ball in place that nobody fought for? You know, I, it would get very frustrating because mm-hmm. it, you know, the average fan assumes that's on the quarterback. And he's done a lot of things well that he's gotten little to no help from that receiving core from this year. So I know. I don't know. It's a it's frustrating a situation. One. You just keep thinking that Auburn's not going to be in this weird conundrum at quarterback, but that's what it is. Yeah, I, I'm still looking for that sleeper, Brock Vandergriff. I, I know he's not the be all end all, uh, those private school guys, but I just watched Stockton. You know, he's another little private school kid marching down the field. Um, you know, he's in right now, Georgia. So I, no, he hasn't declared lifelong Auburn fan would love to be here. Probably could get him on the cheap. 
I don't know about Gunnar Stockton? No, uh, Vandergrift. Oh, yeah. I thought he'd already switched. I, he has left. I, he's in the portal. I don't think he's landed anywhere yet that I know oh, of. I, I thought he ended up in Kentucky. My bad. Well, maybe he did. Maybe he did. I have not been keeping up with him. I just was watching the Georgia game. So. Yeah. But I know you mean try to get a good guy on the cheap. That, that seems smart to me. Yeah, you could get some guy like him that has a point to prove looking for a spot to play in um, that would do it just for the spot. Um, but, again, I, and I, this is, you know, it's easy for us to talk about it. It's his job. It's his first time to do it. You know, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. I mean, hey, the chat is telling like me. Happen sooner. The chat's telling me that Vandegrift did commit to Kentucky. Okay. Well, my bad. But, you know, he can still be stolen, I guess, you know. Unless it's the canoe man. You know, that, that, that guy, he starts <laughs> trouble up on the board all the time. That guy's a stud, man. I love canoe man. Oh, he's freaking awesome. What a badass. He's no crocky poo now. <sighs> Boy, that'd be like Sophie's Choice picking between those two. Shut up. Oh, yeah. Well, at least at least it's not Hornaceous involved in this. So. Well, we, we love Hornaceous for what he is. bottom of the barrel. I know, but he's everybody's got to be somewhere, right? That's right. You know, there has to be a bottom to the barrel or all the rest of us would just spill out. Exactly. We would just spill out everywhere. Yeah, Horn holds our holds our booties up in the air. I'm just saying. All right, man. Well, enjoy the show, brother. All right, man. Appreciate you calling in, legend. Have a good one. You See you, too. bro. Bye. See you, bud. Love that guy, man. Bo was great. Um, know him in real life. Uh, we're both Pikes, although we weren't together. We were approximately the same time we were Pikes, but we were at different schools. Um. And I love that guy. He's he's seriously. I was talking on the bunker the other day about writing a, uh, a book someday about all the shit that happens on this message board off the board. And you guys would be, your mind would be melted if you knew about some of the stuff, dude. Just the story about Deezer, just the Deezer. That's probably three chapters of a book right there. Deezer, rest in peace. Was a was a bunk. He was a, a brain drainer. And he passed away, I think, a year and a half ago, I think. And uh, in death, he did some things for some people uh, at AuburnSports.com. That, uh, that's not my story to tell, but he did some things that were pretty freaking inspiring in death. He's, I don't know, really know what else to say about that. Um, let's see. Kanuman did super chat me here. Uh, hold on. Kanuman says... Please tell the Prince Stevie Nick story. I, I think that he was, uh, Corey was making fun of me, but I will tell the Prince Stevie Nick story. There's two uh, pop culture icons. Uh, Stevie Nick's, of course, the lead singer or one of the lead singers from uh, Fleetwood Mac and a, and a great solo singer, too. Uh, one of the true legends. Um, so she loved the song Little Red Corvette, which we all do. And she contacted Prince, even though she wasn't friends with him, and she said, I would really like for you to write me a song that's like Little Red Corvette because I need it. She was breaking out a little bit from Fleetwood Mac. She was doing her solo act um, and she was coming up with a big record for 83, I think is what it was. I don't remember what it was called though, like Still at Heart or something like that. And so she basically asked him to come and write a song for her or, or just write a song for her that she could do because she loved Little Red Corvette. Now then, she's recording her record on the Sunset Strip. This is like 82 or 83. He comes to the fucking uh, where she's working. I think he's got like sources in the recording industry that tell him who's working out and where, you know, like, who's recording. So he goes to the sound station or wherever the fuck it was, and she's surprised to see him. And she's like, Prince, holy shit, you're here. And he goes, I'm here to write the song you asked me to write. And she's like, All right, let's do it. And he sits down with a keyboard and he writes that uh, he's doing the song stand back which is one of my all-time favorite songs in the 80s you guys if you guys know it it's like it, it you don't necessarily know that to to just listen to it all these years but when i tell you it was based off of red corvette and prince wrote it which you don't necessarily know when you hear the song stand back it sounds just like some shit from red a little red corvette it's it, you can tell it's prince right away you just didn't know that but i'm telling you now and he was only in there for like 30 minutes and he did the whole song he didn't write the lyrics he just did the the music all the keyboards and stuff, programmed it in and said, Deuces, I'm Gucci. Are you good? And she goes, I'm good. And then gone. She never saw him again the rest of her life. So she writes the lyrics to stand back. 
with all the music that Prince did, nobody else even fucked with it. It was just Prince's shit. That ends up being one of her greatest solo hits. To this day, she says they can't get anybody that can play the part exactly the way he did on any keyboard. And she never saw him again. And that's the kind of stuff Prince did. Somebody asked him to do something, he'd freaking do it. Just the ability to sit down on a keyboard for 30 minutes out of nowhere and just come up with that riff on a keyboard and arrange an entire song for somebody that undoubtedly made her a million dollars and then just be like game blouses. You know what I mean? Like It's just amazing. What an incredibly talented performer. And I don't even love Prince that much. But the guy has legendary talent. That's the story. Cassidy P says, we need clarity of thought in offensive identity. Am I using too many buzzwords there? We need to attack the low-hanging fruit and who moved my cheese. But you know what I mean. There was not a unity of vision in what was going on offensively because Philip Montgomery had his own idea. Hugh had his own idea. It, they didn't mesh. And they never really got on the same page. And that's a problem. And that's on Hugh. And that's something that I've been critical of him for. And will continue to be critical of him for. But seriously, those of you who like 80s music, listen to Stand Back by Stevie Nicks. And when you hear that opening riff, now you're going to hear it differently. It's 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 essentially the next step of Little Red Corvette. It, it's the same kind of concept. <clears throat> yeah. It's kind of like how... Uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit is a lot, is, is a, the song Rate Me on In Utero from Nirvana is essentially reversed Smells Like Teen Spirit. Anyway, moving on. We got other shit to do. Let's get um, B-Mat on the home. B-Mat is in Cashville, or he may be on his way out now. Nope, no, I don't want that one. B Matt sell. Let's get B Matt on the horn and see what's up. And we will get Stultzy. We are not getting off this show without Stultzy. So let me get B Matt on the phone. Y'all don't hear the phone ringing anymore. All right, what up? Hey, what up, B Matt? What you doing? I'm chilling? just chilling. Yeah. Did you enjoy that game? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> I've been Why coughing not, all day, man? bro. <clears throat> I've been coughing like an old man yeah. all day. I was uh, sick last week, but I'm good now. Um, what the hell, man? What What do we make of this game? Hmm. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I thought just from a schematic deal here, I thought Maryland did the one thing they needed to do, which was load the box and stuff Auburn's run and force them to pass. If you really watched it, and I and we had great seats here in the press box, I could see everything, which is something I can't say a lot of times. But Auburn's receivers could not get open. They could not get separation. So Auburn was not able to take advantage of <clears throat> Maryland loading the box and giving them those advantages to take shots down the field and such. So I think that's time meet Auburn's offense early and, and really work in their favor. And then that first quarter, Auburn just got blitzed, right? They kept making mistakes. You know, they gave up that early screen pass. I think there was probably a hold on that that they missed, but still uh, lost containment there. And then had another big play on the third touchdown. Uh, on a long pass, I believe. So they just they just weren't focused in that first quarter. And then I think if if I added up right, I think Auburn only gave up 84 yards total in the last three quarters. Yeah, after the first quarter. So they showed what they were capable of doing, but it was just too little, too late after that first quarter. And you know, Auburn offensively just does not have the ability with this personnel to throw the ball around and come back in a game like that. It's just it just was not happening. And now we're left to wonder uh, if, if Hugh is going to be quite as uh, committed to Peyton going forward. Well, he certainly was not in the post game, you know, uh, session we had with him. That's that's for sure. I mean, he came out and said that it's it's wide open, and that you know Hank Brown really showed him some things um, in this game. Talked a lot about his poise, how he handles pressure well, how when he's running the scout team offense that he's always under pressure and always making 
you know, good decisions and, and, and good throws even under pressure. So uh, that to me stood out and said it would be wide open in the spring, which is a, a little bit different than what he said two weeks ago when he basically, you know, um, he didn't say it, but he said it in, in ways that, you know, it was going to be Peyton Thorne's team and we're going to build it around him. I don't think he necessarily uh, felt that way. Of course, that's, you know, just minutes after a loss, right? So, um, you know, you have to take that little bit of grain of salt, but certainly – uh, that situation is a little bit more open than it was, um, you know, before this game started. Yeah, it has to be. I mean, it has to be. He was so yep. bad, dude. He was. What do you think about Hank? I mean, do you, do you look at him as kind of like is a garbage time phenom, or or do you think he's legit? Um, um, well, you know that we were together when we talked to somebody about personnel on the team, and there it, there was not necessarily a glowing report on Hank from that person. Correct. However. Um, I, I, I'm tend to sort of look at it like I saw what I saw with my own eyes. Um, the kid stood in the pocket well. He's got a live arm. I thought he made good decisions, good throws. You know, I, I thought he had a lot of poise out there. That's the word I would use. So, you know, quarterbacks are tough to evaluate until you get him get him out there in the game, right? You know, sometimes your best quarterback on your team starts the season as your number three guy or whatever, just because you don't know. Uh, so yeah, maybe, maybe he is a lot better than, than people have thought he was going to be. And maybe, uh, there will be something to it. Um, Hmm. I don't have any question that he's going to get a shot in the spring for sure. Um, you know, Holden, Holden didn't really do anything today. And it seems like every time he gets a shot, he goes one for seven or one for six or something. Right. It just doesn't have it. But, uh, Hank Brown stepped in there and even though it was garbage time, even though, I mean, I don't know if Maryland, how many backups they had in there, whatever, uh, he still performed really well. Yeah, he did. I thought he looked really good. Yep. Um, does this performance at all change the way that you – what you're expecting from this ball club next year? No, it doesn't. In, in the end, it's still a throwaway bowl game, okay, where you have teams going underneath uh, – under – all these different changes of personnel and people coming and going and, you know, um, Auburn was without 12 players left for the portal. I think three other starters that opted out. Another was hurt and didn't play. Uh, so, you know, it was not the same team necessarily. Um, but I, I think you, you sort of edged on it. He talked about didn't do a good enough job with the staff and with his team he talked a lot about he didn't do a good enough job. He left some wins on the table with this year's team. He felt like he has not he did not get the most out of this team. And I think part of that is um, you know some decisions he made with his staff and some other decisions he made made with the offense and other things too. But um, I definitely think that um, he's going to try to hone that um, in the off season hmm. and uh, try to help him put a better product, more consistent product on the field next year. I think some people are confused, B-Math. They don't know that it's you if you're not out of breath. <laughs> well, uh, they have elevators here, so I didn't have a chance to run up and downstairs right there. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I know it's disappointing. Yeah, I know. Some people are really disappointed, but they st- they still love yeah. hearing from you, B-Math. They just didn't know it was you. That's good. Yep. Hey, Georgia's up 63-3. to How do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, again, a stupid bowl game where everybody on Florida State left or opted out or is hurt or whatever, you know, means nothing. Nothing. Good for Georgia. Yeah. Uh, was the food any good there? It was pretty good. Um, they had like a breakfast slash brunch thing when we got here, and they sort of had hot dogs and sausage dogs at halftime, and they Damn. had snacks after the game, and a really nice large air that we can work, you know. So, Attaboy. yeah, it's, it's, good. it's good. That's what I'm talking You're about. You're parking right next to the stadium. It's crazy. Yeah, I remember that. That's pretty cool. Yep. Badass. Yep. Love it. All right, B-Man, I want you to behave yourself and uh, get yourself home safely. That's really important to me. Okay, I'm going to be driving home listening to the game on the radio. So, Which the game? Bas- the basketball game. Basketball. Ah, uh, yes. Tips off in what? Two uh, more hours? Two hours. Yes. Six? Yep, mm-hmm. two hours. Yep, there we go. You going to just carry this on throughout that too? My I know some people Keep are pushing thinking. for that, but bro, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> but you have to invest another four or five hours to do that, bro. I, I know. I don't know if I'm ready for that now. Yeah. All right, B-Matt. All right, bud. Appreciate you, legend. Yep. Peace out, brother. See you, man. Bye. Bye. There he goes, B-Matt. I think Kanuman is a little surprised because he was expecting B-Matt to be out of breath.
Uh, the Wild Heart album, Chris, uh, reminds me. Stevie Nicks. Yes, that's it. It has, a, I think, a song called Songbird on it, too. Uh, and also a song called If Anyone Falls, which is actually pretty good. Wait, hold on. War Eagle 0008 says, Jay, we're basically at tip. So when you say that around me, that means a tipping point, which means the bar that's up here on the top of my uh, uh, neighborhood. But you mean tip off of the basketball game. Uh, Bo's Great says, I expect a new segment each week from you guys, the Press Box Food Update. I kind of bring that up ironically because some people, I, I strongly believe that nobody gives a shit about that. And Stoltz loves talking about it. And I'm always like, stop talking about it. Nobody cares. But I just, I don't know. I was just kind of messing around. <laughs> you guys are hilarious in the chat, man. Uh-oh. And Brad says, uh, Mike G is doing some dumb tweets again. Uh-oh. I need to take a look at this. Brah. Uh, let's see if I can find some of these. I love me some Mike G, but uh, sometimes he gets... Uh, Wait, what? Oh, maybe he goes by Michael. Hold on. Oh, he goes by Mike G now, actually, on Twitter. Uh, These don't look that bad. Oh, these don't look that bad. What are you talking about specifically, bro? I don't know. I'm going to sit and do this while I'm on the air. Corey Dub says, Tipping Point rivals Disney as the greatest place on earth. Mm. He says that because I party with him uh, there last night. I actually got to hang out with uh, his bro, too, uh, who has a, a really nice sleeve tattoo. I'm jealous. Uh, Kanuman says, A safe B Mad is the best B Mad. There is no doubt about that. Uh, I really like when B Mad gets home safely. Uh, that's my favorite thing to have happen. Uh,. <coughs> Excuse me. Kanuman updates us to say it's going to be, since Andy was in Cash Vegas for this game, it's going to be not Andy and Sonny on the call. I can't freaking wait. I, those guys probably don't work together that much, right? I mean, not Andy works the uh, studio, quote, quote, studio, and then Sonny's there courtside, but they're actually, not Andy's usually courtside. It's just that they're not on the air together doing play-by-play. -play. So we'll see how that goes. I still get questions, uh, Kanuman, about why you call him not Andy and stuff, and I still have to explain. I actually have it in the top of my uh, content item when I put those things out. Dixie says, uh, is Stoltz ringing the new year with Winnie Cooper? God, I hope so. Uh, Danica McKellar, who played Winnie Cooper, is one of the hottest women alive. Uh, age appropriate, though, uh, in her age group, 45 to 50. She's freaking she's so hot like there's not even a word for it i don't even know what word you would use i told a girl the other night that she, well it was my friend kim actually well our friend kim i told her that she looked resplendent and she was like what let's see Corey says i like not andy better than andy um well they both have their their thing not andy is a very polished presenter on the radio he's really good at that it's a very soothing um, delivery, and he, you can tell he's been doing it a long time. Andy, I think, is really as good as it gets as a basketball play-by-play -play guy. I think he's better than K. Wood Ledford, who I grew up loving at UK, who's a Hall of Famer. I think Andy's amazing on basketball. I just don't listen to him enough on football because I'm always here with you guys, so I never hear him. But I remember listening to him before that, and he was just so-so. Chip Chip in the house. What up, bro? Kids, well, man, I got a lot of static. Are you hearing the static at all? Uh, no, not a bit. You getting a lot? Yeah, call me back. Yeah. Right. I got a lot of static on that. You guys probably heard that. We'll wait. Uh, he'll probably call me right back. It'll be fine. I would imagine Chip Chip's down in the uh, the lower part of Alabama, so you never know how it goes. He's kind of on the bayous and the peninsulas. Runner24 says Danica McKellar is an all-pro slash Hall of Famer. She is so freaking hot. And she's really not usually my type, but she's still really hot. And I didn't, I didn't, I'm didn't. i familiar that she was in the Wonder Years, but I didn't watch the Wonder Years, so it's not that. Chip Chip, you good? I'm here. You sound great now. Better? Hell yeah. How you all doing, right, brother? Yeah. I, let, I, I just let Peyton Thorne dial my phone, so hey. that must have been what the problem was. I said you were down on the bayou. It could have been some bayou like background shit. I don't know. <laughs> no telling. 
<clears throat> but yeah, I'm glad I went to work today and made some money instead of sitting at home watching that game. Yeah. Yeah, we it took that news. we took that one on the face for you, bro. No <laughs> no kidding. Well, I I got to see a little of it, but you know, just it is what it is. Like everybody said, this was a meaningless game as far as getting the dub, but I did want to see more out of Thorne, just like NWD and J Head and everybody else has said you wanted to see more out of him this game to like say, Okay, I'm gonna be the guy moving forward. This is my team, get it in gear. You know, yeah, we're gonna we might suck. The defense may not do anything for us, but we're gonna come out and make some noise. And they didn't do that not in at all. the least. So I don't know. I, I still want the portal QB. I just don't know. I I agree with you guys. I don't know what you can get that's out there that can get you where you need to be next year. Well, not I, right now. I agree. I think not right no, now. I think that, I, no, not right now. But I do think the pressure is on him to. Make something more out of next year. You can't go six and six, seven and five next year. Even though it might be improvement, you've got to show more than that. You agree? Uh, yeah. Well, there's no doubt. Yeah, he's got yeah. to show a lot more. Yeah. Really. So, well, anyway, I just wanted to call in and say, hey, happy New Year's to everybody. I got to jet out of here in a minute. We're going to see a see a show tonight, and uh, oh damn, gonna have some have some New Year's fun. So, uh, and I want to apologize to, to Solo Tigre on air for not having his swig and glass to him yet. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong as far as delaying that, but I have not forgotten and it's going to happen. <laughs> He's a swigin. There's no doubt about that. We're going to get that done. Yeah. It's coming. And I'm not giving one out today after that. You know, that was not worthy of anybody. I know it happens. Well, hey, I just want to say Happy New Year's to you, Administrative Assistant, all the solutions out there, all the brain drainers out there. Another great year. Regardless of the of the games, the brain drain's been more fun than seven games so far this year. So We're here to help, let's man. Do some for March, let's do some for March Madness, man. Get get that team to the Final Four again. Let's let's make some noise. That's what I'm talking about. There's going to be a lot of drinking if that happens, brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's do, let's do it. All right, man. Peace. All right, War Eagle, everyone. See you, Chip. There he goes, Chip Chip. Uh, lives down, uh, well, we're saying the south part of the state, and he's going to, we had a, uh, we had a Bunker Bayou showdown, drink down at uh, at his place out uh, in, or- I guess, if it was Orange Beach, I don't know, it was somewhere down there on the water, and uh, back in, in last April, and we're going to try to do that uh, at some point in the not super hot months, whether that's April or May. Get back down there. I'm trying to think of all who all came down there for that one. That was Chip Chip and Mrs. Chip Chip. Uh, Mobile Lum was there. Uh, number 19 was there. Number 20 was there. Uh, BP Rockman came for that one. Uh, Hornacious was there. Boy, that was a lot of fun. Who, who am I? I know I'm forgetting some people. Raven was there. The legend himself and Mrs. Raven, who's uh, amazing. Um, uh, Tony Finn from the bunker was there as well. We had a lot of folks. We were having a lot of fun just drinking. Oh, uh, uh, BNOBA was there to give us some cooking. So hopefully we'll have it again this year and it'll be even better. Uh, and it was great last year, so I'm not saying that. Um, let's see. Dick says, uh, Tiffany Amber Thiessen or Danica McKellar. For me, it's Danica McKellar all day long because she's the number one. Uh, the Danielle chick, I checked that out a little bit earlier. So the Tigre, she looks a little bit more of a rocker. A little more gothy maybe. Um, not sure that's really my thing, but uh, all respect. She looks hot, though. Runner24 jumps in and says, Happy New Year to you all. See you on the flip, 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 flip side. Hey, man, let's, great de- let's make great decisions out there, brother, and I appreciate you being with us uh, all year long uh, here on the drain and also, uh, yeah, just being a legend. You're a tremendous caller as well. Love having you on the air, too, so appreciate you, bro. Canoeman says 19 and 20. Yeah, they were both there for sure. 19 was a little wobbly. Uh, 20 was not 20 was uh, in full control of his faculties but uh, number 20 is not in the chat I don't think but uh, he had my back he was keeping an eye on me LT Gray Esquire says Daniel Harris was in the Halloween movies yeah I googled her I don't I didn't see the Hollywood mo- uh, the Halloween movies so I had to look her up but she's cute yeah I mean that's a good one I just think Dan Keller's Keller's uh, like super hot and I, there's also something about, like, smart chicks that do it for me. She's got a Ph.D. in discrete mathematics from UCLA, so <clears throat> that's pretty pretty awesome. 
you're gonna be hot and you're gonna have a degree in discrete mathematics like i'm, I'm on board i at least want to have a chance uh, conversation let's see Kanuman says not andy and sunny is my favorite combo so darn excited for that tonight at Corey. there we go uh not who would not be a fan of not andy i don't understand i thought we liked not andy not andy's a terrific uh he does he's good at everything he does honestly you know, I had a row with him many years ago, but we got that settled. It's all good. He does a good job. They got a good group. I know some folks get really frustrated with Andy, particularly on the football calls, but a lot of that's not his fault. When you talk about misidentifying players, it's because Jay Jacobs put him in the great Lego in the sky. He's behind one end zone. <coughs> Andy's older than me. He's probably 55, maybe even closer to 60. And when the play goes past the 50... He's like fucking forever and a, d a day away from the play. Like he can't see anything. <clears throat> Cassidy piece is only 49 minutes to the Detroit game. JGT, I think tonight lends itself to a bowl slash NFL slash brusketball drain. I don't see how I can make it that long, bro. Glad to see runner 24 backing up Danica McKellar, by the way. I feel like there was something else I was supposed to address on here. But uh, I may have missed it. I don't know. Pocket Watch uh, earlier. This is from earlier. Yes, we heard the static. Okay, cool. It wasn't just me. Uh, Cassidy Pieces. Whoa, Kaywood Ledford reference, y'all. Met him at Christ the King Cathedral in Lexington. Is that a cathedral? Christ the King, for me, was like a church there on, uh, I guess on, well, the bottom edge of Tate's Creek. I don't know if you call that Shinaway or... I don't know what you call that area. Near Alumni Drive in Tate's Creek. Met him at Christ the King and Lexington along with Cotton Nash. I didn't have, I've never met Cotton Nash. But I, I am proud to say that I was like sort of kind of buddies. Not I don't want to say buddies. I knew Kay with Ledford, and he knew who I was at the time. I was a student reporter at UK for two years covering basketball, and I referred to, her as Mr. Referred to him as Mr. Ledford, but I was just a you know, precocious sports writer hoping to change the world or whatever. And... um Kaywood Ledford's like the great voice of UK basketball. And he was an old dude when I knew him. But uh, sometimes old guys can surprise you and be really cool. I was also so lucky when I was covering UK to cover it with some other people that were really, really awesome. John Clay, who still covers UK for the Lexington Herald Leader, who's one of my favorite people ever. And uh, Chuck Culpepper, who was the columnist for the Lexington Herald Leader. He's now a columnist for the Washington Post, who I believe is the greatest American the greatest living American sports writer right now is Chuck Culpepper. I'm telling you, the guy's amazing. He writes stuff just like out of his ass. It's better than anything I've ever written in my entire life. And I know you guys are saying, JG, who cares? But uh, it's that way for a lot of writers. He's the GOAT. Absolutely amazing. Let's see. Solo Tigre says, JGT, he does it about 30 times every basketball game, too. It's not just a press box problem. I think he rushes too much. Not Andy takes his time, and the appearance is markedly different. Now, that is true. Not Andy, he definitely has a pacing thing. Um, and I'm not a radio guy, so I, I'm probably just I'm an amateur at this. But, yeah, I can see Andy. Not Andy has a, I don't know what the word is, like a cadence that's slower and more deliberate maybe than Andy. I was actually talking to Andy last week about um, – one of the things that he does that I think is really stands out about Andy's calls is that sometimes when there's a call that he thinks is controversial, he will tell the people on the radio what happened and then he'll describe it again much louder. And so my thought was that he was trying to say that the second time in a way that the rest would hear it so they knew that the radio guy thought they were fucking up. And I talked to him about this. And he was like, no, I don't do that on purpose. I never even thought about it. And I was like, well, let's sit here and think about it a little bit. And he was like, I might have done that earlier in my career, but I certainly don't do that now as an intentional thing. I think it's cool, but whatever. Let's see. Kahneman did mention Chuck Culpepper, who's my hero. Chuck Culpepper is absolutely awesome. Kornheiser has him on his pod frequently. I did not know that. And gushes over him. You know he's good when Kornheiser goes out of his way to talk about how great he is at D. Lucky. Yeah, I didn't even know about that, but I'm telling you right now – um, Chuck's the greatest. <laughs> He's just amazing. And speaking of that, Stolze is also friends with Chuck, so we have that in common. And I have a picture on my phone somewhere of me and Stolze and Chuck, like, embraced. 
that was when we were at the um uh, uh, it was that NCAA regional where Auburn played uh Miami and lost in Greenville, South Carolina. And Chuck was there covering uh, probably covering Duke. I think that was Shashevsky's last season in college. She's probably doing that. By the way, I don't know if I've told this story. I was in the uh my wife had texted me and said she wanted to talk, so I walked out into the uh, the loading dock or whatever. It was the closest area where there weren't many people. And I called her, and there were a couple people standing around me, but I didn't know who the fuck they were, so I was, like, talking to her, and I was like, yeah, I'm over here, and the Duke, you know, because Courtney hates Duke, too, and she was like, have you seen Duke? And I go, I wish that I had it, because they fucking suck. I hate Duke, and Krzyzewski's the biggest ball bag that's ever lived, and I hope he loses every game, and I hope he has an unceremonious exit from this league, from this tournament, and I hope that his fucking family, you know, all, all that stuff, you know. I wasn't cussing, but I was talking about how much I hope bad things happen to Shashevsky. I looked to my right. His wife's standing, like, right next to me. She's probably four feet away. And I don't necessarily know it was her. She just had a look like someone who would know. Mike Shashevsky. she had all this Duke shit on. She, she just looked like a coach's wife. And so he comes out from their bus, and he walks over and starts talking to her. And I was like, oh, shit, that's Mickey Krzyzewski, isn't it? She heard it all. I didn't cuss, though. I wasn't like, I hope he gets AIDS or whatever. I, I didn't say anything like that. I was just like, I, I just hope that, like, bad things happen and he loses this game, you know? I didn't say anything I would regret. The Digital Tiger says, is McGriff staying in his current role? That is my belief. I don't understand how you can put McGriff back on the field and then still have Charles Kelly and then have a change uh, on the rest of the staff. You'd have too many people. So, yeah, that was it. I mean, I guess Zach could go somewhere, maybe. And if that were to happen, then you would have space. But I I, I my guess is that McGriff's going to stay in that current role of digital, uh, if I were to guess. Cassidy pieces. Coach K is a fraud, and it's a shame how revered he is. He does commercials now. I mean, they think that he's like a he has a big Q score or whatever. Whatever. It don't matter. Uh, I did see a reference to uh, Bill Kitely, uh, the longtime equipment manager for UK, who was also a really good dude. He's in the, he's in the rafters. He's like a Hall of Famer at UK. Also a very nice person. Not K with Ledford, but still. LT Grace says maybe Ron Roberts is on his way elsewhere. I don't think so. I think they're fairly happy with Ron Roberts. And I know you're looking at this game today and you're going, golly, bro, gave up 31, but they gave up 21 early. And second, third, and fourth quarter, they they pretty good defensively. So, and I think he did pretty good this year. I'm not saying, he, you know, things couldn't be better. They could, but I think defensively they were fine. The offense for me was the problem. Corey says, I was hoping that Ron Roberts was grooming Aldridge, Josh Aldridge, to become D.C. Now it may be Kelly. <laughs> I just need to get more information. You know, the guys that I would normally talk to about stuff like this were busy, like, with the bowl today. And, like, they, they had a game to play. So it wasn't a good time, good time to talk to them. Uh, Dixie says, the big question is, will Philip Montgomery be back? I, I can't answer that yet. If you had asked me a month ago, I'd have said, absolutely not. But now, I don't know if it's worth, like, firing him and conceding 2 or $3 million. Like, I don't know. Like, and they like him, and he's cool. And I think if Hugh just kind of takes control of the situation, and he's the play caller, and he's the one that designs the offense, I think it's fine. And I think they like Monty. I think he fits in well with the guys. I just think. I think the issues strategically that we're with Auburn this year are beyond money. Let's go ahead and get Stoltz on. I promise you guys, Stoltz, I'm going to deliver Stoltz. Uh, he said already that he was good to go a while back. So uh, the last time I called him, it was one minute and 18 seconds. I wonder why it was so short. What up, Stoltzy? How much? Just get published on another article and hey. uh, having a drink. Hey, that's cool. Are you of age? Uh, by times two. Hey. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, yeah. What do you think about that, man? That was a pathetic effort by everyone involved. Oh. Uh, they came out, got punched in the mouth, and never responded. Um, I think it goes from the very top to the very bottom of uh, the coaches and the players and everything like that. And you know, I just tweeted that Revolta Fairweather had a very interesting quote after the game about how there's some loose ends on the loose uh, uh, ends on the team and they need to get rid of them. And uh, he just called. I mean, he didn't say who it was. But he called out some of his teammates, and uh, you know, they need somebody like that to do that because they were not prepared. They were not ready. There was no enthusiasm. There was no passion. There was no fire, even though one uh, three fourths of the crowd was Auburn, and uh, they just they, they looked like they didn't want to be there, especially Kendrick Brown on that long pass. I mean, I've never seen a guy try less to catch a pass than Kendrick Brown did on that one. Wow. And that's not that, that didn't cost Auburn a game, of course, but at the same time, you know that that carries over to other players, and uh, yeah, it just it was a lack of any effort by the Auburn Tigers tonight. Are you drinking a Miller High Life? I am not. What were you having? Uh, my favorite, Bud Light. Oh, I thought you were going to say Elijah Craig. My bad. No, that'll be later. I'm going to okay. go to the I want to go to the uh, Acme, the uh, Nashville uh, Auburn Club bar to watch the basketball game later, huh? That's a great idea. I, I, I partied so. at Acme before. Huh? I partied at Acme before. Did you? Hell yeah, I did. With Jason Caldwell back in the day, bro. It was like 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. When he, when he was drink? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. He don't drink anymore. Yeah. Uh, no, how do you think Hugh's going to take this loss, dude? Because it, this is, a, this is a, a stinger, man. This is a punch in the face. It's a major punch in the face. I think he's going to look at himself for in the mirror first. I think, uh, you know, he, he's, he takes the blame for every loss and he should, because it's ultimately his responsibility to get the team ready to have them fired up, to have them prepared. They just weren't today. And even after the first drive, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, Maryland came down and scored, but there was missed tackles. They could have recovered a fumble, but five guys whipped on it. Uh, they went three and out on the first two drives. Maryland just, you know, they had what that Maryland had what Auburn needed, and uh, that was fire inside them. And uh, you know, after the twenty-one point barrage that Maryland put on, they can't recover. And uh, he just needs to look at the mirror first, and you know, he's going to make some changes this off season, probably pretty soon, I would say, including adding Charles Kelly as his whatever position on the defense. Yeah, that's going to help a lot, I think. But there's going to be some attrition. There's going to be some players that are going to be let go. Uh, there's going to be some coaches let go. Ooh. I mean, and uh, it's going to be an experiment because this can't continue to happen in year two and year three. No. He's, he's got to win next year, brother. Start, he's, going to get, he's going to start getting the talent, and he won't have that excuse anymore. He's and, got to uh, win next year, Stoltz. You would agree? I agree. Yeah. At least eight games. I, I, th- I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Or he will be on the hot seat. As soon as he got on the planes, I know, and and uh, it sucks, but that's the way this business works. And but, it, he came in with all this hype, and you know, he obviously he took over a disaster of a program. But you can't have a game like this to a Maryland team that's mid mid in their conference, and is about to have a starting quarterback, and just put out an egg like just lay an egg like that. That's just embarrassing. It's embarrassing for every Auburn fan there, and it's embarrassing for this team. Yeah. Do you think this changes how he feels about quarterback? Oh, abs- 100%. Absolutely 100%. Because you can't stick with Peyton if he continues doing performing like that. Damn. There's no way that he can what? go into Tuscaloosa what? or Athens or wherever else they play next year and who, put on a good who, performance. Who, 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 what? Because it's just he doesn't have – I mean, he, when he's good, he's good, but that's very – often very few times that he's that good and he's not worth it he needs to get a quarterback Uh-oh. that can run his system and be confident and can actually throw a ball wow. Peyton, i don't know i know man you know i, thought, I mean the last two games he's barely pa- he hasn't passed over 100 yards he comes and goes man and this was a bad yeah, game for him and his running game was nowhere to, to be seen today either. zero zero None of, none of the run game was anywhere. They they were getting dominated on the line of scrimmage, and Maryland, to their credit, they they loaded the box, 
saying, hey, Peyton beat us with a throw, and he couldn't. That's all you need to know about Peyton Thorne. Mm. He couldn't beat a Maryland team that finished, I don't know, what was the record, 7-5? and five. Yeah. He couldn't so, beat a Maryland team. I know. And they were just daring him to throw the ball, and he couldn't do it. That interception he threw was one of the worst picks I've ever seen in my life. It's bad. Daniel Cobb threw one like that in the L.A. Coliseum, though, but it's been a while. Yeah. But he already said he was going to ride or die with Peyton. I, 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 he did not say that tonight. Yeah, he said it's open, right? It's wide open. I just wrote about that. Yeah. Mm. And I understand. You can't have that happening in a bowl game. Or any game, for that matter. Damn. When you have a month to prepare and you go out and do that, that's just that's, – there's no excuse for it. Do you think Monty's gone? Absolutely. Okay. Do you think he rearranges Absolutely. his defensive staff and lets Charles Kelly coach over there and just, like, slides it down on offense? Uh, Yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> okay, I got you. I mean, they need something. They need some spark. Yeah, they really do. I don't know where it's going to come from. Yeah. But six and seven, another losing season. You know, six wins, okay. But the way they went out this season, losing to New Mexico State, blowing a game against Alabama, and they get totally dominated by the Terrapins. It's just, that's a bad vision, or that's a bad, what's the word I'm looking for? That's a bad finish. Hell yeah, three yeah. losses in a row. Yeah. Three losses. All of them stingers. Yeah. So let's be real about it. It is what it is. Yeah, I agree. Sucky. Yes, it does suck. All right, they had, all that, they, had a, they had all that momentum from signing day. They could have put a topper onto the season with a win, have a winning record, have all the momentum, but they came out and shit the bed. Hey, on another angle, I was talking earlier about the greatest American sports writer living right now, and I think it's Chuck Culpepper. Absolutely. Hell yeah. I'm glad you agree with me on that. Absolutely. freaking guy's an American icon. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, so I agree with you 100%. All right, bro. I'm going to bounce. You be good. All right. All right, see you better. But please get home safely, Stultzy. I will. I'm driving back tomorrow. All right, bro. All right. Bye. Yeah. Bye. There you go, Stultzy. He is adored everywhere he goes. I'm telling you, he's a little clumsy, but he's a he's a really good dude with a good heart, and everybody likes him. So, uh, You guys were, are going to be lucky at AuburnSports.com to learn he was embedded with the team uh, for a good while this week uh, in preparation for this bowl game. And the thought was, like, you know, he'd be able to write the story about all these great things that happened and they won the game and blah, blah, blah. Now it's going to take on probably a different uh, life of its own about how things went bad in the game. But he was embedded with the team for a while this week, and he's going to write a story probably next week about just kind of what what he saw and what it was like to be, you know, to be in the meetings. Yeah, I know he was in, a, a, uh, he was in some meetings uh, with, you know, like the position coach meetings. Uh, and then he obviously spent some time with Hugh and all that kind of stuff. So that'll be a, a really interesting story, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Kanuma sent in a super chat and says, uh, please ask Stoltz to intro introduce me to Chuck Culpepper. Yeah, Chuck is just uh, absolutely amazing, man. I was so lucky to uh, be covering UK when he was at UK. And he's the reason, really, I started writing. Not that anybody gives a shit. I'm just some average dude, but... It was his columns in the Herald Leader. I was like, I want to be like that someday, which I'm still not. I'll never be like him, but at least it got me going. I was kind of a listless human being at that point in my life, so it gave me some direction, and I'm appreciative of that. I've told Chuck about that, and he's like, yeah, I've heard that story before. He didn't really say that, though, but he's nice. Another one of us is uh, Brett Dawson. <clears throat> Brett Dawson covers the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder for the over. I think it's called overtime or something? I don't remember what they're called. He writes for the uh, internet-only publication in Oklahoma, covers the uh, the Thunder, and he's really, really good. Covered the Lakers before that. He's a U.K. guy, and he's a Chuck Culpepper enthusiast. So if you guys love the Oklahoma City Thunder like I do, you definitely need to be reading uh, Brett Dawson's stuff. Uh, Dix, Dixie says Stoltz is in the know with Hugh. He's my number one insider. I'm telling you, Stoltz is one of those guys where, like, he knows more than probably anybody alive about what's going on at Auburn. And uh, 1% of it gets written. <laughs> yeah, he's just very scrupulous like that. That's why I love Stoltz. He's a very principled human being, and that's why I, one of the reasons I really like him. 
He's good people. Looks like Bo is great. Enjoyed that call as he should. Of course, Bo is great himself. Called in earlier, and we're 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 grateful for it. And uh, one of my uh, Pike brothers. Of course, I was in Kappa chapter. Actually, I hung out with another bunk uh, not too long ago. Uh, I'm not going to say who it was, but uh, I met him and his wife up here. Actually, my wife and I met him and his wife up here. Uh, they were here on business. And I had said that I wanted to drive in a Tesla Plaid, just kind of like out in the open. Like I, I was just babbling. And uh, he said, hey, man, I've got a Tesla Plaid, and I'd be happy to have you drive it. And so, swear to God. And so we met, and uh, he let me drive his Tesla Plaid. And it was amazing. That car is so fast, and it is so sexy, and I wish I had one. But uh, he's... He's worked really hard in his life to uh, get a plaid, and so it was awesome. So I want to give him credit. I, I'm not saying who it is. I I, I'm afraid I'm going to out him, you know. But, uh, again, it's the kind of stuff that happens on the bunker, man. You just say something like that, and people are like, hey, it'd be my pleasure. Uh, Corey Debs says, La Jolla dinner tonight, Jay. Absolutely not. There is no chance, bro. I am not happy. I don't feel great, although I feel better now than I did three hours ago. That's for sure. You guys really pumped me up. Maybe it's the bourbon I've got in me. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we're going to do something tonight because Tipping Point's back open tonight for the last time. And <coughs> last time in like two weeks, they're going to shut down because everybody goes on their uh, I'm not going to drink thing after January 1st. And so bars don't do a lot of business uh, there in the first part of January. But uh, I guess they assume people are going to wean off that. Oigle, uh, zero, 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 eight, still pushing for me to get all the way to the Chattanooga game, which, I mean, I'm, I wasn't ever going to do that, bro. <laughs> I can't do the game. Basketball games don't work on here. Dixie says, let's take a pickleback with our worst bourbon. A pickleback? Is that like when you put the little pickle juice and you do a shot and then you do a pickle juice shot? I think that, uh, I think Corey might have been doing that last night. Chip Chip says bourbon wreaking havoc on those germs, JGT. I th isn't that true? Yeah, that's the way I look at it. It's better for my body to have bourbon in it, right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm telling myself. That's what I'm telling my mom when she goes, hey, were you drunk again on the air? I'll be like, what? Who? I wasn't. No, I wasn't. No. Uh -uh. Well, I saw you drink like eight shots. I'm like, um, No, nah, that wasn't me, man. That was like AI and shit. Dick C says, yep, that's what it was. Pickleback. I didn't realize that's what it was called. Yeah, I definitely saw Corey doing that last night. I didn't know what the hell that was, but I wasn't interested in doing that. I don't think I'd love pickle juice, bro. Cats D pieces bourbon is aqua vitae. It will elevate your health, JGT. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Corey says, my headache told me this morning we did, in fact, do picklebacks last night. Okay. I saw three go out, so I'm guessing that was you and your bro and your wifey, I guess. We're hitting that. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. I had a couple, uh, we call them cinnamon water, but uh, fireball shots. I don't know why I'm doing fireball shots at 51 years old, but I was last night. My guy Chalk was doing that. What a legend that guy is. Let's see. Chip Chip says, get some of our uh, most average bourbon, honey, lemon juice, hot toddy time helps the throat and cough. You know what? I'm going to trust your uh, your take on that. Although I think Bex told me that earlier, too. Dixie says, for bad bourbon, pickle juice is the answer. So it like kind of hops it up, huh? makes it a little bit more palatable. Is that what you're telling me? That's interesting. I did not know that. Let me see if that's exactly what Bex said earlier. Let me see. Beck said, honey, bourbon, lemon, warm, warm enough to melt the honey and then shoot it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Corey Debs says, cinnamon toast crunch shots are the best. I think I've done that, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, Ed D is always, as always, keeping it on, uh, on, on, on stack. He says, PT does not have it, plain and simple. If you want to cruise control next season, you go with PT. I don't think he's got room. I don't think that, uh, that, let me rephrase this. I don't think that Freeze has enough time to go on cruise control next year. This year he could, but next year I think he's got to win some games. And I think B uh, B Matt was saying he's got to win eight next year, and I agree. Chip Chip says, "Be good, kids. I'm headed to see the fake Beatles. I don't even know who that is. There's a lot of teams that a lot of groups that could be. Dark Side says, "JGT, take a shot. I'll do it right now, bro." Mm -hmm. 
Cassidy DP says, is it possible that the defense next year can improve enough to carry us to a better win-loss record without changing quarterbacks? We're going to be talking about this for months. You know, I think the defense is probably going to be about what it was, which is solid. Maybe a little bit better, but they're going to have to get some dudes. I'm just skeptical offensively. I don't even know if somebody like Cam Ward is going to be enough to fix it. Unless they get all on the same page and the shit makes sense and they get a, a left tackle. Because if you think about it, like the wide receiver situation is getting a lot better. Tailback is already really good. Tight end is at least solid, if not very good. Offensive line is okay-ish. Still need a left tackle. I think they're going to get that. I think that's their number one priority right now, although that may have changed with this game. But I think left tackle is the number one priority, and I think they definitely need another defensive tackle, if not two. But we're talking about offense specifically. Left tackle. <clears throat> and I think they've got to have another quarterback. I didn't I didn't necessarily think that. I was trying to give Peyton the benefit of the doubt, but guys, let's be real, man. That stuff that we saw tonight. He had drive after drive after drive to show that he could do something. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. And that's that. Corey Dub says uh the cinnamon toast crunch shots were the fireball and the rum chata. Sounds good. I think I've had a few of those. Probably later in the night, typically. Yeah. Hey, look at Warwick. Jumping into the super chat. We love Warwick, one of our Birmingham area uh, bunks. Man, it's getting too small to read now. My bad. I'm going to move it up here. JGT, I got destroyed at the course and lost enough to feed a small village. <laughs> that is six pack of fireball. I know you, and you're too old to be doing that. Six pack of fireball and trying to visit the Sin Cave. Sin Cave? I thought that was in Florida. That's what MW Dave told me. Uh, Sin Cave tonight. Hopefully, Wifey Warwick can ease some of the stink from my golf game being as shitty as eight a football. Warwick, what now? This is like, are you speaking in code? Sin Cave. N.W. Deaver said that was in Florida, dude. So I, I didn't. I don't think you're down there. Wow. A six pack of Fireball. I need some time to kind of ingest that because I, I think of you as a higher class individual than be doing that stuff because I would do that, but you should be better than that. Thank you, Warwick. Also, Chris H. jumping in here. He's the only reason that I have Weller 12. This is tipping point money. Wish you could let uh, co-head coach Caddy. <coughs> Sorry, man, I'm coughing all night. I uh, wish that he would let co-head coach Caddy uh, get the team ready uh, for any games. He is too busy recruiting. Happy New Year, Bunk. Chris H., appreciate you, bro. This guy's an absolute legend. And again, he's the only reason to have any Weller 12. I mean, people don't even give people bottles of bourbon anymore, but this guy does. What a legend. He's also a Montgomery legend. Cassidy P. says you can just cover the score with Super Chats, not JGT. <laughs> Man, two in there late, man. I wasn't expecting that. Warwick, tell me about how you're doing, bro. <laughs> tell me about these decisions. There was a, a morning, uh, a Saturday morning about two weeks ago when I woke up and I was so hungover, I had to get in the tub and just kind of get my life back together. And maybe that's where you're headed. I don't know. If you drank a six-pack of Fireball, I think that's probably where you're headed. But my guess is that Mrs. Warwick's probably used to that. Warwick says a sin cave equals a vagina. Buh? I thought it started with a P. Brad W. says, going to get a tight end next week. Hmm. Very interesting. Brad, also out of nowhere, apropos of nothing, says quarterback equals Michael Pratt. Michael Pratt, of course, the talented quarterback from Tulane, who is believed, I believe, to be going into the NFL draft. However... Maybe he won't do that. Because I'm not sure that this uh, this quarterback class is going to be... I think it's too deep for somebody like him. Although I'm not an expert. Dixie says Sin Cave is good. Props. But what do you mean by that? It's a good place to be, or it's a good phrase, or it's a good use of the phrase. I don't know what you mean by that, Dixie. But your knowledge of drummers makes me want to listen to you. Something to think about. 
I feel like we've talked about everything we could talk about with the football situation, though, you know? I mean, I think they've got to really seriously reconsider what they're thinking about doing a quarterback. The problem is that it's too expensive, I think. Not that Auburn's like a poor program. They're not, but it's all about allocating resources, right? And as it was told to us, Brian kind of, uh, B-Matt made reference to this when he was calling in earlier. We were talking to somebody together. You've got to find someone who is demonstrably better that you know 10 games out of 10 is going to be a better player than... Excuse me, had to had to do that. 10 games out of 10 is better than Peyton Thorne. And there are guys out there that are that guy person. There's no doubt about it. But you've got to be able to get one of those here now. I mean, that's not necessarily the highest bar we've ever talked about. Because once you sign this person, obviously Peyton's going to bounce. I would be concerned about Walker White bouncing. If you're into that, there's a whole seismic change that goes about with that, and you just got to be careful. When you make that decision, you better be right. When you come for the king, you better get him. Cass DP jumps in and says, well, or 12 it is then. I'm all over the bourbon spectrum tonight, JGT. I'm still looking for an ATL bourbon get-together. Yeah, I think that I actually got a text earlier, <coughs> excuse me, from ICOP07, uh, who's up in the greater Atlanta area, and he really wants us to get, uh, you know, a bourbon event in Atlanta. We, we were actually kind of like halfway down that road last year. Um, AU underscore ESQ, I think it was. No, it was AU underscore uh, GOAT, AU GOAT, who was helping us on that. And there's a bunch. We got a bunch of great bunks that live in Atlanta. We were kind of halfway down the road there, and then we just kind of got into football season, and shit got crazy. But I think that this is going to be the year, twenty twenty four, the first half of the year. I think we're going to have a, we'll have a bunker event up there. Just remember that JG don't live there, and I don't know anything about Atlanta, so you guys are going to have to help me kind of pick it out, know where I need to be, et cetera, et cetera. Because I don't know that. Kanuman says time for some b ball chat, ba 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 b ball chat. Yeah, I don't really know what to tell you about that. Uh, there's lots to tell you. We'd have to do a whole new show, I think. Cassidy P says, JGT, do we have a player leader on this team coming back? Seems like we lack that accountability. So you got Keontae coming back, and he's a great leader. No doubt about it. Um, Damari, I would say, is kind of a leader. He has a leader personality, and uh, everybody on the team kind of likes him slash respects him. He's a very likable character, and he's outspoken in a very positive way, so he's another one. That would fit that mold. You know, Marcus Harris was a guy like that. He's obviously gone. Um, you know, Elijah's like that. He's probably gone. Uh, maybe Keys. I think Keys has that personality. He didn't necessarily feel empowered to talk that way this year. Maybe he does next year. I think a lot of Austin Keys is a person. And as a football player, I'm just saying, like, from a personality perspective, is he a guy that could step up and be a leader? I do. I think he could be. Um, I don't necessarily no one else is jumping out to me maybe Jalen McLeod but he's kind of quiet I don't know if he's a natural born leader so we'll see is Raven still posting he sure is he said I would be interested in an Atlanta bourbon event oh god I hope you would be that'd be great fires me up bro <laughs> Warwick says, my seven-year-old said, Dad, they lost. Can you turn that off, please? <laughs> Teaching them right, bro. Uh, Elaw 20 also says he'd be down with an Atlanta shindig. We're going to do it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's not like, hey, guys, you guys interested? I know we got enough. That's like a stronghold for us. All the people up that way that would be there, you know. I mean, Ruxy Poo is another Atlanta legend. Got so many. AU Goat and his amazing wife. Love those two. There's tons, literally tons, like everybody's from up that way. <sighs> Oscar Chapman. He actually is, but he's going to be gone, I think. Uh, I'm trying to think of other guys that could be leaders that have the leader personality. I mean, Jeremiah Wright to some degree, maybe, could be. Um, 
Walker White, maybe. I mean, he's not going to be next year, but he has that personality. But if you're talking about somebody that has like this ability to talk to everybody and he's also very popular, that's Damari and that's Keontae. Those are the two guys that really stand out to me there. Yeah. Oh, Kanuman says Ruxpin is no longer in the ATL. I did not know that. I did not know that. Okay. Well, we still have a lot. It's a stronghold for us, for sure. And the always effervescent, uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll leave it there. We always got a bunch of Atlanta Atlians, aliens, is what we call it. I know that my friend Siku Smith used to call it ATL dash I E N S, aliens. Atlians. Rest in peace, Siku. Uh, Daniel P says, listen, old, old yellow fella needs to drop some coin for Cam Ward. Listen, man, I talked about this way early in the show, Daniel P, and I'm not trying to rag on you because I know you're a stud, and I appreciate you, bro, but Jimmy Rain has done so much for Auburn. Long time ago, recently, like, can't keep banging on that guy. He does. He's done his part more than enough. So it ain't up to Jimmy. Jimmy and, and Jimmy's been incredibly gracious, so I'm not saying that, but. If you're asking my opinion, I think it's more about the rank and file that need to step up more than Jimmy because Jimmy has stepped up time and again hundreds of times. I'm just telling you how I feel about it. I could be wrong. Uh, Cassidy P says, if Walker White has that personality, then he already has to step up. Damari is my favorite running back. And what, what about Jeremiah? And I would like to see him feature more in 2024. Uh, so the Tigers says, Atlians is an outcast album. Yeah, I know. That is true. I still don't know how to say it, though. Uh, Daniel P. saying that he's the name of the face. Uh, Jimmy is. Yeah, I mean he's he's done a lot, man. I don't I don't. I'm not sure that he could have done more, or not that he's done, but I'm saying he. I don't know if he could have done more during his time at Auburn than he has done. He's been incredibly generous. <clears throat> so, I don't think the answer is to you know shake him down or something. I think it's more. I think the rank and file need to step up. I was kind of surprised that we didn't get more. Uh, participation i guess in uh otv but i'm not i mean I'm, it's everybody's choice i mean it's all good i'm not trying to hate on anybody or lean on anybody cassidy p says did we lose hornacious is he gone i guess his wife might have called him said hey get your ass off that show <laughs> no she don't talk like that anyway but the only i got the only guy i know has a picture of his own house in his house that might be the weirdest thing i've ever heard of I ran that by my wife, and she's like, that's not that crazy. I was like, wait, if you want to see your house, just walk outside of it and look back. You don't need a picture of your house in your house. I don't know. I think she likes Hornacious. I think she kind of defends him a little bit. It's fine. No big deal. Guys, I'm not trying to uh, talk smack. No, Daniel P., I didn't want to try to say you're ragging on Jimmy. I know you weren't. He says, Daniel P., I'm not ragging on Jimmy. I'm just using him as a figurehead of a larger group. No, I know you weren't. I know you weren't. I wasn't trying to paint you out that way and i'm sorry if i did you're just you're just being cool i get it man but i'm just saying that jimmy's done so much for auburn uh mike v dog says tonight was another reminder i thought that was the album cover for asia uh tonight was another <coughs> <coughs> stuff sneaks up on you another reality reminder that there's a lot to do there sure are Bradley B says we're still going. I'm still here, bro. I just hit the six hour mark on this stream. Six hours in one minute. Let's see. Perry Unlikely, thank you for jumping in here, bro. He says it's said like AT Aliens. My sister worked at LaFace Records here in Atlanta for Outcast when that album came out. Well, you know what? Then that would definitely count as someone who would know what they're talking about. So AT Aliens. That's how I will say it from now on, Perry, and thank you for the clarification. Dick is going to bounce. Dick, it's been a good run, brother. You've been a great chatter tonight. Thank you very much for that. He says, good night. Going to watch Saltburn. That was on the bunker. I think they were talking about that the other day with the wife after AU basketball. Heard there's going to be a bathtub scene that's going to make me puke. Good times. Uh-oh. Administrative assistant has jumped into the chat. She says, time to wrap it up. Bradley B says, I'm jamming the two live crew. You know what my favorite two live crew song is? You're going to think, hey, JG, 
Since you're a casual fan, it's probably Me So Horny, right? Well, it's not. My favorite song by them is Move Something. That's a good one, man. I don't think I can sing that song, though, because it has a lot of bad words in it. It has a lot of bad words in it. Dude, Two Live Crew was a big deal back in the day. Going to drop them draws. Move, move something. You might as well just... Hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, when a, when a ministry of a t- assistant... Oh, I thought you were going to make a reference to Wyoming 11, Mike V-Dog. You're talking about the Wyoming Cowboys. You guys know when uh, administrative assistant shows up that it's about time for me to wrap her up. You know how it goes. Bradley B says, oh, yeah. Bradley B knows the song Move Something. You better drop them draws. Move, move something. Love that song, dude. I listened to it recently, and it had a lot of trouble in it. It needed more bass. I don't know if they were just mixed it up wrong or or what, but uh, that was a good one. There was also one about... um, I better not. Can I say this? Yeah, I can. The one that was like, do I did he? But it was like between her legs, there was a. I, I'm not going to say it. I, I get myself in trouble. I, I'm going to get myself in big trouble. <sighs> Cassie DP jumps in with a super chat. I think it's his ninth of the day. Could have been more. He says, let's stick till tip off for Bruce. <coughs> bro, I still got an hour and something. I'm not, there's no way, bro. And there's no payoff. Like, I can't do the game. I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. There was way too much trouble in the in that mix. But I'm with you on the bass. And NWA and then Easy and then who you know, the DOC or whoever really got the mix right, but I feel like Two Live Crew really missed an opportunity there. Uncle Luke. DJ Cool saying, uh bah, 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 bah. Let me cl- let me clear my throat. Yeah, that was a good song, dude. That was really big at the time. You hardly ever hear it anymore. Bradley B says, if GF says it's time, it's time. GF? Does it mean girlfriend? I guess Courtney is technically my girlfriend, but she's also my wifey, and she's the administrative assistant. Daniel P says, Jay, do you think the Liberty quarterback is in play at all? Listen, brother, I'm here to tell you, everybody's in play if they're in play, if you know what I mean. You listen to what Stoltz was saying tonight. He thinks it's really changed 180, and when Stoltz tells you it's changed 180, that's when you need that's when you need to start thinking about how it's changed 180. Two weeks ago, uh, Freeze was like, I got my quarterback. I'm Gucci. Now, he says the competition's wide open. Don't tell me one game don't matter. It does matter. Let me clear my throat. <laughs> Kaduman says she's a badass talking about uh, administrative assistant. Yeah, she is. She's an absolute legend. Let's see, uh, Gary Saliba. What's up, brother? JG, what Auburn needs for sure is Fjordland. Oh, I I know what you're saying. You, it was just a mistype there. What, what Auburn needs for sure is for you to return in 2024. Thank you for another great season. Gary, thank you, brother. I don't even know that you were, uh, I mean, appreciate you, bro. I didn't know you were here all year. You got to step up in the chat next year and uh, keep it going, as long as this head cold doesn't claim me in the next two or three days appreciate you my my g and also uh solo tigre says yeah that barry sax or baritone sax uh lead in and let me clear my throat f aux that's a good song man i there was a period like five or ten years ago where i heard a lot on like the 80s channels and then all of a sudden i didn't but on sirius xm it went from backspin which me and jason caldwell listen to a lot to now it's like ll cool j's channel which i don't think is as good so I don't listen to that channel nearly as often. That's probably a part of the reason why I don't hear it because they ain't going to play it on 80s on 8. They're not going to play it on First Wave. They're not going to play it on uh, on Shade 45. So i am probably just not listen to a channel that uh, that's going to play it. Something interesting that happened recently, uh, my mom has a car. My mom's not driving, as you guys know, is never going to drive again, I don't think. So we were going to sell the car to one of my friends that has a, a daughter who's turning 16 soon. And uh, she got in the car and she goes, "Yo, where's the where's the Bluetooth and all that?" And I go, "There's no Bluetooth. It's an it's an O5." <coughs> and she goes, "So I wouldn't have any control over what I listen to." And I thought to myself, "You know, no, you wouldn't, 
And I never thought about it that way. Like, I just listen to Sirius XM and no, nah, I don't. I don't know what the next song is going to be. That's part of the fun of it. But for her, that's a breaker. That's a deal breaker. Bradley B says, I'm going to join the bunker so you'll quit coughing. Hey, now. I guess I need to drink more bourbon. I don't know. We'd love to have you, though, Bradley B. It's a lot of fun over there. It really is. It's an amazing uh, It's an amazing community on a lot of levels. We were recently voted, uh, I think, the seventh best online community in all of college sports by uh, Message Boards Geniuses. Message Boards Genius. You guys know what I mean. MBG. Message Board Geniuses on Twitter. A great handle. And an easy follow. A lot of fun. They had us as the number one rivals board. And uh, we were behind some people that have great boards, which Tex Ags, and and they do a great job too. Uh, Administrative Assistant says, thanks guys, but still got to get Commodore off the air. That cough isn't getting better. Hmm. We did get a uh, super chat, Courtney, from Casa DP, who said, round of applause for administrative assistant slash Courtney. We're, oh, we got to get an applause. <laughs> and uh, is, there another super ch- is there another song we could make for her? Um, no, I don't have one. I thought it would be another one, but there's not. I don't have a good Courtney sound. Kanuman says, normally I would not agree. However, Courtney Tate clearly has your best interest at heart. Probably time to sign off and take care of that cough and head cold. Yeah, it's probably just going to be more bourbon, honestly, but whatever. Uh, Bradley says, administrative assistant, do your job. I guess that means get up here and get me off the air. Drag me off, right? Cassidy P asking me about the Louisville coaching situation. No, I'm sorry. It was War Eagle 0008 asking about the Louisville coaching situation. Yeah, I want to see them lose more, dude. I think they won four games last year. I'd like to see them win three this year. So, you know, as as usual. Lockdown says some of us have made it to message board geniuses on Twitter. Yeah, we, we get on there fairly often, actually, because our community is amazing. It's hilarious. <laughs> All right. I guess we're going to wrap it up, guys. I do want to give shout out specifically to the folks who called in, which would include Jay Head, obviously the goat, uh, MWD, Crocky Poo, Stu Pup, B Matt, Chip Chip, Bo is Great was in there as well. Also, Stulty Late. And uh, Brad says, hydrate and hit the lick button. Courtney, are we good with hitting the lick button? What do you think about the lick button, Courtney? I wonder if I could even find that. Where would I find that? You, you got, Where's the lick button? Oh, it's over here. It's under the hood right here. Talk about my speaker right here. I found it. It's kind of hidden. Oh, like button. Shit, my bad. Like button. Yeah, let's hit the like button. Do we have a sound for the like button? Yeah, right here. I like that I eat at the end. <laughs> William C. says, I prefer the lick button. Kanuman is jumping on board, says, lick the button, everyone. <laughs> Easy E tells you guys to hit that like button, yo. And when Easy tells you, you do it. That's what I'm saying. That's a great way to end it, Brad. All right, so next show. I think we're doing the next show for the Arkansas basketball game, which will be the SEC opener. Should be a good one. Even though Arkansas has got a bad record, they're still a good ball club, and I, I would love to see uh, Bruce dispatch them summarily. Anywho, appreciate you guys. Another good show. How long did we go? We went six hours and 11 minutes. That's pretty long, honestly. I only went to the bathroom twice. That's not too bad. I have done six hours before with ever, without ever going to the bathroom, which is more impressive, but, uh, you know, whatever. You can't be great every single day. Anyway, guys, love you all. Let's make great decisions. I will see you guys for that Arkansas game, uh, post game. We'll do a show. We'll talk and hang out and do all that. Until then, I want you guys to make great decisions. Be great. Be better versions of yourself every single day. I'm challenging myself to be better all the time. Seriously. We could talk about that at, at, at length if we need to at some point. But anyway, love you guys. Peace out. Uh, kind of a shitty day for Auburn football, but whatever. Maybe this will be good. Uh, this suffering will uh, eventually be redemptive. See you guys. Peace.